Man, I ain't been live in a minute. What a day. It's really been a minute since I have. I was just going to get on here today and talk about um, some news I seen. Devin Haney. I know you got a fight coming up. I ain't seen too much of everybody um, mentioning it yet, but I've seen a couple of things about it. But yeah, he definitely uh, brings a lot to the table, man. Definitely going to be a good fight for him. If he can go in there with Eastside Cruz. Which is a good thing, but, you know. Still got to happen. There hasn't been that much going on, though. Really hasn't been that much going on lately. I know these next couple of weeks is going to slow down for what it, from what it's been recently, but it is what it is. Yeah, it's definitely going to slow down. But Eastside Cruz, he uh, I knew he was gonna change the picture at one forty. That was kind of obvious. I was looking ahead on that. He had plenty of options to choose from. I don't think that's something that's gonna be uh hard to figure out in the future. It'll be definitely easy to make a couple of these fights. Yeah, I don't see these fights being hard to make. It just depends on when they actually want to make the fights. If they're not in a rush, then it might, it's more, it might not happen then. You know what I'm saying? But with Eastside Cruz on the table for anybody, I knew that was going to make 140 a good weight class. I know a lot of people talking about 140 uh, this year. Last year, I was talking about 140 already. I had my eyes already set on 140. I knew 135 had a lot of fluff, as y'all can see. They tried to shove De La Santos in my face. But... 140 got a lot more talent. I've already said that. A lot of people kind of proving it, you know what I'm saying, without me saying much. It just kind of confirmed the old stuff for me. So, yeah, I definitely agree with what everybody's saying now, but you know what I'm saying? I'm glad they showed up now. Because what are we going to do, like, as far as the hype behind Eastside Cruz, if we going to is everybody going to keep that going or are we going to stop like last time? Because last time we had it going, then everybody jumped out the bandwagon. I'm like, wow. You know what I'm saying? I've been kind of pushing these fights for Eastside Cruz a couple of months ago. Everybody talking about they don't want the rematch for Tank. Like, that's what everybody don't realize. It's been, it been hard for us to come up with a fight for Tank Davis because a lot of people said – 
yeah, we're not interested in the rematch. The Eastside Crew, like, it's not really a big fuss now of why Tank not fighting Eastside Crew. I reported on it, so I I definitely know it's not a big fuss. It is now, but a month ago, when I was saying how Eastside Cruz was waiting on Tank, everybody said, oh, all he wants is a Tank fight. Come on, man. You know what I'm saying? Don't even know the business. Don't even know what's going on. How how all Eastside Cruz want was a Tank fight? I'm still stuck on that, bro, before we even get to everything else everybody else want to get to. I'm still stuck on people saying that Eastside Cruz, all you want is a Tank fight, man. Now it's, oh, my God. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Yeah. See? They'll they'll jump on your side when they were just yelling at you, arguing with you. They'll jump on your side and look at you crazy when you're staring at them like, what are you doing over here? You know what I'm saying? See, the good thing about boxing, if you're going to cover boxing, if you know somebody's fighter better than them and it's their favorite fighter, it's a wrap. Especially if you've been looking at the guy longer than they have. Oh, they're done. No conversation. That's why when you look at it now, Eastside Cruz still in the conversation. For some reason, Devin Haney still in the conversation. And we got a lot of people surprised as why that's happening. Because this is what I have noticed. And I want to say this first before I lose this thought. People said Lomachenko beat Devin Haney. Why are people not supporting Lomachenko the same way they are supporting Eastside Cruz right now? They think that. Um. Because a lot of people think that Isaac Cruz beat Tank Davis. I see him getting support right now. Why he ain't get the same type of support for Lomachenko? Because you had the same fans turn around and say, oh, I think Lomachenko beat uh, Devin Haney. Why he ain't getting the same type of support? I think a lot of these people are bandwagons. It's a lot of bandwagon fans going on. I realize there's a lot of bandwagon fans right now. It is out of hand. It is out of hand. It is out of hand. It's childlike. It really is. It's childlike behavior in boxing right now. Like from week to week, these dudes changing who they like and who they don't like. From week to week, that's why, bro. I gotta, I gotta watch who I talk about. To, with, uh, I don't want to waste my time explaining boxing to people who just ain't really listening. You know what I'm saying? People were just making a fuss about this last week. I didn't even make no videos about this, nothing. But everybody else made a video about this last week. Everybody made a video about this last week. I ain't make no video about it. Everybody made a video about but I'm the dumb one. Everybody made a video about this last one. Oh, Hitches will face Matias next. I mean, I was talking about that in January. The, the, no loyalty in Boston. Just disrespect. Nobody really cares about the fight game. At the end of the day, these dudes trying to win arguments and stuff like that. I'm not on the argument draw. I mean, I'm not on the internet to uh, argue with dudes all day about who's right and wrong. Like, bro, it's facts out here. Why would... Like, nobody cares about the facts. The truth don't matter. At the end of the day, just say, hey, man, I like this fighter. I want him to win. All right? Like, save me time. You know what I'm saying? I got life to live. Save all my time. Just tell me, hey, man, I like this dude. I want him to win. That's it. Okay, bro. Don't tell me about, hey, it's this reason because his resume, nah, don't come, man. I've seen so much stuff. Like, over the past couple of weeks, the stuff, the way boxing fans' behavior has changed over the course of weeks, 
I mean, I got enough material to go for the next 10 years. Just off a couple of weeks of how these dudes been moving. Just off of how they've been moving. You know what I'm saying? Guys like Eastside Cruz actually expose boxing fans for what they really are. That's why I'm glad he's actually around. Him, a couple of other guys too. Benavidez is another guy. Uh, they expose these boxing fans for what they really are. They're not boxing fans. They're not boxing fans. I'm realizing that now. Be careful when y'all start to tell somebody, hey, man, you need to go learn about boxing. Okay. Because when a guy like me actually goes and try to learn something, hey, it's not going to be – you better be doing some studying yourself. Because if I'm learning and you're not learning, guess who's getting smarter? Yeah, the boss, the Boston business is shady right now. And the fans is most of the problem. I don't I don't blame the promoters and stuff like that. I've never seen a promoter force a fan to buy a pay-per-view or anything. I don't blame these guys for what? Why would I blame them? You know what I'm saying? I just seen fans complain about PVC for four months straight. I just been seeing fans complain about PVC for four months straight. Then they seen Eastside Cruz fight on PVC for like the seventh, eighth time. Now they lose their mind. I'm like, bro, he's been over here fighting on PVC. Like, what? A... And then people talking about they don't like PVC, but they like Eastside Cruz, and but they don't like PVC though. So who would push Eastside Cruz if PVC went around? Like, all this is getting weird. So if PVC wasn't around, we probably wouldn't even have Eastside Crew walking around right now. Because these other guys ain't pushing their fighters like that. I'm only hearing the top guys right now. At Golden Boy, if you're not a top guy, of course he's looking at it now like, oh, yeah, yeah. But if you're not a top guy, you're not going to get the push like that. And then you got to actually take the fight. That's what I love about boxing, though, man. In boxing, you got to actually tell the truth. Some of these dudes are just playing liars, bro. In real life and on uh, YouTube, they're just liars. That's all it is, too. It ain't got nothing to do with boxing. Some of these dudes just liars. That's not hard to figure out. These people talking about, yeah, man, he just said he'll fight Matias next. All right, man. Okay. Like they don't want to like like they don't want to talk about what they were saying though. Uh. <laughs> yeah, man. I told dudes already, man. Lamos is gonna be a beast. He's been a beast. He was going to be a beast coming into this fight. As far as I know, I know how to read talent, so. It's funny how a lot of people, it just take one fight and people be like, oh, yeah, I said this already recently. The way I broke it down, it sounds so simple, but it's not really simple at all. These dudes got to see somebody fight the top, top guy in boxing. Then they got to be like, oh, he's good. Duh. Bro, I'm telling you, that point right there would never get away from anything. People don't understand that. That point right there, like it's, it's a lot of novice stuff going on right now. If you're seeing the top two guys fight all the time, you're definitely going to know who's the number one guy. That's easy. The hard part is trying to see how number 11 or number 20 looks against number five or something like that. That's when it gets difficult. 
that's why that's why people are getting exposed a little bit because Esau Cruz used to be number 20 or 25 now he's number one and people kind of like oh yeah man bro these fans is bandwagons on both sides on tank side and Esau Cruz side y'all all got bandwagon fans I know it because I was fans of them before y'all all these dudes got bandwagon fans they hurting the sport They hurt in the sport. Cruz exposing all this stuff, man. These dudes is bandwagons. Now, I'm going to tell you all this. Out of all the names I was hearing the last couple of months, when nobody running around talking about Eastside Cruz to do anything to these guys at 140, now we turning around because Eastside Cruz was just at 35. Nobody wanted to tank Davis rematch. What's up, Jay Will? Shout out to Jay Will, man. What's up, bro? Tank Eastside Cruz was just at 135. Nobody wanted the uh the Tank Davis rematch. Man, these dudes, these Boston fans are frauds, dog. Shout out to Jay Will too, man. For real. These Boston fans be fraud, man. That's why I don't really want to get on here arguing with nobody or debate, man. I ain't got no time for that, bro. You know what I'm saying? Why would I get a gray hair over nothing? Nah, bro, I'm trip. I'm I'm good. I'm super straight. Eastside Cruz was just at 35. I put out a whole bunch of videos explaining why he ain't at 35 no more. People are like, I don't care about Eastside Cruz. I'm like, wow. Yeah, I don't care about Eastside Cruz. We gonna do this again? Yeah, yeah, Devin, Devin called out Pitbull. Devin called out Pitbull. That's definitely uh something I'm gonna get around to. I'm just I'm just I'm just uh making a thesis real quick of certain things. But yeah, Devin got uh he definitely called out Pitbull. Devin called out everybody, man. Devin Devin Spar tank is 16 years old. I don't know why. This ain't really breaking news to be honest with you. I just had to make a title. Devin Spar Tank is 16, so why would he not fight Tank? I mean, uh, Pitbull at 25. Unless people think that Pitbull is, Tank is weaker than Pitbull now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's not really news to me. You know, Devin Haney, he, he's been doing a lot of things lately. He got a lot of things lined up. The fact that he's staying at 140, that's going to make everything crazy. Uh, yeah, you can't say that. You can't say that. That's actually a bad. That's actually a bad look towards Tank. People think that that that's a bad look towards Devin. That's actually a bad look towards Tank. To be honest with you, if Devin Haney hunting down his opponents like that, you know what I'm saying? That mean that that mean Tank ain't fighting nobody then. Why? People saying, yeah, he just trying to fight Tank, uh, old opponent. That mean he ain't fighting nobody then, Holmes. If he could just fight your old opponents like that, like they just nothing, yeah. Yeah, I especially like those fights. I don't know, man. I don't know about Matias. I think they I guess they're gonna try to make Matias versus uh Hitches. I get I guess Eddie Hearn and pivot on that. He's like, I just rather make that happen. Whatever list everybody put out there, that was a, that was the right list. I guess they're gonna try to make hitches. I guess they that's that that's why they ain't go with the uh decision. You know what I'm saying? I told everybody the truth during my live, man. I said the fight could have went either way. You know what I'm saying? I'm a fan, I'm a fan of Lamos, all these guys. So the fight could have went either way. But I feel like they did that because they want to make Matias versus Hitchens. So I think they you know, the zone got a lot. I don't know. I'm surprised right now, bro. I don't think they're gonna go towards Gary Antoine Russell. You know, Eddie Hearn, he ain't no Boxing expert, but I don't I don't think he that dumb. I, I know he definitely gonna stay away from him. But Eddie Hearn said Pitbull versus Matias he'll make though. If he can, if they reach out. I think I said that like on my last live or something like that, two lives ago. 
But Pitbull, uh, Eddie Hearn want to make that fight, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Terrence Crawford, he's going to do whatever he wants to as far as these fights. That's what people don't realize. And uh, I'm glad Jay Will brought that up because I, I didn't even touch on that. Sometimes I don't like to touch on stuff because other, it's other news right now that's kind of more important than uh, this right now. But with um with Terrence Crawford, you know the uh, Chris Eubanks thing. That was going to be kind of like a fight in Saudi too, though. So when people say, oh, I don't want to hear the Eubanks fight and all the other stuff. This uh, this Israeli guy, I mean, the, um, the uh, Majramov guy, he, he got the same amount of... uh. You know, people didn't really know him until his last fight. So they call him the new Triple G and everything. I've seen him fight plenty of times. So I don't know, bro. I don't know. I don't know. A guy that people just found out about, they okay with Terrence fight, Crawford fighting him. I don't know. So everybody all over the place right now. I mean, they just found out who this guy was recently. And for some reason, everybody like, I don't want to see Chris Eubanks, but this guy I just found out about. Yeah, let's fight him. So, yeah, fans all over the place right now. That's why I ain't really touch on that. I'm like, they don't even know who Marjorie Marvin is. What are they? <laughs> they all over the place, man. I don't know who they want Terrence Crawford to fight. Uh, I feel like it could have went either way. I feel like it could have went either way. I had, bro, bro, to be honest with you, if you listen to my, my prediction, if you heard my prediction video, I explained the fight exactly how it went. I mean, I ain't really had to score the fight. The fight went exactly how I said it'll go. I ain't really had to score. If you look at my prediction video, the fight went exactly the way I said. It. You know what? You know what the really you know what you know what really the problem is? And I ain't want to talk about this fight. It's the reason why I ain't want to talk about it. Because niggas don't be you knowing what they talking about in boxing. That's why I ain't really want to talk about the fight, honestly. But everybody acting like Lamos was a bum. Like I'm surprised that everybody thought Lamos was that. Everybody like, oh, I'm surprised Lamos was that good. Like that's what people don't really want to say. They didn't know Lamos was gonna be that good. And I said that in my breakdown. Shout out to everybody who gave me the five likes. Jay Will, you was probably one of them. Shout out to everybody who gave me a like in the prediction. In my prediction video, the five likes I got. I appreciate everybody who left me a like in the video. That means a lot. I know y'all know what I was talk, talking about. Yeah, I wrote the video down. I said in my video, I put it in my short video if you look at it. Um, he Lamo Lamo's fight like Isaac Cruz, you know, so a little bit, a little bit like Isaac Cruz, a little bit like Oscar Duarte. He was gonna give Hitchens some trouble. I mean, but people don't know boxing, though, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just is what it is at the end of the day. I'm talking about nobody hit the ground. Like, let me tell you something. I heard people said Triple G versus Canelo. They had made a fuss about that fight. Triple G versus Canelo. Now, think about that fight when you go back. Nobody cares about that fight. Like, it's, it's really not as big as everybody making the scene. Because nobody even thought Lamos was that good before, before the fight happened. I'm like, oh, wow, okay. I'm telling everybody Lamos was that good. I wouldn't say that was excessive clinching in that fight because they were still punching in the inside. Now, what I seen Caleb Plant doing against Benavidez, that was excessive clinching. Benavidez had him, what, hurt, what, sixth, seventh, eighth round? Yeah, shout out. Appreciate that, G. Will. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was a very, bro, go listen to the, the video, bro. I wrote the video. I wrote the fight down. I do this a lot of times. I don't get the prediction right all the time, but I actually will have each scenario. That's why I don't just do. A prediction i have two scenarios in there and somebody might come into the video like man i'm thinking of that so they'll go with that scenario 
But I actually knew Lamos was that guy. Like, come on, man. I love Argentina fighters. I just said that th last week, two weeks ago. My favorite fighters are Argentina fighters and Australian fighters. And look at Tim Tim Zhu. But people got me. Got, but but people have put me in a position where I got to argue against some of my favorite fighters. Though. That's what I don't like about boxing. Sometimes these these guys they'll come in here and like all judgmental about certain situations, or they'll just I'm gonna tell you another thing too. I don't like. And this pissed me off too. Everybody didn't watch the fight, but they'll hear people say, Yeah, it was a robbery. Then they'll go watch the highlights. And they'll be like, Yeah, like watch the whole fight, man. Have your own prediction. No matter who won. I don't give a I don't really care who won. But just have your own conclusion. Like all of y'all didn't watch the fight like that. All of y'all didn't watch the fight. No, nah, Castano just came back. No, nah, he 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 won a big fight though. He's not trying to fight. Uh, if it's not like a Fandora or somebody like that, Castano looking for a big fight. You know what I'm saying? He's not looking for no lower level guys right now. He's not really trying to, you know, he's around like Keith Thurman's age or around there. He's like, a, he's like, he he came up with like Keith Thurman and those guys. I don't think he want to fight you. Yeah, yeah. It's always crazy scorecards like that. You know what I'm saying? They gave Canelo... Canelo lost every round and they gave um I mean, bro, to be honest with you though, if people don't make a big fuss about Canelo getting a scorecard against uh a good score against Floyd after getting his ass well, people don't really care about that score stuff. Let's be real. That that score stuff, that people don't care about that. I could bring up a score, a bad score about everybody's fighter. People don't care about that. I'm gonna just be a thousand on that. People don't really care. Everybody, everybody's favorite fighter has been involved in a robbery. People don't really care about that. And that's a fact. That's a fact. Manny Pacquiao done got robbed a couple of times. They say people done got robbed against Floyd or Canelo. Fury or anybody you name. It always happens. These people don't really care about that. That'd be the problem. You know what I'm saying? They don't be caring about these judges or nothing like that for real. It'd be a fight like this. Like, bro, it's been... I've seen... I done made videos of the same thing happening in the other fights. These fans don't really care about that, bro. That's why I don't be giving the energy no more. I just like... Because I got the videos up talking about it already. I know if somebody really care about it. And people want to just say, yeah, he's just, he robbed the most. Okay, yeah, he robbed him. All right. What else? Well, that's all I want to say. Okay. Are we going to talk about what happened in the fight? That's what I don't hear people saying. They, they, they talking about that, but they ain't talking about what's going on in the boxing fight. You know what I'm saying? They talking about it's a robbery, but they didn't even believe it was gonna be a close fight with Lamos. That's what I'm really hearing. I'm gonna tell you one B1000. People didn't think Lamos was gonna have a chance. So I can't respect nobody walking around complaining about the fight because I knew it was gonna be a close fight from regardless. I knew it was gonna be like that. I knew it was gonna be a robbery or somebody in. Somebody's gonna feel like that. So I can't respect nobody's boxing expertise when you didn't really see the styles clashing like that. I felt like I, I felt like that fight was gonna happen like that. And I felt like um I said that with Tank Davis versus Eastside Cruz. Bro, I'm telling you, the same thing everybody did against Tank Davis versus Eastside Cruz, they did against Hitchens versus Lamos. After the Tank Davis versus Cruz fight, everybody said Eastside Cruz got robbed. Tank Davis fought a bomb. He shouldn't have went 12 rounds. Blah, 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 blah. And people are walk walking. Walk, walk around like they don't know what I'm talking about. And you just can't respect it after a while. I don't really respect it. That's one thing I don't be liking in Boston. You know what I'm saying? That's why dudes like Eastside Cruz and Lamos, they'll expose all the fans on both sides. That's why I kind of just sit quiet because I'm kind of like, yeah, I knew they'll do that.
but it also shows you another thing too your favorite fighter ain't fighting nobody if you're impressed by Lamos and why your favorite fighter ain't fighting a guy like Lamos? Why he ain't fight Lamos yet? Oh, oh, okay. Proving my point now. Why your favorite fighter ain't fight Lamos? What's up? Who your favorite one forty pounder? Why he ain't fight Lamos yet? That'd be another question we need to ask. Why they ain't fight Eastside Cruz yet? That'd be the questions I'd be trying to ask. People be like, yeah, it was a robbery. Man, when your guy gonna fight him? I agree. When your guy gonna get in the ring? Yeah, I'm a, yeah, I can't wait to see that fight. I, I, he fighting a guy who's like a bridge away or something. He a bridge away. He decent. He decent. He might. Uh, he gonna get stopped. Probably like six, seven rounds. He gonna get stopped like six rounds, seven rounds. He gonna get stopped. I don't know. Might do an over and under on that, man. He might get stopped. If it's under seven rounds, I go under seven rounds for that bit. Yeah, that guy's undersized. I don't know. I thought he had a good fight recently. I don't know. I think the guy's around his weight, though. He just little like a bigger guy overall you know what i'm saying facts jay will know what he's talking about jay will i can't disagree with that bro because you know martin was a little rusty his hand speed wasn't yeah he's 24 yeah, he's 24. Yeah, he's 24. You know, in boxing, man, it's, it can always be another big baby Anderson walking around. And one thing he got to worry about. That's what these boxers starting to realize now. It's always going to be another guy. That's why everybody jumping ship now. That's why you see everybody jumping around now. Making up different weight classes and different fights. Everybody jumping ship now. Not everybody trying to grab. Not everybody grabbing onto a young fighter now by the shoulders. Like Clark Kent and Lois Lane. I see that now. But for the last what? Ever since last year, people been dying trying to find a new fighter, a young fighter to grab onto. Oh, we got a, we got American heavyweights, bro. I think that I think that I think that um it's kind of blown over proportion, bro. We got we got big heavyweights. We got Charles Martin, we got Wilder, we got Chris Ariola, we got uh Andy Cruz. I mean Andy, not Andy Cruz, Andrew Weeds, bro. You know, I got all these names in my head. Andrew Weeds, my bad. Um even though Jared Miller, you know, he's kind of a slob. Jared Miller, uh, I can't go through all of them in my head right now, but we got a good amount, you know what I'm saying? We got just as, just as much as everybody else got, you know what I'm saying? We got just as many heavyweights as everybody else. You know what I'm saying? Anthony Joshua, with most of his biggest fights, some of Anthony Joshua's biggest fights is uh, American heavyweights. So I think that hit. That's why I said it's a lot of ghost stories in Boston people be trying to push. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Parker's not from uh, the UK. And uh, Usyk's not either. And Usyk's not a heavyweight. Usyk's a cruiserweight who went up to heavyweight. And Fury's not running the show because everybody got him losing right now to Usyk. And Anthony Joshua had three losses. And Parker has losses as well. So I think the only person that's running the show 
Oh, right now, Tech plays Usyk until somebody knock him off. He got the most belts. He undefeated. He knocked off Anthony Joshua. Parker's not trying to fight Fury or Usyk. He said recently he would after everybody was asking why he wasn't. So I definitely will pick Usyk. I think everybody else is kind of behind. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't, I don't like that because usually, you know what I'm saying, with heavyweights, we pick one guy. But now we're trying to pick four guys? Like, no, nah, we'll never do that. Ever in history. No, nah, I don't think I don't think that's gonna happen. I mean, people will see over time. Yeah, I, I ain't like it. I ain't like it. I ain't like it. I ain't like it, I ain't like it bro. I ain't like it. I I wasn't surprised. And I'll say that. Parker ain't trying to fight no top heavyweight, man. The best name he gonna get is Wilder. That's it. And John. He ain't trying to fight no Usyk or uh, Fury, man. And Parker, Parker, one of my favorite heavyweights, but he ain't trying. He ain't trying to get in the mix, man. He ain't trying to get in the mix. He be sparring too much too, man, with these dudes. That's why they be knowing a lot of his moves. I know I know the word probably got around Joe, Joe Joyce or something in that fight. Yeah, man. I want Parker to get in the mix, bro. I really do. Now, can he 12 round everybody? I mean, he possibly can, like Usyk. But I just don't know it. That's why I don't really have Parker up there like that. Because I'm kind of like, we already got Usyk. And if I pick Usyk versus Parker, I don't see nobody picking uh, Parker to beat Usyk. So I'm kind of like, yeah, I'm kind of on that side with Usyk. And then I already know Usyk get Anthony Joshua problem. So, yeah, it's really just Usyk and Fury. If Usyk win, ain't nobody finna try to fight Usyk. Ain't nobody calling out Usyk. So everybody better pray that uh uh Fury um that Fury win. Cause if Usyk win, ain't nobody finna fight Usyk. Ain't nobody calling out Usyk. If we really want to talk about that, and that's the end of the story. Ain't nothing else to talk about. Nobody trying to fight Usyk. And then Parker friends with Fury, so we know that ain't gonna happen. Yeah, man, but just back back on what I was saying, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, Devin Haney and Pitbull, you know, those guys are guys who are trying to fight each other. For some reason, you know what I'm saying? People feel like, I don't know. Like Jay Will said, he was like, Devin Haney trying to fight uh, tank old fighters. That mean tank resume ain't that good then. That mean that mean I've been saying that a, little, a while ago. People talk if his opponents is like can't get hunt down like that. I ain't never heard nobody saying yeah man. Keep Thurman trying to hunt down Floyd all the po opponents. He trying to fight Pacquiao and went there and got smashed. So that don't, it don't matter if it's an old opponent or a new opponent. I don't see nobody trying to hunt down Loma Chico right now. I ain't heard nobody trying to call out Lomachenko. I know who really wants to smoke or not. Lomachenko went in there and fought Devin. I still ain't heard nobody else call out Lomachenko. So it depends on who who leftovers or or um old fights people are really talking about. Cause we talking about old fights and people old opponents. It's a couple of old opponents that get smashed. They will smash these dudes. Yeah, it's, it's solid. You know what I'm saying? It ain't as good as everybody been saying because now people look, they like, oh, Roly, are they good? Duh. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> I was watching Roly years ago. Yeah, man. Devin Haney was calling out Roly before the shutdown. Everybody didn't know who Roly was until after the shutdown. 
Yeah, man. Tank got a solid resume, but it's not great. But it's a lot of people's resume that ain't great. That's what that's the point that I'm I kind of need to get to. Everybody be kind of they make certain guys' resumes way bigger than what it is. Gotta bring these people back to reality. Yeah, it seems like hey, I don't know, bro. They gonna he gonna have to explain. He gonna have to explain later on in history why he why he the only guy that ain't fought uh Lomachenko. Look, De Devin went and got Lomachenko on his resume. It don't matter what happened, win, lose, draw, whatever people want to say. His 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 name gonna be next to Lomachenko's in history. Everybody else they don't want Lomachenko on their resume. So you can only respect that as much as you can. For some reason, people want to ignore that. You got Gary Russell in there hopped in the ring with Lomachenko. Like, man, come on, man. Y'all can't hop in the ring with Loma? Nah, he was 23. I think he was 23, wasn't he? I think he was 23. I think, no, uh, Eastside Cruz jumped in there with Tank at 22. Nah, you talking about Tank versus Eastside Cruz. That was 22, I think. 21, 22. Eastside Cruz was 21 and 22 years old. And I told everybody Eastside Cruz was going to possibly beat Tank in that fight. Oh, he a bum. He a bum. You don't even know this dude. You just saying that because it's Tank. I like him. Okay. And I heard he just got five a million followers in a week. This far down the line. Yeah, man. Eastside Cruz fought Tank at 20, 21, 22 years old. I've been saying that. And I knew it was going to go 12. And Tank was knocking out everybody. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I, bro, I, trust me, bro. Shout out Jay Will. Yeah, bro. I ain't been saying nothing on no, no. Yeah, T.O. was 22, 23 years old. Eastside Cruz was like 21, 22 when he fought Tank. I told everybody, I warned them. You know, it still goes on now, bro. I'm still telling people about other Eastside Cruises. I've been telling people about other fighters like Eastside Cruz recently. I didn't name two other guys like Eastside Cruz who just won, who had two upsets, upsets of the year. People don't even notice that. Yeah, I said that recently. Yeah, I didn't name all type of fighters that fight like Eastside Cruz. Oscar Duarte, I said that last year before uh, he fought Ryan. It's a lot of guys like that, man. You know, people starting to realize it now, but some of the new news be my old news, so I look like I don't know what I be talking about sometimes. Or it just look all out of place. It is what it is. People just going to have to adjust after a while. Yeah, man, dudes be having 30 fights. I'm not going to be a guy who see a guy who got 30 fights and be like, oh, yeah, he decent. Like, I've been watching that dude. If he got 30 fights, I've seen him already. If he got 30 fights. Like, we can't be having fans around here, like, talking loud and you just found a guy with at 30 fights. No, nah, that's – no, nah, bro, he's he's close to retirement at that point, especially these days. Definitely a lot of that going on. Yeah, but 140 is exposing a lot of this stuff, though. Yeah, bro, they don't like that truth I be putting out. Yeah, they don't, they don't like the truth I be putting out, bro. It is what it is. They don't be liking the truth, bro. That's why people be thinking I just be putting out a little fluff. That's why I just, bro, J. Will, I'm going to have to pump the brakes, bro. I'm going to have to just put out little predictions and everything else and just. Because I got enough information out right now. I got to get YouTube on my back, man. I'm just putting out boxing video there like I'm talking about Diddy or somebody. That's crazy. That's why I would ask people to hit the like button, but I ain't even going to do it. I'm going to just do like little videos here and there.
I gotta get back on the block, make some moves. Yeah, I put out a lot of information, man. I got enough information to last me to 2025. So to be real with you, I ain't got to put a video out to 2025 and I still be telling the news and that's on everything. I got videos I put out September last year and people just now announcing that news right now. That's on everything, no cap. No, that's, that's as humble as I can be. I got a video last year talking about Frank Frank uh Frank Martin and Tank Davis last September. Yeah, they be tripping on me, bro. They be tripping on me. They be tripping on me. I think it was a I think it was a Canelo video or something I did, probably. It was either Canelo or Tank. It was around the time I said something about them. They don't be tripping too much about Anthony Joshua, or nobody, but I said something about Tank or Canelo and they start tripping, bro. Yeah, they start tripping on me. That's why sometimes y'all hear my lies, my voice be all messed up. It don't because of my internet or nothing, because they be messing with my lies. They just be messing with my lies, like my voice and stuff on my lies and stuff. If you go back and li listen to it, or sometimes, I don't hear my voice because I be talking, but they'll be messing with my voice on here. I be putting out real information, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's why sometimes when people be barking at me or saying stuff, I just block them, bro. I ain't got no time for that. I might not even have my page if you're sitting around here. You know what I'm saying? That's why sometimes I just block these dudes. I already got other YouTube video, uh, pages that do more views than this. I just do this for the love of it. I got other YouTube pages that do way more views than this. I just do this because I love boxing. And I got tired of seeing fake news for the past 10 years. Yeah, that's why I be doing that. But yeah, people don't really care about hearing the real though in Boston. They just care about who they, hey, shout out to Go Good too. Yeah, they just care about who they want to hear. Because I heard people a couple of months ago, I said Eastside Cruz need to get that rematch with Tank. And I heard people saying, oh man, it's just like a uh, some other ones I got mixed in. It's just like some gaming and some other stuff, MMA entertainment whole bunch of other stuff trust me i know everything bro i'm, I'm real i'm well rounded trust me boston stickers ain't the only ones i know you know what i'm saying yeah yeah i know i know they be mad about what i'm saying I mean, at the end of the day, if I'm not talking about tanking Devin all day and I'm an American, they're not really going to like that. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of what they want my attention towards. But they'll sit up here and say, but you have a lot of fans, too, that they'll sit up here and say, yeah, man, I, I want to see somebody talk about all the fighters. Some people like that, but a lot of people, they be capping. You know what I'm saying? They, they be capping. Because if y'all look at it, I actually tell boxing like a book. Like, if you go through my videos, all my videos go together. If you go back and look, all of them go together like a book. I'm really, like, breaking it down like a story. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm, I'm explaining it down to the lowest decimal. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm explaining it down to the lowest decimal. Nobody was talking about Eastside Cruz the last eight months. I was the only guy I mentioned the Eastside Cruz the last eight months. Last eight months, ain't nobody been talking about Eastside Cruz. Like, forget, forget all that. You know what I'm saying? Like, most of the guys that's at 140 right now, nobody been talking about. That's how you know a lot of these weight classes. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't got a rush on. Uh, a lot of people don't got a rush on um, Eastside Cruz right now. I think they're gonna really uh, take their time with Eastside Cruz. Eastside Cruz ain't got a rush right now. He been fighting the hard fights. They talking about Zapato finna fight the guy he fought last fight. Not Roley, but Cabrera. So Eastside Cruz ain't really got to do too much. You know what I'm saying? They, they tried to push him out the way a little bit. He almost, he lost out on two championship fights. So yeah, I was saying that last year. 
I told everybody last year, 140, 168, and 154. I said that last year. I mean, I wouldn't say the star power, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't say the star power because they say Devin ain't a star, so if Devin leaves, is it still going to be jumping? I wouldn't say the star power. I'll just say it's, it's decent. They say the star power at 35 with Tank and Shakir Stevenson. That's what the fans have been saying. Man, they tripping lately. I don't know what's going on. They treat. I'm going to say one. I mean, Isak Cruz should at this point. If he got, if he, let me tell you something. I don't want Isak Cruz to be the only guy fighting somebody at 140. Like, I, I don't like when they do that. They'll have a certain guy fight. Like, he the money man. No, you make, you make the fights happen. You know what I'm saying? Now they looking at Isak Cruz like, oh, yeah, he can make a big fight now. I ain't saying as far as Devin Haney. Then, like uh, Jay Wilson said, everybody saying that uh, Devin fighting old tank old old opponents and stuff like that. If Devin fighting tank old opponents, that means that tank opponents ain't worth nothing. You know what I'm saying? You got a weak resume. Get your resume up, homie. Fight somebody that don't nobody want to fight. You know what I'm saying? That's how I look at it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Isak Cruz, it's hard to get knockouts when you're fighting number one contenders all the time. Now, that's going to be, that's why that other fight was looking like that. Oh, he ain't going to have no choice in a minute. And I'm going to be real with you. If Tank move up, that's going to be a black guy. If he move up now. If Tank move up right now, it's going to be a wrap. Tank move up right now, they're going to put Tank in a bind. Watch. Tank better stay where he at. He get the 140 and run to somebody like Gary Russell, he ain't going to do it. So he need to stay where he at. I think Tank waiting on anyway, man. I told y'all already. I got a video come out later on. I don't think I'm gonna put it out because they be hating on the channel. They be messing up my videos sometimes when I be putting out stuff. But I got uh I got a very, very top secret video I got coming out that don't nobody know about. That's coming very soon. It got something to do with anyway. And man, I don't know how I'm gonna do that video, but yeah. Let me get my mind back. Yeah, but I <laughs> they got some stuff brewing right now. Yeah, but like I said, though, Tank, if Tank, let me tell you something. Ain't nobody fighting Devin leftovers. They need to be fighting Devin. If if, if that's the case, fight Lomachenko. Until I hear somebody call out Lomachenko at 135, I ain't trying to hear nothing. I don't like how, uh, I don't like how Frank Marge just showed up to 135 and now he goes straight to Tank. You know what I'm saying? Him and Eastside Cruz going straight to tank. That's why y'all see on my page, I report on Frank Martin and Eastside Cruz. I don't know who these other guys that everybody else reporting on at 135. On this channel, I've been reporting on Frank Martin and Eastside Cruz. And this not, not last week, not this month, last year. Frank Martin and Eastside Cruz on this channel. And guess who's getting the smoke? I've been reporting on Frank Martin and Eastside Cruz. For some reason, those are the only guys they find themselves in the ring with Tank Davis. Tell me I ain't see it coming now. Yeah, right now. Yeah, absolutely. Tank's still top guy right now. Right now. Right now. But he got, Tank got some trouble on him. Let me tell you something. He gets to his next fight and he starts explaining it. Well, I ain't fighting this guy because, oh, okay. Hey. I'll tell you something. If Tank don't make no noise, let me tell you something. If Tank next fight is a quiet little 12 rounds where you can hear a penny drop, ain't nobody finna trying to pay attention to that. There's too many people fighting right now that's having big fights. 
a lot of these fights this year they're gonna be close these 50 50 fights coming up people think lamos and hitchens y'all think y'all gonna have trouble talking about that fight oh you're gonna have some trouble then this year if you can't find out if you arguing about that about a robbery oh, okay we you gonna find out this year you're gonna find out this year it's gonna be a lot of fights like that fighting once a year catch up to you i'm gonna let you know that right now that's like picking up a basketball and trying to play a a, a a full full court basketball game one time a year that ain't gonna work that ain't gonna work in no in no sport capacity it's the longest tank ever went without fighting what 14 months come on man this man went 14 months without fighting the longest in his career in the middle of his prime this man took 14 months off people don't understand circumstances 14 months off you said they ain't never yeah no they ain't never quiet but like i said though i said compared to what uh uh compared to like a, uh what tim zoo and fandora just had recently man look if dudes ain't bro if you go look at that whole car that whole fandora car everybody had a bad injury it went nobody taking knees like ryan garcia take knees you know what I'm saying? Dudes was out there risking their life. You know what I'm saying? Like until until dudes was actually getting in the ring with guys that's risking their life, not taking knees and stuff like that. That's when I'm gonna be like, oh yeah, oh yeah, Tank is shape right now. Oh yeah, he in shape. Tank is in shape, shape. I already said that last, a couple of weeks ago. I said Tank was gonna be in shape. I already said that a couple of weeks ago. Tank was gonna be in shape now. Now. I don't know. Hey, for some reason, I don't know why taking the best shape of his life fighting uh Frank Martin. The fight two months away. He's he in the best shape of his life. Why is that? Why why so serious? Yeah, yeah, me too. After Frank, who's gonna be left? Man, I don't know, man. After Frank, bro, Go Good said a good point. Who at the Frank who's gonna be left? Man, I mean, he better fight these mandatory, man. man put Loma Chico on your resume. I said it earlier. And don't nobody want to put Loma Chico on your resume? Loma Chico, bro, who don't want to have Loma Chico on their resume? So is Devin Haney gonna be the only guy that got Loma Chico on his resume? That's what that's that's one point I wanted to come to today. So Everybody say Loma Chico, he ain't lose to Devin Haney. So why everybody don't want to see Loma Chico fight again? What happened to Loma Chico? Everybody made all this noise about how he got robbed and all the other stuff. Why is why do Isak Cruz got more hype behind him than Loma Chico? Y'all say he number one pound pound all these years. Devin Haney really didn't fight him. You know, Isak Cruz, he lost the tank. So it's not like a loss to Devin Haney from Loma to Devin Haney. He had the same situation. So Isai Cruz and Loma had the same situation. They lost a close fight that everybody said was a robbery. But for some reason, we got more hype behind Isai Cruz than we do for Lomachenko. And then we got everybody's favorite boxers not calling out Lomachenko. Why your favorite boxer don't want to put Loma on his resume? What? What are we talking about? What is the conversation at 135? I don't want to talk to nobody at 135 until they want to put Lomachenko on their resume. or somebody close to that level we got people trying to explain why Devin Haney want to fight Loma and they don't yeah all right man it ain't that many good boxes out here for you to be trying to go past no Lomachenko get off the drugs get off the drugs immediately ASAP it ain't nobody out here in boxing that you can go past Lomachenko if it is I don't want to that's the, that's one reason I don't want to hear about anyway because y'all were just talking about Lomachenko the same way y'all talking about anyway so y'all gonna give up on in, in a way the same way y'all gave up on Loma Chico? The same way everybody gave up on Eastside Cruz? Because I was putting out a video about Eastside Cruz. Hey, Eastside Cruz trying to fight Tank right now. I told everybody Eastside Cruz news. He trying to fight Tank in January. Oh, they turned him down. Oh, they trying to do this. Oh, he's gonna fight Roly. People don't let me tell you something. People don't even know. Isak Cruz had re replaced Duran in his versus Mario Barrios. That fight was going to happen instead of Isak Cruz versus um, Rolly Romero. You know what I'm saying? It's all out of sorts right now. People don't really know who the best right now. They're trying to go off the past 
You better not go off the pass. Because these dudes' resumes ain't worth arguing about. It ain't worth getting getting a gray hair over. These dudes' resumes is not like that. I heard people screaming over Roley versus Tank a couple of years ago. And people don't even know her. I've been following Roley a long time ago. Before he – what? I knew Roley before he was even pro. That's old news. Like, if you just found out who Tank Devin or all these other guys was, man, I knew who I knew who Roley was back then. I wouldn't even get into all that. I'm telling you, bro. When I seen everybody say at the Tank fought Eastside Cruz, man, Tank just went 12 rounds with a bomb. That's when I said right then, nobody know boxing. Nobody knows about. I think that's the day I decided in my mind. One day I'm gonna start a channel. The day, the day they said Eastside Cruz. He went 12 rounds with a bomb. Oh, Tank went never supposed to go 12 rounds with like Like, I got that same kind of injury, energy this weekend. People had like Lamos went, went supposed to go in there and kick and destroy uh, Hitchens. I, bro, I'm a Hitchens fan. I had Hitchens getting destroyed in my mind. I was like, man, Hitchens might get destroyed. Y'all don't even know that. Richard Hitchens, one of my favorite fighters. I had him getting destroyed by Lamos. Me. The Lamos, everybody running around yelling about right now. I had Lamos in my mind. I picked uh Richard Hitch to go 12 because I knew what it was. But in my mind, I was like, he might get caught, he might get destroyed. I went on live Friday after the uh weigh-in. And I said, Man, Hitch is tripping. He all in his face. Talking about he ain't been in this level. I said, he doing too much, man. He ended up getting he end up losing like that. I said, last couple of dudes that been doing all that talking before a fight, calling out guys. They've been looking bad. You know, I be saying all this. I think people be thinking I be talking out of my neck or something, but nah. Oh, let me go. I'm sitting here. What y'all have said? Nah, Devin don't never get out of shape. Nah, he's been out of shape. Well, I ain't going to say out of shape. It's different between being out of shape and gaining some weight. So I'm not going to lie, though. Uh, uh, guys who really be in shape like that, I give them a hard time. They always be in shape and go 12 rounds. Charlo's always in shape and go 12 rounds. I have no idea how, but they definitely be in shape and go 12 rounds. So they putting in hard work. I got to – but they stay a little fat. I don't know why. I don't know. That's it's crazy. I don't know. It's hard to explain. I don't know how they be out of, sh like, big and, like, gaining weight but still be in shape. No, nah, not – Loma be stopping guys. You know what I'm saying? Loma, man, look, all I wanted Loma to do was step his resume up. When he started fighting Tia Fimo and these guys, I shut up. I'm just be, just going to be real. When, when Loma started step, stepping up his competition, I fell back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I definitely was putting pressure on Loma Chico. Y'all yeah, can see this page. I, I just had to let the fans know that, you know, sometimes they talk about these boxers like they just – the best thing smoking. And it's like, I done seen these boxes that they worse in some of these fights that these fans ain't even never even watched. Some of these guys, they don't even know been dropped. They favorite fighter. Now, I don't think Australia going to rob them. I don't think Australia going to rob them. No, nah, I don't think they're going to do that. This is an old fight. This fight was going to happen three years ago. Yeah, but I always stay ready. But, yeah, man, it, it's just what I seen this weekend, as far as that 140 uh fight with Hitches, anybody can uh uh say anything they want about it. But one thing I learned is people got to see certain fighters see, fight against each other. This, to see if they the best or if they good. Oh, I got to see him fight against a guy against, with a name. Well, me and you ain't in the same category, homie. I ain't got to see these guys fight somebody with a name. You know what I'm saying? I think a lot of that, people starting to get that confused now. I got to see this guy matched up with a guy with a name. That's crazy. A guy with a name? 30 fights? Man, dudes be having 30 fights and people say, I need to see him against somebody. Man, you don't know what you're talking about, bro. I don't, I don't know what it is. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Eastside Cruz, 25 years old, fought Tank at 21-22. Then last, I just heard today, Eastside Cruz got 1 million followers in a week from going an uh, eight-round take, uh, again, the eight-round TKO against Roller Romero. Got him 1 million followers. Not going 12 rounds with Tank Davis. That don't get you 12 uh, million followers. Doing a TKO with Roller, they get you a million followers. Now, if that don't explain how backwards boxing is, I don't know what to explain to y'all. This man with 12 rounds with Tank, possibly beat him. But for some reason, he just got, what, two or three years later, he got, what, eight rounds of Roley, stop him, and he get a million followers. These, man, these fans are bandwagoned out, man, to the max. I'm seeing the same thing uh, with uh, Lamos because I thought everybody seen Lamos beat up Lee Selby like I did. You know, I thought they knew he was a good fighter. Oh, you know what I'm saying? He, I ain't seen him in there with nobody. He ain't seen him in there with nobody. Man, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. The worst thing you can do in boxing, bro, is actually talk. If you're somebody who wants to tell the truth in boxing and be honest. Now, if you like a certain person, just be like, hey, big bro, I just like bro. You know what I'm saying? That's all it is. I just like him, and that's who I'm rolling with, and I can't change my mind. That's who I like. Okay. Well, save me the time. They don't, ha don't have me arguing about no dudes y'all be liking, man. Come on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That be the thing that be going on at boxing. That be the thing that be going on in Boston. I've been following Terrence Crawford for years. I'm talking about, I was running around telling everybody about Terrence Crawford. Man, look at this dude. This dude amazing. He's a beast. You know what I'm saying? And then they were like, nah, man, I feel like Earl Spence is good. I'm like, bro, I've been, I've been following Earl Spence. Like, If Earl Spence was doing the same thing as Crawford, I would have showed you. Like, He's not doing the same thing. I know who Earl Spence is. I'm showing you Crawford now. But the fans, they'll be stuck on what they like, though. Yeah, it don't be about... um skill or nothing like that because if we can explain skill we can talk about skill all day we can talk about skill all day but it's really not about skill bro it's about who make who look bad uh i like this guy because of this reason um he made so-and-so look bad so he got to be a good fighter like nah huh you know me dudes that can make somebody else look bad then go in the ring with somebody else and look terrible We've been telling fans for years, hey, man, Canelo getting a style like he getting there with a style like Mayweather or Bivol, you know, it's going to be trouble. No, nah, man, Canelo knows what he's doing. It ain't picked a style like that since. The two times he has picked that style, it went south. You know what I'm saying? The two times he has picked that style, it ain't went nowhere. That's what people don't understand. Styles make fights. That's why. And then another thing I'm going to ask people. You know, with a fight like with Hitches uh, had, I'm surprised that everybody thought it was a, a close fight after uh, after the fight. I knew going into the fight it was going to be a close fight. I'm surprised that everybody said, oh, Lamoles, I didn't know he was that good. Bro, y'all really be exposing yourself for real, for real. You know what I'm saying? Like, to be honest, to be honest, to be honest, kind of exposed y'all self the last couple of weeks. Didn't know Lamos was that good. Ah, that's a F. That's a F. Oh, Rowling ain't that good, but I give Eastside Crew credit for stopping him. That's a F. 
Eastside Cruz went 12 with Tank. You didn't give him credit then? That's an F. And he was 21, 22 years old. That's a double F. Devin Haney ain't fought nobody, but ain't nobody fighting Loma. Why would somebody not want to stop Loma Chico? Nobody ever stopped Loma Chico. Nobody wants to be the first to stop Loma Chico. It ain't nobody running around to, I'll stop Loma. I'll stop him. Nobody. Ain't nobody ever thought about this? Like, I'll get the Eastside Cruise at 140. You know, I'm going to get to that in about a minute. You know what I'm saying? But ain't nobody ever thought about, nobody trying, thought about stopping Loma Chico? Like, who is these dudes at 135? People be talking. That's why I be quiet about 135. You know what I'm saying? Who is these dudes that we really ready to cash out on a bet for? That's why I'm saying. If if people say Loma Chico got, in my mind, I'm thinking Loma Chico got raw. Everybody said he got raw. So we're going to fight Loma Chico still. He bought to have a belt. He's still that guy. Fight Loma Chico and stop him. If you stop Loma Chico right now, you're going to be pound for pound, number one, period. Anybody who stopped Loma Chico right now. Anybody. Zapata, anybody going there and stop Loma Chico, you're going to be that guy right now. You should. You should be that guy. But you're not, though. You know why? You're going to be that guy if you go stop Roley. But if you go stop Lomachenko, it's not going to matter. Fans don't care about that. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, that's what I'm talking to. My bad. I thought y'all was. Okay. You right. You know, they right about this, man. They right. Because 135 is not it's not like that, bro. I've been trying to tell people like that. The, the, the division is so weak, a guy like Frank Martin can go to the head of the table ASAP. You know what I'm saying? That's why on this channel, I'm going to tell you something. On this channel, I'm not running around putting out no fake news about if If somebody turned the, uh, turn the fight down and I say they turned the fight down, they turned the fight down. It happened. I'm not putting out, oh, y'all think he turned the fight down because it ain't happening. Nah. If he turned it down, it got turned down. I've been telling people that. Regis Progray said a couple of days ago, hey, man, I'll fight um, Dalton Smith. I told Eddie Hearn him that. And what I said the day, the day after, what, less than 24 hours after Dalton Smith uh, had stopped Zapata. Hey, man, Dalton Smith turned down Regis Progray. Come on, man. Facts on here. I think I put that out before I went to bed. What are we talking about? 135 ain't like that. Until somebody knock off Lomachenko and stops him, then I'll actually take somebody serious. To be honest with you. One of the top guys at 135 just left. So Eastside Cruz, he ain't there no more. So that weight class ain't really about nothing. Then with... Uh, What's his name? Pitbull. Look how he go. Pitbull go from 135 to 140. He's still that guy. Man, don't tell me about nobody at 135, 140, man. Just go back and, just go back and get, man. Bro, I've been posting Pitbull on my channel. These dudes at 135, 140 ain't trying to do nothing, man. Pitbull jumping from weight class to weight class. I ain't trying to fight nobody, man. These dudes ain't trying to fight nobody. They waiting on Navarrete at 35. I hear everybody in their mama calling out Navarrete. Navarrete is a 130 right now. Ain't fought at 135 ever in his life. Came up from 22, 26, something like that. And they like, yeah, I'm trying to fight Navarrete. Man, fight somebody else, man. And 135 is a deep weight class. That's why I told everybody last year, hey, man, don't make no fuss about De Los Santos because when it go left, all y'all going to disappear. I ain't seen no people since. Man, y'all not y'all know how many people came on my channel talking about De Los Santos gonna knock out Shakira Stevenson, and I said that fight is probably gonna have fifty punches in it, and it had probably less than that. I 
I've been going through this phase for a while now. I said this with Dilla Santos versus Shakira Stevenson. I said, man, y'all hyping up the fight. It ain't really going to be like that. Then with this fight, everybody like, yeah, Hitchens said he's going to do this and then I'm like, bro, this dude ain't, you know, this dude ain't come from Argentina just to, you know what I'm saying, lay down. That's why somebody in my comments, I forgot who it was. Let me know who it was because you know who you are. Somebody in the comments said, man, they got Hitchens stopping, uh, they got Hitchens stopping Lamos with a knockout. Who was doing the, um, the little chart? They said, these dudes tripping. They must don't know how Hitchens fight. I was like, man, he hit it right on the money. People thought Hitchens was going to KO Lamos. That's when I knew right then. I said, oh, they don't know who Lamos is then. They got this dude finna get KO. And then I don't, I don't even know if I even want to entertain the robbery conversation. I don't even know if I want to entertain that. I've seen guys get knocked down twice in a fight. Y'all know how many fights I've seen where guys got knocked down twice? Beat down. I've seen guys get knocked out so many times recently with robberies. I've been on my channel. I've seen dudes recently talking about, man, y'all, all y'all do is say people be getting robbed. All y'all do is cry about robberies in boxing. All y'all do is cry about robberies in boxing. That's all y'all care about. You think everything a robbery? I seen these same clowns this weekend talking about robbery. Yeah. So it got to be a main event fight for people to care about it, if it's a robbery or not. That's why I can't really entertain it, man. They're gonna do the they're gonna do the yelling and screaming for you. Everything that don't got nothing to do with boxing, everybody gonna do that for you. When it comes to actually talking about the fight, nobody gonna stand up and start talking. I'm gonna break that down for y'all one more time. When it comes to screaming, kicking, and screaming about the results of a boxing fight, everybody going to chime in. When it actually comes to breaking down a fight and talking about the science and everything else, the sweet science and the jab and, you know, oh, Hearns and Leonard, all the other stuff people talking about, none of that happening right now. I ain't heard nobody do no breakdown of the fight. No fights that happened this weekend. I ain't heard nobody break down Pacheco fight. I ain't heard nobody mention Diego Pacheco fight. Nobody even mentioned Diego Pacheco fight. I noticed that yesterday. I said, hey, ain't nobody going to mention Diego Pacheco fight. I said, they're going to just focus on the Hitchens fight. Okay. Sit back. I, I sat back and I said, let me think how many people actually watch the Hitchens fight. I'm thinking, I'm like, mm, probably that many people. Now, let me see how many people comment on the results. It's a group of boxing fans on the weekend. They don't watch every fight. So when they hear some results, they'll be like, oh, 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 oh. go make a video. and Yeah, 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 yeah. It was this, this, this. I literally heard somebody say in the highlights I seen. I said in the highlights? So you ain't watched the fight? You talking about what you seen in the highlights? Man, don't nobody have no high standards for me in no Boston, bro. The standard I'm at right now is Super Saiyan. Don't nobody have no standards for me in boxing, bro. These dudes that be running around talking about boxing, they got the lowest standards. These fans, I don't know what they be listening to. You're going to lose some money talking to these dudes. People have lost money. Lost big money. Big money. I heard people last year, I on every, I know Spence ain't. I was like, oh, man. And it's the same kind of stuff now, bro. Same kind of stuff now. Every time it's a close fight, it got to be something outrageous. And I know, like, I've seen fights that have been way worse robberies this, this year. I've seen worse robberies. This year, I've seen that. Last week, it was the cut. This week, it's the, the judges. You know what I'm saying? The judges, the cut. They act like, oh, this ain't never happened before.
That's what's kind of funny about it. They are like, none of this never happened before. It's kind of shocking the way. That's why I say a lot of people like Pitbull, guys like that, when they get in the ring with certain people, Lamos, when they get in the ring with certain people, he's going to make your boxer look extra regular. Extra regular. You know what I'm saying? Extra regular. That's why people try to get enamored with these losses and wins. A dude with a loss is way worse than a guy with a, uh, a win, especially like Isai Cruz. He didn't lost before. You know how hard it is for him to get a belt? He just got turned down two fights for a championship belt. Then turned around and fought for the 140 belt with uh, Tank Davis. I mean, not Tank Davis, Rolly Romero. At 25, he done fought all these guys already. And people try to tell you, yeah, so-and-so ducking. Ducking what? Ducking who? The guy who at 12 with Esau Cruz? Who ducking him? When? How? Where? Esau Cruz went out there 21, 22 years old going 12 around with dudes, man. That's why I be saying, I was saying that when the fight happened. Bro, do you know how many, how, how much kahunas I had to have to actually go out here on a limb and say that Esau Cruz had a chance against a Tank Davis? People say, you're a clown. I don't know if people understand that. People didn't give Esau Cruz no chance, Holmes. I don't know if nobody understand any of that. We're going to get to that right now. Nobody gave Esau Cruz a chance against Tank Davis. Show me the tweet, when, where, how. Nobody had a chance. I, man, everybody remember that. Yeah, you remember that. Appreciate that, Quattro. Quattro remember that. Nobody gave Esau Cruz a chance. I said, man, he just, because Esau Cruz replaced Roley. I said, man, Tank should have fought Roley, man. He he playing around fighting Esau Cruz, dude. He ain't no bum. I said, he got a loss, but he really with it. Do y'all hear what I said? I said he had a loss. He had a loss, and I still gave him a chance. I'm not no fan, boy. I'm not no casual. Esau Cruz had a loss before he fought Tank, and I still gave him a chance against Tank. Who who uh? Hey, who was uh, Quattro? Who was? Who was? Who was? That's news to me. Please, who was? Who was? Don't get, don't get these dudes exposed, man. Oh yeah, 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 man. Look, bro. Let me tell you something. When I said Tank David, bro, I had more Americans going on my neck. What's up, Slick Nick? I had Americans going on my neck. What's up, Slick Nick? Shout out to Slick Nick, man. He was on here with me some of my first lives, man. When I didn't know what I was doing. Shout out to Slick Nick, man. I appreciate Slick Nick for real. Well, you got hey. When I gave Tank, when I said that about Tank, I was I'm a Tank fan. I'm a life bro. I've been a Tank fan way before any of these dudes, guaranteed. Bro, when I said that, I was like, hey, this Eastside Crew dude, he's gonna be tough for Tank. Man, they were like, bro, you don't know what you're talking about. This dude a bum. Bum. They was like, he's a bum, he got a loss. And he a little dude. I said, okay. Then after the fight, guess what I had to do? I had to sit around and tell everybody, nah, man, Tank just fought a good. I said, Tank fought a guy that y'all just didn't know like that. That's why y'all give a Tank a hard time. I said, he's just better than what y'all thought he was. And this time, you know, so I really ain't getting nobody. I told everybody this time, you know, watch out for Lamos. I made about three videos about Lamos, two or three videos. Like, watch out for Lamos. He got some power. Watch out for Lamos. Shout out to everybody who gave me a like, too, on that uh, Lamos uh, prediction video. I appreciate that, man. Everybody who gave me a like on the Lamos uh, prediction video. I appreciate that because I definitely broke that fight down. I didn't need to do a post fight. Nothing. Lamos is the truth. And we got plenty of boxers like him walking around. That's why when everybody say somebody ducking, nah, homie. 
Let let your favorite fighter get in there with Lamos or somebody. Ain't nobody ducking. You can fight three or four times a year. Yeah, shout out to Slick Nick, man. Oh, yeah, 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 man. Yeah, that, man, they were going at me when I gave Pitbull a chance. They said, bro, 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 Americans did not think he was like that. They thought he was a bum. A couple of Mexicans gave him problems, too, but they didn't really know him like that because he was kind of tucked under PVC. Hey, he's a PVC fighter. Hey, I don't know if y'all know it. It was only one. Hey, Pit, hey, it was only it was only one American on on the PVC card. That PVC card, that Tim Zoo PVC card. Well, technically, it was more Americans, but you know what I mean. It was technically one American. Everybody else was Mexican or Australian or Ukrainian. So uh, hey. PVC had a lot of Mexicans on their car. Pitbull getting pushed by PVC. So I know everybody telling ghost stories. PVC got more Mexican fighters than everybody else, man. Get out the drugs. Please. Everybody. Immediately. PVC got more Mexican fighters than your favorite whoever y'all look at. They got more Mexican fighters than all these guys. Who y'all think been pushing PVC? To, I mean, Pitbull for the last four, four, four or five years. PVC went and put uh, Pitbull in the ring with Tank. And still pushing him after that. Everybody else ain't doing I got to give credit where credit do. I'm not a fanboy of promoters. I'm just telling the business. People like to talk about PBC and Al Heyman. I'm tired of seeing that Al Heyman dude name. Every time I look in the, I'm trying to search something about boxing. His name, I'm like, he never fought a day in his life. Why his name popping up? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I broke that down earlier, uh, Nick. Hey, Nick, I broke that down earlier because the last eight months, you know, Nick is a long-time subscriber, so Nick is a day one. So Nick knows everything I'm talking about. Nick, you remember when I was posting up them uh, Pitbull and Frank Martin videos last year telling everybody this is going to be the year that was going to show out and everything else? Yeah, Nick, one of them guys, was hitting the like on that. Nick knows exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, I told them. But, yeah, I don't, I don't know, bro. Like, I don't know. I don't know if these guys are real pit bull fans because I thought going 12 rounds with Tank would give you some kind of credibility since Tank was stopping everybody. And people were saying everybody was going to knock out Tank. So I was saying in my mind, okay, so pit bull went 12 with Tank. So if y'all look at that like it's impossible, that should give him all kinds of clout and credit. But me, you know, me being a Roley fan, a day one, I knew Roley had no chance against Tank. Tank Roley was green, bro. Pitbull was low-key green. 21, 22 years old. Pitbull ain't the same fighter he was. Everybody saying, this Pitbull right here will beat Tank. This Pitbull, this Pitbull right here. That's what I'm saying. T Pitbull, 25 years old. Oh, it was. It was jacked up. It was jacked up. Tank hand was jacked up. It was jacked up. But you got to understand, though. But you got to understand, though. If you know this, you got to understand. Tank been fighting the Tank been fighting guys like uh certain type of guys all his life. Up until that point, Tank had never been in there. Uh, certain situations, yeah. Certain situations. Certain situations, yeah. Certain situations, I don't. Sometimes they go against you. Like, it depends how you use it. It works. It works, but you got to use triangle theory a certain way. Like, everybody tried to use the triangle theory against uh, Usyk. They was like, Usyk looked bad against Trezor, so he going to lose to Anthony Joshua. So sometimes it don't work. Sometimes it does. Depending on how you use it. Uh, yeah, his hand made a difference. I actually told people that I was like, Tank was hurt. You know, this every this this all all stuff I knew. You know, Tank hand was actually messed up in that fight, but we got to realize though. You know, Eastside Cruz still doing this to everybody else. You know, what I'm saying the same thing Eastside Cruz did the rolling shoot. Same thing Tank did the rolling. And we got to also realize, too, Eastside Cruz was 21, 22 years old. He was 21, 22 years old 
fighting against. He was fighting in front of every celebrity in Hollywood. That fight was in L.A. They had every celebrity you could think of. He was 21, 22 years old. 21, 22 years old. We got to remember that. Eastside Cruz had a lot of pressure out there. So I know Tank had a hurt hand. and Hey, Eastside Cruz had to perform, man. Nobody knew who he was. That's why you had Charlos in the back. Like, yeah, Eastside Cruz. They would hug him like he won. Bro, they treated Eastside Cruz like he won after that fight. That's why I'm saying, like, the Roley, the Roley fight, it's just, he should have been getting this kind of praise already. I'm kind of, I don't know. I don't know how many fights Eastside Cruz need to really fight before he really proved that he a um, decent fighter. It's kind of weird right now. Yeah, Tank had basically the same thing. That's why, hey, Tank got a lot more uh, similarities to Canelo than anybody. Because Tank and um, Canelo, I think I think Canelo hurt his hand in the fifth round against John Ryder. So Tank had a situation like Canelo did. Yeah, I definitely think um, Tank got enough power to um, drop an Eastside Cruz, though. Or possibly, you know what I'm saying? Or oh, Eastside Cruz got enough power to drop him? No, Eastside Cruz was still, you know, it was a four, it was a four four eight four year age uh, difference. He's four years younger, so Eastside Cruz he got a lot more muscle and stuff. He's a lot more powerful than he was then. I say Tank was more closer to his uh, prime and things like that. And especially with experience, it'll be a different fight. I know it would. Yeah, Canelo did that. Uh, uh, that's how I knew um, Munguia was going to stop John Ryder because when Canelo had punched John Ryder and he dropped him, he looked at his hand, he was like, and started shaking it. Then after that, John Ryder started punching on Canelo. And in John Ryder's mind, he thought that because he was fighting the inside like that, that was giving him a chance, but Canelo was hurt most of that fight. Yeah, Santa Cruz. Hey, Santa Cruz. Hey, Santa Cruz let his hands fly. I don't know why everybody don't remember that fight. Santa Cruz was tagging uh Tank. I know everybody said that wasn't no powerful punches. Hey, listen to what Floyd was saying in the corner. They got him up. He up on the score. He up on the score, Tank. You got to do something. Yeah, Santa Cruz was giving them hands. Yeah, he got caught with the uppercut, but that was the only thing he got caught with. Cause that, if he wouldn't have got caught with that, it would have been a long night. Yeah, but bro, scientifically though, if anybody knows anything, bro, a shorter boxer, if you got a t a longer boxer, it's basically gonna be like a Lennox Lewis versus Tyson situation. If you got a tall, long guy with some power, any any tall long uh, a tall long guy with power can beat Tank Davis. That's that's not hard to really. It's the guys that's around his size that's gonna have trouble with him. But a tall long a tall strong guy around his weight in the same weight class, yeah, that's obvious. Yeah, me too, man. Fourteen months a long time. He ain't took a, he ain't took that long off in a minute. That's a long time. It ain't been that long in a minute, but he's in tip-top shape right now. I mean, he's in shape. Tank look like he in tip-top shape. And that's one thing I used to get uh, Tank uh, problems about. Early on, when he was with Adrian Bronner, he used to be walking around heavy, man. Yeah, I see them old pictures of Tank. Yeah, them, he was heavy, man, back then. So he's skinny right now. His neck skinny. Arms are skinny, legs are skinny. He got that weight off. I know why he's around that. I know why he's doing certain things like that. It's a, you know, it's a method to his madness. He's not just getting in shape. He's doing a lot of other things too. They testing some things out right now. You know, Tank's at 29 right now, age 29. So they testing some things out right now, trying to see uh, if he's at a certain point. Oh, that, hey, it ain't no rumors no more. 
It ain't no rumors no more, buddy. Frank Martin came out here and said the real on that. It ain't no rumors no more. It ain't no rumors no more. I'm glad he said it too. That let everybody know on cap. I done broke a few, a few stories on YouTube. I don't know if everybody know it. You can check the dates. I done broke like at least, no cap, at least like 50 stories. Before you, bro, I'm telling you, I just, I done been on some of these biggest boxing websites and they didn't post videos. I mean, post news right at, right at I did. So I got the news before they did. I'm telling you, some of them don't even know the fight's happening until, I'm telling you, man, that's a long story. Some of these boxing websites, they don't even know that certain fights is happening until I post it. That's why y'all been seeing so much uh fight dates get uh posted lately. Don't nobody be doing that for real. Just posting random fight dates all day. Don't nobody be doing that. They're giving out sauce right now. Don't nobody be doing that. They don't be knowing what's going on. But you got to predict the fight right though. Or if not, that's where the trick is. If you predict, I don't do no random fights that ain't going to happen. See, that Daniel Dubois fight and Hergovic, everybody talking about that now. I don't know, man. To be honest, I see Frank Martin. I want to say Frank Martin got a chance, so I'm saying, I don't know. I say a close fight like a draw. I want to in my heart, but from my studies, I think Tank Davis probably eighth round, ninth round. Tank Davis, eighth round, ninth round. I want to see Tank. I, I want to see Frank Martin challenge him to the 12th round. I think Frank Martin got a chance, but if I wanted to give a quick prediction right now, eight, eight, nine, eight, nine rounds. Tank Davis in shape right now. I already know what's going on. He kind of put me in a position where I can't really go against him that much right now. I can't have no. Yeah, he. Ain't... Oh, no, he did not. He did not. I know, bro. I know, I know for sure what happened. You know what's crazy? Uh, Slick Nick, I had did a live talking about Frank Martin and Tank Davis because I don't talk about Tank, Tank Davis that much on this channel unless it's important news, which it was. I was talking about they sparring match and everything. Then Frank Martin come out the next week. Now, this sparring match happened years ago. He come out the next week and drop a whole interview talking about the sparring match. Next week, he coming up and said everything I said on my live. Frank Martin went and said everything I said on my live. And dudes really think I'm going to go back and forth with them talking about what I can learn from them. Bro, I studied the game already, bro. Jordan ain't finna ask Kobe how to shoot a jumper. Yeah, Frank Martin, a problem, man. He's been a problem. He fought two top 10 guys last year. I, I said it last year. Bro, you know, it's crazy. Slick Nick, I'm going to tell you another thing, too. Um, When Frank Martin had turned down the Shakur Stevenson fight, I said in that fight, in that video, hey, Shakur Stevenson should fight Artem. I was like, he should fight Artem, who uh Frank Martin just fought. I said, he a top 10 guy. That'll be a hard fight. I said, he should fight him. Somebody should fight him right now. Guess who Shakir Stevenson finna fight? And I said that almost a year ago. He finna fight Artem in July. I ain't say Shakir Stevenson should fight Devin Haney next, or I ain't say Tank Davis next, or yeah, I said he should fight Artem next if that's a possible fight. See, I tell realistic news over here. I ain't finna be over here skip Bayless in it, trying to make it seem way more than what it is. Frank Martin really the goods, man. He really decent like that. I seen everybody making a, a fuss about Michelle Rivera last year. Frank Martin put them hands on him, then everybody got quiet. You know what I'm saying? I seen a lot of people saying, oh, Frank Martin a beast. But then his last fight, when he went 12 rounds with the guy, he had some problems. He fighting an Olympian. That's why I know people don't know boxing. He fighting an Olympian with a, a European style. What, that he's not familiar with because, you know, he has some growing pains and he's sort of a late bloomer in certain areas. Not really, but not really. You know what I'm saying? He's full form. He, he's he's a, he's a real good fighter. He's, he's a good fighter. He's going to show everybody. But um, he's not what the same as everybody be saying as far as when they were saying that 
he'll be able to stop this guy and that guy. At that point, nah. You know what I'm saying? But then they gave him a hard time at this last fight. So that's what's kind of confusing because it's a lot of people saying it's a great fight, but they were saying Frank Martin looked bad after his last fight. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of, I keep the optics of everything. I keep, in my mind, I keep receipts. So I only remember what people said. I don't remember what they're saying now. I remember the past, what they said, and over the last couple of months. So Frank, technically, technically, according to the fans, the diehard fans out here, according to them, Tank Davis finna fight a guy that ducked Shakur Stevenson and uh, got beat up by Tank and Sparn. According to, according to the diehard fans, the Tank Davis fans, they saying that Tank finna fight a guy who ducked Shakur Stevenson and got beat up by him and Sparn. That's what they'll tell you. So, they, <laughs> what story you want to hear? Unless, unless Tank want to mess up his face card in these streets. He can keep rolling with that story if he wants to. Like a lot of that stuff, bro, y'all be hearing, it be cap, bro. If y'all really talk slowly and listen to it, it's real, like, disturbing to hear. You know what I'm saying? You better, you better, I'm telling you, I said it the other day. Tank, Tank better go, he better go with the reason why I said he fighting Frank Martin. Don't tell me you about to fight a guy who you smashed and sparred. I don't have, no boxing fan may not come to me with that mess. Y'all better believe everything I'm saying about that sparring match. If you don't, your boy fighting somebody who he sparred and beat up, beat up. It's gonna make you pay a hundred dollars to watch. So which, which one you gonna go with? Mine or yours? Figure it out. Cause the truth hurts. You know what I'm saying? If Tank Davis fighting Frank Martin, a guy he sparred. What happened? Was it was it close? Was it a good fight? Oh, no, you know, he destroyed Frank Martin. Why is he fighting the guy he destroyed in Sparn? So I know that didn't happen. And if he did say that, I heard he said something about he dropped them in Sparn or something like that. I heard something like that. Hey, man, I told everybody when the Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia tape dropped, I said the first thing I said on everything I love, the first thing I said was, do everybody know that Frank Martin and Tank got a tape? Why are they, I said since we dropping sparring matches, why would Tank? Why would they drop a sparring match? Then everybody said Ryan Garcia dropped it. Ryan Garcia got it from somebody. You know what I'm saying? So why would why would we drop a sparring match of Devin Haney and Tank when Tank is finna fight Frank Martin? Why would you not drop a sparring video with Frank Martin and you finna fight? Frank Martin. Why would you not promote you and Frank Martin with a sparring match? 30 seconds of a sparring match between you and Frank Martin. Why would you just post that? Instead of posting or somehow Ryan, you know, everybody think Ryan's just a magician. Now he's a sorcerer. Ryan's a great sorcerer now because somehow he could just speak tapes into existence and it just pop in his hand and on his YouTube now. But for some reason, you know, the Frank Martin sparring match, it ain't nowhere to be seen. Come on, man. Come on, man. Like, for real. That's why I don't like talking to stuff outside the ring, because when I get into it, it ain't really no responses that's needed. Like, that's the, that's the facts. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling y'all what the fighter's saying. Bro, you know how many times I said, I've only been on this channel, what, not even, not even a year. Do you know how many times on this channel I've said something, and the next day another boxer or promoter said the same thing I said, like he's watching me? Do y'all know how many times that happened? I don't know if people understand how many times that's happened recently. Do y'all know everything I've been saying about Canelo is coming out right now? Everybody's saying the same thing I said? The $100 million he turned down? I said Canelo turned down $100 million from Benavidez. Oh, you lying. You lying. You capping. You capping, bro. So I was lying about Canelo turning down $100 million, but why, why everybody reporting now that he – he turned down 150 or he wants 150 million dollars. If he want 150 million dollars, that means he don't want 100 million dollars, right? So that means he turned down 100 million dollars, right? They don't even have the DC to hit the light button. You know what I'm saying? These folks don't care about uh real boxing news. They just want to be right about certain things. 
I mean, you can. That's why people got their own house. You can be right in your house. This ain't your house, though. Yeah, I think it was decent. I knew it was going to be a good fight. I mean, that was a good fighter. I didn't think too much of it. It went about how, how I thought it would. It went about how I thought it would. You know, the fans that don't know boxing, you know, they thought they think everybody just get knocked out. You know, they think that certain boxers just been training for the last 20 years of their life so they can just get knocked out by a guy just for the fun of it. You know, their parents been driving them to the gym for the last 15 years just so they can go out and get knocked by somebody like knocked out by somebody named Cremel Moton, you know, just for the, you know, just for the fun of it, you know. No, nah, everybody ain't finna get a knockout. That's the problem with a lot of fans that be, I mean, just, just be proud of the young, the, the young guy go to the body. That's all I care about. He go to the body. I seen that. So I don't really have too much uh, criticism about him. I'll just say some new things that he does over time, but he go to the body though. A lot of these dudes still don't go to the body. Some of these dudes' favorite fighters got belts and everything still don't go to the body. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. Kermel Moton, he's going to be the worst thing for all these dudes. Kermel Moton got like three or four fights already. So a lot of these guys, who people bragging about and things like that, I mean, it's cool and everything, but these young fighters, they go to the body. These guys who are like 21, 22, 23 years old, I know everybody talking about guys is ducking and everything else, but these young fighters that go to the body, you know, Eastside Cruz is technically still a 25 and under fighter. So he's 25 and under. Let me go to my banner real quick and see if I still got it up here. You know what I'm saying? Eastside Cruz is 25 years old. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He ain't going nowhere. Eastside Cruz can lose to three, three guys in the uh, Tank Davis generation and still in his generation dominate everybody else. He could dominate his, his whole generation and still go up to the next generation to compete. You got to be versatile these days. You know how people say you got to be versatile like a ba basketball player? You need to do everything? Well, a boxer's the same way. If you really want to fight somebody, you're going to have to go up to 140. Ain't nobody got to sit around a bed, Eastside Cruz. Hey, man, you want to go up to 140? You know, it's for a belt. You know what I'm saying? If you got to beg a guy to fight for a belt, he's a bum. In my eyes. I don't care if you're a good fighter or not. You're a bum to the sport of boxing. You turn down championship belts. With dudes giving their life to be in the ring, and you turn down belts to fight, you turn down a whole belt. A whole belt. And that's what's going on. That's normal now in Boston. Dudes like, no, nah, I don't want to fight him, man. The money ain't right. Oh, man, get that dude out of Boston, man. I don't care about your money. And that's another thing, too. I'm not finna count no boss's money. I don't do that on this page. I will report what they turn down. Turn down $100 million, is it? that's newsworthy. That's breaking news. Why would I not report that <laughs> in that situation? You turn down $100 million for a fight for 30 minutes? I can't get nobody in the comments that says turn down $100 million for 30-minute fight, period. And if you get knocked out in the first round, you're still getting $100 million. No, ain't nobody turn that down. Yeah, he has a uh, yeah, he does have a good style. He has an excellent style. He can kind of switch it up too. You know, I just seen uh he can kind of fight different styles right now. That's the kind of uh attribute East Eastside Cruz got that Carmel Moton got. That's why I think he'll be able to fight, move fast like Eastside Cruz is. They might do the same thing they did with Cruz, they might do with him because I think he's what 17, so. 18. So yeah, they're gonna move him pretty pretty fast for his age. But certain guys can handle pressure fights and big fights like that. That's why they Anthony uh Cuba guy, that's why they put Carmel Moton in there with him because they know that Moton can handle that style. Now that was a tough fight. A lot of guys don't take this fights like that at this age. That was a that was an early fight for him. That was an early fight for him. That's what people don't realize. He's not supposed to take that fight for another two years, technically. Technically, according to the how everything goes, he took that fight kind of early, man. They trying to press the gas on some stuff. 
it's some stuff going on right now. Uh, I reported last year that Kamel Moten called out in a way. I think people thought I was playing about that. It is what it is. Um, yeah, he called out in a way last year, so I'll drop a hint on that. That's not really a hint, but I just told y'all. But yeah, he did call out uh in a way um last year or something like that. And I don't think that's just clout chase. No, it wasn't in a way. I'm tripping. I'm tripping. Not in a way. I apologize. It wasn't in a way. He said something about that probably in the future. Not in a way. It was uh Lee Wood. Said he wanted to fight Lee Wood. I don't think Lee Wood has I don't know if Lee Wood dropped a belt yet, but said Lee Wood. Yeah, man. People don't even know it. Hey, Slick Nick. They don't even know it. I be yelling about my favorite fighter. If my favorite fighter ain't doing right, I'm moving on. You know what I'm saying? I'm moving on. I told people already. I might do another live later on. I got some. I got a live that's going to go harder than this, man. That's why I say I love guys like Eastside Cruz because they expose a lot of things, these fans. Like, I'm a different kind of boxing channel. Everybody else, they kind of focus on the business. I know the business already. So I can look at that with my eyes closed. But the fans, the fans that try to come at you with a narrative as far as fighters and boxers, bro, ain't no narrative. Just tell the truth, man. You don't want to push a narrative around here. One thing people don't say no more is somebody ducking. Ain't nobody ducking these dudes, homie. Eastside Crew is 25 years old. If he getting in the ring with Tank and rolling all the other guys, and you not, it's time to switch companies or something. Time to go to Pro Box. Make something happen. Make something happen ASAP. The career ain't going the way it's supposed to. Oh, yeah, I put this up a long time ago. You know what I'm saying? I put that up a long time ago. This is old news. I put this uh thing up, Tank 30, Moten 26, Inway 22. I put that up like months ago. That's always been the plan of certain things. If Inway takes another step, they're going to say, hey, man. We're going to have to do something. I don't think people understand the way things go. But I can't really say too much about certain things. They already be messing up my live. Y'all be hearing when it be skipping. If it be skipping, that's not my internet. My internet is just fine. If it be skipping, y'all know too many secrets. If it's skipping, if it's jumping like we on white noise or something, or one of those sci-fi movies, it ain't my internet. They really know I be when they say Boston secrets. I don't know. Maybe they just don't like the word secrets on my channel or something. But yeah, they don't, they don't like it when I talk about Canelo or Tank. It get outrageous on here. I don't know which one is causing the trouble, but I can take a good guess. But yeah, that's uh definitely something that can happen down the line. I feel like Moton's uh. He's trying to put himself in position, man. A lot of fans right now, a lot of fighters. This year right now, it's going to spoil. You see a lot of fans getting quiet now, right? That's why I'm saying, like, the Lamos and Hitches thing, that's just a type of tip of the iceberg. It's going to happen to your favorite fighter, too. I'm sorry to tell you. All y'all favorite fighters is in 50-50 fights with guys that y'all don't know much about. People don't know much about Frank Martin. Uh, So if Tank even had bad moments against Frank Martin, fans are going to – they're going to be casuals because they're going to be like, oh, look how he looked against Frank Martin. So, you know, a lot of boxers, they put themselves in bad positions when they fight guys that are not as known as other guys. Fighting a guy with a lower tier name, sometimes it backfires. Because if you go in the fight and look bad, you can't explain. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes the fans will try to explain, but it's not going to be no good reasons why he struggled against Frank Martin after sparring him. And things like that. Not saying that that uh, fight shouldn't be happening. That's actually a good fight. I'm actually waiting on that fight. That's a fight I actually wanted to happen. But the overall aura around everything, they try to make certain boxers feel like they're just invincible figures. Of course, these guys are great talents, but don't try to bring down another guy to try to raise another guy. You know what I'm saying? The, the one thing I've heard this week, though, know, Eastside Cruz getting a million followers in a week. He got a million followers in a week. I ain't hear nothing about Fandora getting a million followers in a week. Tim Zoo, 
Everybody told myself they was warriors, man. They shouldn't have went through all that. They ain't getting no million followers in a week. I thought Eastside Crew was going 12 rounds with Tank Davis equals a million followers. That's why I said, man, like certain guys like Eastside Cruz, he got to get in there with a guy with a name. Because if he fights somebody that fans don't know, they're going to say, man, he didn't do that good because this reason. That's why I bagged off of him. I was like, okay, man, I can't even, I can't even look at Eastside Cruz from a fan standpoint because they don't even know what he has going on. I figured that out recently. And I blame, I, some of it I blame Tank with because a lot of people recently they they making a big fuss about um guys beating um Tank's past opponents and things like that. But I think Tank gonna have some trouble. He uh turn around and fight uh some of these other guys compared to what he's been fighting now. It's kind of hard to jump up to that next level after fighting certain competition for so long. You better start raising that competition. I'm being real. It happens all the time, bro. These managers, that's what they call them. Yeah, that's a good word. Yeah, he's he's been he's been um he he's PBC been pushing him, bro. That's why I say a lot of people are weirdos, man. They weirdos, Quattro. They weirdos, bro. They weirdos. Eastside Cruz been pushing. They've been pushing Eastside Cruz for a minute. That's why I be making videos about Eastside Cruz. Cause I'm like, hey, I hope they put him back in there with somebody. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know, man. I think the average Boston fan right now, they just kind of watch on the weekends and keep it pushing. And it all depends. You know what I'm saying? Everybody not watching the fight. Let's just keep it 1,000. I've heard the numbers on certain fights. Everybody not watching the fights. Most of the people who are seeing these fights, it's highlights and post-fight reactions. and It's not really people watching the fight beforehand. I thought Pitbull, I've been, I thought everybody was going to watch Pitbull every fight since, um, since the Tank Davis fight, but I get going 12 rounds with Tank Davis don't mean nothing no more. I see that now. Even though he's been one of the only guys who actually did it, Ooh. I wanted to see Cruz fight uh Tia Fimo. That's who I wanted to see. I wanted to see Cruz fight Tia. Everybody got a fight right now. I know Tia Fimo got a fight. I wanted to see Cruz fight Tia Fimo though. I don't know why. I don't know if Devin Haney gonna be available. I don't know his situation. I don't know if Devin Haney gonna be available, and I don't know if Sabrina Matias is gonna be available. Um, they probably got they most likely got a plan around Matias because he's 31. And they got most of the 140s over there because of him right now. So unless he, unless Sabrina Matias get that East Side Cruz fight, he's fighting everybody on the zone. If he don't get nobody on, so I feel like East Side Cruz will be like probably plan B. Well, that'd be the first option for him right now. But Devin Haney's a plan B right now because in that situation, I think I think Devin Haney got they're gonna try to force a mandatory or something. They might do it. I don't know. They might do it. I don't understand right now. I know Sandra Martin is supposed to be up for a belt soon. So I think right now probably Tia Fimo. Tia Fimo hasn't fought like a pressure fighter in a while. Not like he did with Lomachenko, but it, but it wasn't like constant pressure. Yeah, they don't know these guys. They have no clue. Shout out to Go Good. They don't know who these guys be. They don't know who these guys be. They really don't. I've noticed that recently. That's why I'd be so much confusion at the fights. I mean, to be honest with you, it's common sense. If everybody know how a guy fights, and when the fight happens, I knew Lamos was going to have a style like that. Um, I didn't even want I didn't even want to uh, compare him to Isak Cruz and nobody, but that was the only thing I had on my mind at that point. So I had to compare him to that. 
But people didn't really understand it till they seen the fight. Then they're like, oh, my God. He was unleashing. Like, yeah, bro, he does that every fight. He is a beast. Cruz does that every fight, too. Yeah, I want to see Cruz fight them guys first, man. I actually do. No lie. Matias and uh, Tia Fimo. I like to see Tia Fimo first, though. I like to see Tia Fimo first, but we're going to see. I don't know if they're going to do the unification soon. They might try to save unifications till. I don't know. I don't see Matias staying at 140 past 2025. If he does stay at 140, I think it's going to be a little harder in 2025. He's been at 140 for a minute, so I think after next year, they're going to try to um, probably have a unification. End of 2025, 26, probably. That's going to be a long time to be at 140, though. Him and Devin Haney. It's kind of hard to be at that size at 140. You know, most of the time when guys get older, that weight starts to come on a little bit faster. It sits a little longer. So that's why him and Ryan Garcia, a lot of these guys going up in weight. And he's 30, he 32 now. I thought he was 31. Man, he 32? Whoa. Oh, he just had a birthday. Wow. Yeah, he is 32. I think he I think he's gonna try to last another year and a half. Yeah, he, he did just turn 31, 32. That's crazy. I think he's gonna he gonna last another year and a half. He'll try to he's gonna try to make it 34. At 140, but it's going to be a struggle, though. It's going to be easier because they got a lot of options at the zone at 140. A lot of guys have to fight people at one at the zone right now at 140. You got Dalton Smith. You still got Hitchens. Uh, I don't know if they're going to have Lamoles involved down the line, but um, you got guys like Barbosa and um, Jose Ramirez. At a Golden Boy, they're still on the zone though. So the zone has most of the 140 guys. That's why Oscar and um Eddie have a lot of things going on. The Ryan Garcia, I'm gonna tell y'all a secret. Then I'm just gonna drop some news for y'all. Uh, the Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney fight. That's the beginning of a 140 tournament. So this is gonna turn into a tournament in a minute. So the Roly fight, technically the Roly fight. Well, actually, if you want to be real about it, the Barroso versus O'Hara Davies fight was first. Then it was the Roley versus Isak Cruz. Now it's the Ryan Garcia versus Devin Haney. So this is a tournament they have. Think about it like Mortal Kombat or something. But it's a tournament they have. And then Matias going to be against Paro in June. So a lot of this stuff going down right now is... They already know what's going on. That's why I say I'm just – I already know what these promoters thinking. That's why I say I could promote a fight right now, homie. I already know what they're doing. I already know what they're doing. People never thought about this. I already know what they're doing. People don't think – a Frank. last year, people didn't think Frank Martin and Isak Cruz would be a big deal in 2024. They thought it would be more of Shakur Stevenson versus Tank Davis and things like that. So that's why Isak Cruz got a million followers last week. But they thought he wasn't going to be involved like that. Man, got a million followers this week. A million. Just imagine if Roley would have actually hit the ground. Man would have had five million followers. And then people say, why do people want to fight Roley? You know, he ain't that good of a boxer. It don't seem like the fans care how good Roley is. That conversation should never come up again. It don't seem like nobody cares how good Roley is. I thought that conversation never made sense. It seemed like right after the Tank fight somebody, then everybody said the guy ain't good no more. Was he good before he went in there with Tank or after? Oh, well, I had to see him against Tank. Oh, we got to wait on you again. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, that's what they're doing. They're technically doing uh super uh the uh super six. They technically doing it. 
They was doing it at 30. They doing it at 35 still. 35, they still doing it. They still doing it at 35. It's just that in the situation with Tank, it wasn't really straight up just 35 the whole time. So he wasn't really involved in the situation as much early on because he fought Hector Garcia. That's why I was telling everybody back then. I was like, bro, y'all let Tank fight Hector Garcia? Oh, Tank the Garcia, he's a good fight. He just fought Chris Colbert. You know what I'm saying? He a champion. Another thing, too, man, if these dudes keep co-signing other uh, fighters' opponents, when people say, oh, this guy's a good fighter, this guy's a good fighter, bro, why your favorite boxing channel don't promote these guys the next time they fight? You know what I'm saying? Dudes will sit up here and be like, yeah, man, Isak Cruz is a good fighter. They'll never post a video of him again until he knock out Roley. Like, they really be trying to just buffer these dudes' resumes, man. I'm saying it. Them resumes going to catch up with you, though. It's going to catch up. It's a lot of people now starting to realize, oh, this guy ain't fought nobody yet. Yeah, he ain't never sit, man. He ain't never sit. He ain't never sit. That's one thing. I think, bro, to be honest with you, Nick, I'm glad Nick said that. Because... Hey, Nick, because I think that's his his coach kind of understood that. Like, he don't really sit down on his punches like that. You know what I'm saying? He did a lot better job in the tank fight, but he started chasing. He get away from his fundamentals a lot. He has extraordinary power, but he don't, he don't use his full power potential because, yeah, he don't really sit. His footwork is horrible. He kind of hops, too. Hey, Nick, don't he be hopping a little bit? He does like a little hop or like a glide or a slide or something like that. Yeah, his power didn't never really stick, man. He got to get with a good trainer. He got to get with somebody who got time, though. Yeah, he did. Tank been fighting on the back foot for a minute. He's not really afraid of these guys. You know what I'm saying? He's he going to be on the back foot with most of those fights. He's not going to try to exchange with them. Uh, depending on how your hand speed is. That's why we need some guys that can kind of throw five or six, seven punch combinations because, you know, Eastside Cruz, he, he was giving out a lot more punches. It wasn't rapid over, over time like how somebody like Loma can do, but. I feel like Tank uh, Tank fighting a guy with like seven, eight punches in his face. That's kind of the style he would have trouble with. Just like with uh, Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz just didn't have any movement movement with his legs, but uh, he plenty of guys can punch like that. That's why I said uh, Frank Martin. I don't know if Frank Martin can ad-lib his punches like that, but we're going to see. Frank Martin going to need to be in the 12-punch combination era, area. I know people are going to try to feel like that's too much. But Tank going to need something in his face every time. Because if not, once he see that opening, he's just going to turn, lean, and just throw something. Boom, like he threw that uppercut against. You know, most of the time, he'll just wait on the uh, opportunity. So you can't be sitting there for real. He fought on that back foot. I don't think he's going to fight on the back foot this next fight, though. I think he'll be a little more aggressive. I want to see a lot more people kind of actually test uh, Tank's stamina. You know what I'm saying? Kind of push him to where he can basically go all out for 12 rounds. I think a lot of times people like to sit and watch a little too much, if you ask me. Because what they said that one time, you know, he was – they even said he was gassing out a couple times in that sparring matches they were posting. They admitted that, so I'm kind of like, yeah, somebody needs to pressure him like that off. Like, people don't do that, though. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Tank, Tank, Tank boxed. He boxed well in that fight. He didn't get a lot of credit in that fight, though. 
Pitbull was all over him. I think because people people didn't know Pitbull that much, but yeah, Pitbull was all over him in that fight. They were throwing some shots too in that fight, man. Yeah, he does. Exactly. Perfect. Exactly. Exactly. I think that's why, and that's smart that Kamel Moon actually said that because now he knows that he has to, you know what I'm saying, basically go for a long period of time. Those spurts ain't going to work. Yeah, he's pretty smart uh, knowing that. A lot of people don't know that. He's very smart. Yeah, he's very intelligent. A lot of boxers don't know that. A lot of it's a lot of boxers. I'm gonna tell you, Nick. It's a lot of boxers that that don't know that. They don't know that about Tank. They watch them all the time. I think sometimes these guys be sitting so much in one place, they're not really attacking like Isai Cruz did in that one fight. So you don't really get to see different looks. I noticed it too, man. A lot of times these guys get in front of Canelo and Tank, they'll just sit there in the middle of the ring and just watch. No movement. No jab. Yeah, I seen a couple. I seen a couple of guys do that. I was thinking about Rolly, but I forgot he does that too. I think he does that to kind of like position himself to kind of like sit on the punch. I think so. It's kind of like, but Roley, when he does, it's kind of like he's doing it all over the place a little bit more. Yeah, Eastside Cruz does like hop into the hooks a little bit. A lot of people don't jab him too. That's the problem. I think Roley was jabbing, but he ain't having enough. Yeah, he does set traps. Yeah, Tank always send a trap for a fighter. That's why a lot of guys, they don't know. You can't give them time to actually just sit there. And... That's why when Roley was kind of unleashing on him, I'm like, kind of waiting too late in the fight to do that. He didn't figure you out already. Yeah, I feel like overall, a boxer got to be able to fight two or three different styles with uh, Tank. Yeah, go to the inside. Box with him. I think Isai Cruz switched it up a little bit more, even though it looks the same a little bit. I feel like he boxed a little bit more later on because he was like, hey, hold on. I can't just walk up in here. But he was being aggressive, though, man, for the circumstances. Yeah, he was being aggressive. A young guy going in and walking down, trying to walk down tank. Kind of crazy when you think about it. That boy Grinch crazy. Yeah, they fall for it every time. Yeah, I yeah, I, I, I didn't see too many people uh saying anything about the Pacheco fight. Um I went I don't think Hitches is ready to be honest with you. Like as far as that level that everybody was saying. You know, Richard Hitches, he's one of my favorite fighters. But I ain't never feel like he was on that level. Y'all ain't never heard me on this channel talking about some. And I, bro, I'm telling you, I've been following Richard Hitchens for a minute. I ain't never been on this channel trying to raw raw about he at that level or something like that. He ain't at that, he not at that level, man. I don't know why everybody thought that. Pacheco, he only like 23, 24. He still got some time. He's still filling out with his body and stuff like that. He actually took uh took the guy's power actually better than I thought he did. Um, yeah, he on that Belanga level though. I agree with Grinch. Yeah, I co-sign all that. I wouldn't say he's overrated, though. He just went at that level. Yeah, he's still a prospect in my eye, to be real. Like Nick said, he's still a prospect. I think that Jose Zapata win and him talking a lot lately kind of made it worse for him. I ain't going to be lie. I ain't going to lie, though, man. I'm not going to really try to save him in this situation. He set himself up. It's a thin line between uh, marketing yourself and setting yourself up for getting memed and commented on and people feel like it's a robbery. I told bro last time, you got to be more aggressive. You got to be more aggressive. 
You know what I'm saying? You got to be more aggressive when you're in that ring. You sitting there, got a guy like Lamoles all over you. You were trying to fight inside and your stamina bad. No, sir. Yeah, me too. Me too. He don't do that, though. I like to see that, though. But he'll have to kind of work with somebody who's familiar with that. You talking about, I like how Kodo used to Kodo used to kind of maneuver like that, you know, a little bit. Kodo did that against Mayweather a couple of times. I like to see Tank kind of involved towards the uh towards the style of Kodo. So he can kind of uh brawl and box because he can do a little bit of both. So I like to see a Miguel Kodo style a little bit more. I feel like Tank's defense is a lot, it's underrated too. Tank Tank defense is underrated. He's a short guy. He's gonna get caught, he's gonna get caught in the face and he's gonna get a red face, but his defense is underrated. Yeah, it's, it'll be a style matchup. You know what I'm saying? I don't to be honest with you, I, I don't know how um I don't know how anybody the way I look at the fight, bro, I don't know how people look against Lamos. I don't know how people look against Lamos. I don't, I don't know how people look against Lamos. I definitely think Lamos is a uh, very good fighter. I, I think it was a good fighter going into the fight. I like Argentina fighters, man. I like their style. They come to fight. Yeah, I like Lamos. It's always a robbery in a fight, man. It always happens. Either either way, any kind of fight go, it can always be a, re a robbery in a certain fight. People said uh, Tank Tank robbed uh, Isaac Cruz. So I, people ain't going to really care about it in a couple of months. I've learned that in boxing. I used to care about uh, robberies and stuff like that and explain them, but people don't really care about robberies for real. If we want to keep it a thousand. Uh, hey, hit, hey, Matias got to he got to come out this fight. He got to come out this fight like uh. The Liam Powell fight. Liam Powell ain't no bum, man. Liam Powell, he from the same place Tim Zoo from. He ain't no bum. He not he not going in there to lay down. He going to Matias country to fight. Uh, people talking about he he turned it down. He ducking and he don't want the money and all that stuff. And I told everybody else, hey, Liam Powell ain't never ducked nobody. He ain't finna duck nothing. So I heard a lot of fans saying that Liam Powell was ducking Matias a couple of weeks uh months ago. I mean, when the fight um has a little trouble getting getting negotiated, man. Hey, hard. Hey, Paro. Hey, Paro is hard. Paro is hard. Yeah, he gonna get exposed. He ain't ready, man. I don't think Hitches. I think I don't think Hitches is. It's a couple of things going on with Hitches, man. It ain't just like him overall, but. It's a couple of things. Yeah, Paro, man. Paro going to be a hard fight, bro. Paro is going to be a hard fight. People are going to be surprised that fight go 12 rounds. Paro is a hard fight, man. He is he is tough. I'm glad Matias getting in the ring with him because it's going to make him look better. Matias going to look better after he getting in the ring with him. He needs some names on his resume right now. That's definitely a fight I wanted to see. Yeah, I was telling people that, man, look, one thing we got to stop doing in Boston, we got to stop calling people boogeyman with losses, dudes who didn't lost before, and what's the other thing? I forgot. Guys who lost, 
um guys who go 12 rounds with people that we never heard of there ain't no boogeyman's bro there's a lot of people being called boogeyman in boston it's a lot of people right now the only person i know is a big boogeyman right now dave benavidez and that's a fact Yeah, you remember? Yeah, I said he's gonna knock him out. I knew he was gonna knock him out. You know, everybody else was high on Montana Love. I wasn't. I knew he's gonna knock him out for sure, for sure. Yeah, Liam Powell's an animal, man. Liam Powell from uh, he from Australia, just like Tim Zoo. <laughs> he ain't coming over here. Uh, to, he ain't going to Puerto Rico to lay down. It's gonna be the same type of fight, but we it's gonna it's gonna make Matias better though. It's gonna make him better. I think Matias dialed in right now though. He I seen him training. I had a video, I don't know if I posted it, but I seen him training, man. He's uh he be doing an excellent job, man. He's ready to fight. This year gonna expose a lot of people though. I'm telling y'all. All these fighters, y'all talking about somebody been ducking and all this other stuff. I've been trying to warn y'all. Hey, relax on that ducking stuff. Hey, relax, man. These dudes ain't getting ducked like that. I just heard everybody saying last week. I really ain't went over. I got old news. It's really new news, but to me, it's old. I still got people talking. Last week, everybody was talking about Earl Smith's fight for door. Y'all remember that? I got Fury in that fight right now. I got Tyson Fury right now. I got Tyson Fury right now. In that fight. I definitely got Tyson Fury. I I was going with Usyk for months, but I'm going here. I'm going here and go with uh Tyson Fury, man. I'm going to trust my gut on this one. I'm definitely going for Tyson Fury on this one. I'm going to expect a lot of leaning, a lot of weight, uh, using your weight. So I'm definitely going with Us. I mean, uh, Fury. Yeah, that fight ain't gonna happen. That was, that fight ain't gonna happen. I think that was a promotional strategy. That fight definitely not gonna happen. Hey Nick, you know what's crazy, bro? This uh, these fans, man, they go, I know they ain't gonna like me, bro. Because they change how they change who they like every day. I remember last week before the Tim Zoo fight happened, they said they didn't want to see Tim Zoo versus uh Fandora. They said we don't want to see Tim Zoo versus Fandora. We want to see uh we waiting on Zoo versus Crawford. Hey, what happened to the uh Now, Fendor said he want to fight uh, Terrence Crawford. You seen that video with Fendor? Was like, I want to fight Terrence Crawford next. They were looking at him like, what? What are you talking about? Man, didn't nobody think he was going to win? They didn't think he was going to win, so. Not everybody trying to put a Fendor fight plan together. They're like, oh, I didn't think he was going to win, so. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, though. People be trying to say, that's what I be saying. These boxers be trying to tell me, like, hey, man, so-and-so call them out. Bro, you got your trainer and promoters talking for y'all. Y'all ain't calling nobody out, man. Hey, why he got to be Crawfish? You don't like Crawford? Why you don't like Crawford, uh, Grant? Grinch, Chris, why you don't like Crawford? Why he got to be Crawfish and why Zoo got to be Zoo? Huh, Grinch? You gonna make me roast my favorite fighter now? Why? Why Crawford gotta be Crawfish and Grant, uh, and Tim Zoo gotta be Zoo? Why he can't be Z O O and Crawford be Crawford? 
Tim Zoo, Tim Zoo ain't did nothing to earn no respect like that, man. Come on, man. Tim Zoo ain't did nothing but get but get a cut on his head and get his face punched in for twelve rounds. I can do that right now. Is anybody gonna respect me? No, nah, for real. Cause I'll be like, Tim Zoo be getting way too much respect these days. We treating Buddy like he's number one pound for pound. That's my guy. And I'm just like, bro, I ain't did nothing. I don't give a damn how long he bled. I don't care if he bled all the way out. I don't care about that. Throw the throw the towel in. You know what I'm saying? Like Tim Zoo be getting way too much credit for that blood stuff. Uh, I'm for real. Him and all these other dudes, they just got to go 12 round with somebody. He said, Sansa said Crawford doesn't sell like Spence. Benavidez don't even sell like Crawford. So what are we talking about? Who said, who said Benavidez sell like Crawford? So Fandora... Or a promoter, he promotes Benavidez and Fandora, and he worried about Crawford numbers. Who said Benavidez or Fandora sell more than uh Crawford? You know what I'm saying? Fandora and Benavidez don't sell more than Crawford. It ain't got nothing to do with pay per view numbers. And uh, another thing too. I, I, another thing too, man. Another thing too. He don't even. <laughs> Samson's so funny, bro. Samson is so funny. So that's why I said Samson, man. That's why I put pressure on Samson a couple of weeks ago about the Canelo stuff. Cause I'm gonna tell y'all why. Samson waited to all the way to June. What? What? We in April. So the Munguia news came out in October. He waited all the way to April and be like, oh, Canelo ain't trying to fight Benavidez. He going to never do it. He'll never fight him. No. Like, bro, come on, man. I don't like all this. I feel like if Samson ain't going to put out no information that's solid, like I'm just going to do my own reporting again. Because I, because what I, what I learned this year is I'm not listening to anybody who put no news out. If it's a mainstream, anything like that, I'm done with all that. They announced Benavidez and Canelo mainstream. Him, he was gonna fight Crawford, all these other guys. I'm like, okay, man. Mainstream, they announced it. These dudes ain't fighting over. Bro, let me tell you something. So who who the best name on Tim Zoo Tim Zoo resume right now? Is Fedora the best name on Tim Zoo resume? Cause we got low standards for these uh for these uh what would he, what we call these guys these foreigners we got low standards for these foreigners man Mendo Mendoza better than uh Fendor? damn Harrison Harrison and Fendor. ah. He almost 30 years old. Man. So when he turned 30, he turned 30. So by the time he fight Fedora again, he's gonna be 30 years old, right? Uh, uh he better get to going. I'm gonna tell y'all the name. Everybody better uh better uh look look at the uh I'm gonna post his name up real quick. I'm gonna tell you who bro, somebody came down from the heavens above and saved all these guys in 154. Let me tell y'all who who they got to worry about. Another guy. And I feel like the business canceled his fight on purpose. Y'all don't know this yet, but I know Xander Zayas next fight. Well, his next couple of fights. His next two or three fights. This dude right here at 154. Whoever everybody yelling about. Make sure you go see him. 
I think he's 21 years old. Make sure you see him. 154 loaded, man. 154 loaded. We don't even know of a Tim Zoo. This is the first 150. This the one. Ain't this the first? What? He fought what? How many 54s he fought already? He done fought what? Three 54s, right? So Harrison, Mendoza. Oh, yeah. I know. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I know. Oh, yeah. I know. I know. I know. Trust me. I know. I know. Trust me. He was supposed to fight last month in March. They changed the fight. They canceled it. They tried to save everybody else at 154. They said, we don't want Xander Zayas to eat the rest of these guys. We don't want the uh, children to eat. You, you know what I'm saying? We don't want we don't want the children of the corn thing to continue. So we're going to move Xander Zayas so we can help make room for guys like Spence and Fandora and these other guys can come in because Xander Zayas will destroy these guys. These dudes ain't even jabbing these days. Oh, yeah, he had all that going on, man. Yeah, he had all that going on, man. But at the same time, he got to show up, bro. He got to show up. He got to show up. Too much, too much energy spent on Twitter. Twitter is real energy, man. You give your energy away like that. A quick conversation in 30 minutes, so give it too much time away, man. Get in the gym. I'm telling the same thing I told Shakir Stevenson. Get in, the gym, get in the gym, get out the internet. Everybody know who y'all are already. They know who Richard Hitches and Shakir Stevenson are. They ain't got to promote themselves no more. I know they ain't the type to just be out here promoting themselves, but it's time to get in the gym, man. I mean, yeah, I mean, they ain't give him enough credit. I mean, how Tim Zoo, how Tim Zoo had a belt this whole time, and he going there and lose to Fandora, now he that, now he that guy. Why he wasn't that guy before he lost to Fandora? Why he got to lose to Fandora to be that guy? How that sound? These dudes don't know boxing. Oh, yeah, Ooh, Cruz, he lost, to, he lost to Tank Davis, so he a beast. You're a phony, homie. Quit being a phony, dog. Quit being a phony. Please. There's a lot of people phony out here in the business. They explaining why somebody lost. That was four years ago. Who cares? Make it happen now. No, they're not fighting to November. That's over with. They fight one time this year. They're gonna fight. They're gonna fight each other twice twice this year. That's the only fight they gonna that's gonna happen. It's gonna be November, December. They're not finna fight. Uh PBC already got a schedule going up. They're not finna not push the schedule. You gotta think about it. A lot of these guys have been waiting 18 months to fight. They're not finna move nobody else for uh Tim Zoo and Fandora. That's why Fandora got moved to the uh main card because it had been a long time since he fought, so he wasn't trying to wait. I think I think Tim Zoo fought like two or three times since the last time Fandora fight. That's what people don't even want to talk about either. Tim Zoo didn't fought he fought like three or four times last year. He's been active, man. He had everything he had everything he needed. Stamina. He been in the gym. He fought the top guys. No, nah, AJ looked good last uh the last two fights he's been in. I actually gave him credit for the Otto Wallen fight. Ain't nobody care. That's what I knew right then. Don't nobody care about Anthony Joshua. I said Anthony Joshua looked good in my post fight for uh Otto Wallen, but people don't they don't care about Anthony Joshua like that, man. You know what I'm saying? He really, he really man made, man. No disrespect, but a lot of these guys in boxing man made, bro. You know what I'm saying? If you got all your credit off one fight, that's not a that's not a real fan, man. Somebody just people know you off one fight and they kind of watch you. That's not real fans. Oh no, he'll get destroyed right now. Right now. He need to do a couple of things better, man. A lot of one thing Hitches need to do is he need to believe in himself and let his hands go. He catching too many shots trying to trying to think and process. Just let your hands go and fight. Fighting's supposed to be natural. It's supposed to be rea reactionary. These dudes be in there looking like they're trying to dissect information. Like you're gonna get beat up by anybody doing that. I don't care how good you are. 
You standing around thinking in the ring, you're gonna get beat up. Yeah, hey, a lot of people was in shape on that car too, bro. I said that too. A lot of people was in shape on that car. It was a lot of people in shape. Are you saying Shakur and Hitch's foe? Uh, I agree with that because they don't um they don't believe in they, they don't believe in their abilities like that. I'm gonna just be real. You know, you know when somebody believes in their abilities. You see Eastside Cruz, he believes in his abilities. He like, if I'm gonna lose, I'm gonna lose swinging my arms and putting my chin in the air. Somebody knock me out, cool. That's why I respect that, man. I respect Australia, uh Argentina fight, Australian fighters the same way. For some reason, they'll go out there and let their hands go. As bad as Jeff Horn used to look to some people, he let them hands go. He let them hands go. Matt Pacquiao, Crawford, he going to let them hands go. So that's that's a skill. Letting your hands go is a skill. That'll actually win you a fight. So, yeah, that's a skill to have. That's one of the most important skills that people don't realize. People win fights just off letting their hands go. First thing somebody say in a post uh post fight, man, I should let my hand go a little bit more, you know, trusting myself. Okay, you at this level right now, you ain't let you ain't trusting in yourself. Oh, okay, ain't no more, nothing else to talk about. But no, nah, I love all boxers, though, man. I got respect for all boxers. That's why I report everybody. I try to, I try to report everybody. You know what I'm saying? I report on everybody. I try to because a guy like Lamos will come up here. And he'll surprise everybody. And he shouldn't be a surprise. You know what I'm saying? He should be somebody who should be celebrated because I seen Tim Zoo put on performance just like Lamos last week with blood. But Lamos, he do he do it without blood. And all everybody else is focusing on is how bad Richard and Hitches look. Can we give the guy who actually fought on the other side credit too? Lamos a good fighter. He let like everybody look like that. That's what I really think the problem is, to be honest with you. Hitches was never that good. You know what I'm saying? To be real with you, Richard Hitch is 26 years old. He just beat Jose Cepeda a couple of months ago, I think. He ain't never been at that level to where we would just drop everything. Hitch has been the fight. And that's one of my favorite fighters. I think everybody fanboying over him for real because he's one of my favorite fighters. Let me say that again. Richardson Hitches is one of my favorite fighters. I was following him on Twitter three or four years ago. That's nothing. I knew him years before that. So, yeah, he's one of my favorite fighters. But yeah, it's 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 nothing. Uh, he got beat down though. It was it was something given. You got to. That's why I said that's why Eastside Crew just now getting credit because people didn't. I'm gonna expose that too. That's why Eastside Crew just now getting credit because people tried to say, "Oh, Tank just looked bad," you know. So that's why Eastside Crew's got a million followers this week. He got a million followers this week, and Roley didn't even hit the ground. What's up, JDM? Yeah, Rowley didn't even hit the ground. He got a million followers. What other fighter can fight somebody and the guy not hit the ground? He's going to get a million followers. Let's get to that point. Is this about boxing or is... what's up? Because Cruz been doing this. He been doing, beating the guys down. Oh, it's because it's Rowley. Oh, okay. And, and then fans want to realize, oh, why do people want to fight Rowley? He's not that good because y'all giving people credit for beating Rowley. It's common sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. And another thing, too, he probably just didn't see the fundamentals, uh, JDM. You know what I'm saying? A draw and the fundamentals. I I knew the draw thing wasn't going to be possible as far as the position he was in. He was kind of in the same – he kind of in the same situation as Tank as far as – kind of hard to do two things at once in the same situation. He's not really a draw, and he – I don't think he prepared like that. I don't think he's prepared. I think he needs a lot more. At this time right now, he's 26. He need to have some different kind of training or something. A lot of guys it's better for. I wouldn't say a boogeyman, bro, because ain't nobody running. That's what I'm saying. Like, 
Ain't nobody running from them. The only person is actually the only person that's getting ran from is Benavidez. David Benavidez is the only person in Boston right now who's actually getting ran away from, where people are running away from him, not wanting to fight him. He had two negotiations with Munguia, turned down. He was negotiating with Munguia and got turned down. Canelo, no fight. I don't want to call dudes who somebody that got the best of, a boogeyman. And then a guy who actually undefeated walking around, we like, oh, yeah, he ain't no boogeyman. No, nah, that don't make no sense. You know what I'm saying? If you got dominated before, you're not a boogeyman. No, nah, I can't. And 140 too deep to be calling anybody a boogeyman, because I'm going to tell you right now, they used to call uh, Loma Chico a boogeyman. They call Loma Chico a boogeyman. They call Triple G a boogeyman. I seen people call Tyson Fury a boogeyman. Uh, who else? They used to call Manny Pacquiao a boogeyman. Um, I can go down the list all day, bro. They call Earl Spence a boogeyman 12 months ago. 12 months ago, Earl Spence was the biggest boogeyman in boxing. 12 months ago. You had Canelo and all these people. Yeah, I'll fight Spence. 12 months ago. Ain't nobody a bigger boogeyman than Terrence Crawford right now. If we really want to get into that conversation, Terrence Crawford, the biggest boogeyman in boxing. It ain't even close. He got to fight David Benavidez. It ain't no other boxer in boxing right now who came up from 135. Now, let me ask y'all a question. It's a, lot, it's a lot of other guys that came up from 135. They ain't mentioning them with uh, David Benavidez. From 135. So he can go from 135 to 168 fight David Benavidez. That's why I said, like, it's real. To be honest with you, I'm going to be real with you. For anybody to say, to not say Crawford name before Benavidez, I mean, before, um, shoot, even Benavidez, before Benavidez or anybody, I'm going to tell you right now, if Terrence Crawford went and got stopped by, by I mean, by, if uh, Earl Spence got stopped by Terrence Crawford, and people don't think Terrence Crawford is a boogeyman, that means American boxing is trash, it's horrible, and I'm not even going to talk about it on this channel, period. And if people want credit for being American fighters, I'm not going to give you that credit either because obviously you're saying it's bummy. So if, if Terrence Crawford don't get, get credit, I don't want to give no – I'm not giving credit for no somebody going 12 rounds with hitches. Okay? But he wasn't – y'all didn't think he was that good anyway. So Or maybe people did think he was that good. I don't know. Maybe, maybe the truth is being revealed right now. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I seen that. I seen that. I'm tired. But you know what's crazy, though? These guys, you got to argue with each other. It's crazy the two guys that you got to argue with each other in the same situation. That's that's my thing with boxing right now. Until and I'm and you know what's crazy? I don't usually push this point, but I'm gonna tell you right now. The fact that people are letting I'm gonna tell you something else. And I'm trying not to use no profanity right now. The fact that people walk around and use and just they are enamored with in a way. And I try to ask people, what what's up? What do you like about in a way? Oh, well, you know, he fought Stephen Fulton and all that. I'm saying, okay. So when the next time you're going to fight, watch Stephen Fulton fight. Like, none of these dudes, like, dudes say, acting like Stephen Fulton weren't the greatest things to ever walk this earth. But they ain't going to watch his next fight because he lost the end away. Like, get out of here, man. Like, lose, lose, lose it, bro. Like, please, just get out of here. You know what I'm saying? Oh, in a way, beat Stephen Fulton. Are you going to watch Stephen Fulton fight again? No, but, you know, in a way, he got to get credit for that. You don't think Stephen Fulton that good anyways. They don't like dudes ain't good to them until they to to somebody till they lose. When a guy lose, hey, wait, when you see a guy lose, you're gonna find out who everybody like. When Earl Spence lost, ain't nobody said nothing bad about him, nothing. Terrence Crawford ain't even lost a match ever in his life, as far as, as a pro. And you got people walking around acting like he lost. And you got dudes talking about dudes who lost is boogeyman.
How is guys who have losses are boogeyman? Like, do I have to start being biased on this channel? Am I being too fair? Or do I got to start being biased? Dead ass serious right now. Do I have to start being biased on this channel? Dead ass serious. That's a, dead, that's a real, real ass question right now. Do I have to be biased on this channel because people are still saying that dudes who got losses is boogeyman to boxing? Do I am I still gonna have to entertain that in 2024? Boogeyman in boxing? Man, get the hell out of here, man. Ain't nobody turned down no millions of dollars, bro. I don't know what earth, I don't know what planet y'all stay on, bro. The cash up at the bottom. If anybody turned down millions of dollars, my cash out right there. You turn anybody turn down millions of dollars to box anybody for 30 minutes. My cash out's at the bottom. Send that millions of dollars right down there. Your favorite fighter. Anybody who talking about guys is boogeyman. What fighter right now is turned down millions of dollars not to fight somebody like Matias or Eastside Cruz? Let me know right now. What man on earth, so I can go to his DM and tell him he's an idiot and go in on him. I'm gonna go live about him. Who's turned down millions of dollars to fight Sabriel Matias and Eastside Cruz right now? What man on earth? Matter of fact, what man, period, in any sport, any job, Home Depot, Walmart, I don't care where you work at, who's turning down millions of dollars to fight somebody right now? And then we can get back to talking about boxing. I'm just asking. Who turned out millions of dollars to actually see somebody fight right now? To see somebody to fight for 30 minutes? You got to ask yourself why Canelo turned down $100 million to go in the ring for 30 minutes. He can get knocked down the first round and still make $100 million. You need to ask yourself why he turned that down. Because I know he got it that good to where he could turn down $100 million. No other boxer in boxing will be able to do that, homie. That's why Canelo get pressure. Ain't nobody turned down $100 million. Quit trying to quit trying to ming, uh, push everybody in the circle like they Canelo. Not everybody trying to pre push put everybody in the circle with Canelo. Oh, yeah, we talked about that earlier in the live. Um, you know, he a bridge of weight. Uh, he like a... Um, He's like one, he's like 220, 225. I mean, he close, he close to the weight big baby's in, but his reach and everything else. And plus, uh, this is the guy. He fought the guy that um I seen him fight the guy that Justin Huney just fought. I think his name is Kevin Lorena Jr. Jr. That guy, Kevin Lorena Jr., who I'm gonna drop Justin Huney. He fought this guy. He's good. He got a lot of power. He's a very muscular guy, short, around like six foot, six two, probably. Uh He's a very good uh he's decent. He has he has power and stuff like that, but he's going his skill level isn't on the same as Big Baby Miller. This looks like it's gonna be a fight that's gonna be it's gonna be a short night. I see about six, seven round stoppage. Yeah, Big Baby gonna stop him. Under seven. If they got seven, if it's if it's a like a uh seven over or under, I'll pick the under for seven. It could possibly make it to the eighth round, ninth round, but yeah, big baby too much, man. He's definitely too much. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do a uh, Neary uh, breakdown too, Glory, on In Away. I'm going to do that probably today. I was going to actually supposed to do that right now, but I'm going to do that too. Yeah, I got my video out about this. I ain't do a, a prediction, I don't think. I think I did. Maybe I did. I don't know. I mean, Big Baby doing this because he want to work on some things. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's still 24, so he got to work on a couple of things. That Charles Martin fight, he was getting caught a lot. So they put him in there with a puncher. Yeah, he that Charles Martin fight. Uh, you know, Charles Martin, his timing was off. He's a little older, so they kind of worried about that. Yeah, man. But what I was saying about this, though, this is it's crazy how that's why I said we don't really, I don't really value when people talk to me about boosts or anything like that. I don't really like to hear about none of these boxes for real because we don't value the, the best in America. Why would I value any America bo American boxer when America doesn't value the, the best? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't care about none of that, bro. If a man got to be 36 years old for you to figure out how good he is, you in the wrong sport, man. 
to be engaging with. You can enjoy from the sidelines, but to be engaging like an expert, no, it's the it's the end of the road right here. This ain't it. This ain't it. And I seen how dudes did against Ur with Earl Spence last week. American fans are cowards. I've been saying it. Earl Spence come out last week. Everybody like, yeah, man. Uh. Bro, I got I got more I got more uh I got more Mexican fighters on this channel than you got in your house or in your family. Remember that. They <laughs> do be like is it an LBBC channel? Man, get out of here, bro. The fact that you even asked that, I already know what type of dude you is. Somebody block that clown, man. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I like I like to watch boots. Yeah, Haney and uh Garcia in two weeks. Yeah, I'm 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 ready to see that man. I think Garcia gonna uh let his hands go a little bit more. He gonna feel a lot more solid as far as the weight cut cut and everything. Now everything else he doing, I think it's uh it's a little bit too much. I don't know, man. Ryan Garcia he still got hands and skills, but Devin Haney a little serious about this. Somebody trying to embarrass Devin Haney. I don't know about if everybody know Devin Haney's story growing up, but Devin Haney used to be a bully growing up. You know what I'm saying? He had a problem with fighting this stuff. I know people think he's he's getting bullied and everything else. He was the bully growing up. You know what I'm saying? Until until everybody else start running towards Lomachenko, they act like Lomachenko is not a big fighter. He's done. If Lomachenko is done, why don't you want to be the first one to stop Lomachenko? Just make it happen. That's why I said when people want to really talk about boxing, we could really talk about boxing. People talking about, oh, this guy's the boogeyman. Let him fight Loma Chico. Period. I'll find you somebody to fight. But that's why I follow guys like Isai Cruz, Devin Haney, Frank Martin. I ain't gotta, I ain't never sit up, sat on this channel and beg Isai Cruz, Frank Martin. Devin Haney to jump in the ring with nobody. By the time I even think about who they gonna fight, they in the ring already, or they got something set up. Or if you're a real boxer and you're really about that life, like Eastside Cruz is, the day after Shakur Stevenson fight, you'll say, "Hey man, I want to fight Shakur Stevenson. I'll fight him right now. I'll do more than what De La Santo did. I reported all that to everybody. They ain't even, people didn't even care about it. I was like, man, Eastside Cruz want that smoke right now." I said, I don't think he's ducking nobody. I think that was just a business move they did, and which it was. Now he a champion at 140, and he could still have Shakir Stevens to fight down the line. Uh, at 140, I don't know. That's between Matias and uh, Devin Haney. But I think Eastside Cruz style... The way his style match up with Matias, though, it might be. It might, I don't know. Cause because last last couple of weeks I've been thinking about Matias giving Cruz problems, but Cruz is a shorter guy. You know what I'm saying? I haven't seen Matias fight a shorter guy like that. So that mattered to me. That's gonna be a little that's gonna be a bit of some problems, man. Trying to punch down on a shorter guy like that. And Matias is a tall 140. He's not a short guy. And they'll probably be one of the shortest fighters he fought. So, mm -hmm. I don't know how that Mexican style kind of lines up with that. He hasn't been fighting too much Mexican style lately, but I don't know. I'll probably have to get Cruz an edge as far as um at the advantage as far as his size and everything, because that's gonna be a little difficult trying to punch down on a guy like that. Man, bro, that's why we had the fights. That's why we had the fights. Man, if Haney lose, that'll be crazy. <laughs> that'll be crazy. That's why we watching the fight, man. Ryan does have power. I'm not a super Ryan fan. Uh, He does have power. We saw how he dropped Oscar Duarte that last fight. Uh, Ryan has power, man, so he definitely could do something. He has beat – hey, he's beaten Devin Haney before, so it's going to be a good fight. I didn't even see that, man. 
I'm sk skipping everybody coming. My bad. I ain't even see that. I gotta see what you're talking about. What you talking about? Hey, I had missed your video uh earlier. Um, I couldn't even click on it, man. Uh, slick nigga, I'm gonna go back and watch it, bro. Yeah, he ain't ready for uh, Matisse. I said that in February. January, February, I said it. Um, They're going to try to rush him into the situation. He ain't ready, though. I mean, he got to get – he better get ready. Man, bro, he been fighting guys all his life, man. It's time. You, you got to get some self-belief in you. Them dudes around you, they ain't going to be around when you're an old man. It's time for Hitchens to get some self-belief. It's 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 time for him. The talking and all that press conference is cool, but you gotta have that demeanor in the ring. You gotta really shine through in the ring. People gonna really know, know if you're really about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was uh months ago. It was months ago. He was talking. He was talking about weight, but honestly, he's not ready. He's not ready. He's not ready. Lamos, his style is like Matias, so he's not ready. No, he's not ready. You think so? I think that's the key to being uh Benavidez too. I think them tie ups and all that stuff kind of helped uh Caleb Plant. Cause when I see Andre get in the ring and he went tying up with Benavidez, I was like, oh my god, it's gonna be a short night, man. Dudes ain't tying up, but you know they call that holding now, though, bro. <laughs> But depending on who you fighting, bro, they'll call that holding. Tyson Fury, he does that as a he does that as a strategy. He does that more than punching. It depends on who's fighting, bro. They let some people clinch and hold and tie up. Some people they don't let do that. They don't let some people tie up, man. That's some people people don't. That's something uh fans don't want to talk about. I don't think they'll go that deep into it, but yeah, they don't let a lot of people tie up. I seen guys tie up more recently since that Roley fight, Cruz fight, and they ain't get no uh point taken away. They ain't get no warnings or nothing. Oh yeah, he's training with man. You talking about during the fight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad. I, I know what you're talking about now. Yeah, in the fight. Yeah, man. The dudes got they got to start believing. Hey, but at the same time, no, he was in there with a guy. He was in there with a. He was in there with somebody. I got to give Hitchens the credit on that now. He did get in the ring with a guy. I don't know. People act like he fought a bomb, though. So if I say that, people be like, oh, my God, you just. So did he fight a bomb or not? From what I'm hearing, from the information I'm hearing, everybody think that Lamos was a bomb. Some people. They giving him credit, but then they talking about how bad Hitchens look, but then I don't know. So did was Lamos good? I mean, he was. <laughs> that's what I, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, it is. Cause he got he kind of I put Hitches in the same category as um Shakur Stevenson as far as I don't know they they on that same kind of trajectory. Not as far as skill, but as far as how they kind of marketing themselves. The fans kind of finding out about him and Shakur Stevenson after Tank Davis and. Devin Haney and you know, so they kind of behind on that situation. They kind of working through. They fought. They kind of basically in the same place Devin Haney was when he fought Lenares and all that. But it's only on them to kind of win these next two fights. You can change how people look at you. Shakir Stevenson go out there and dominate. They gonna it's gonna change it. That's the good thing about boxing. That's why guys got to be active. You be out the ring a long time, people gonna start to think about you a certain way. Oh, no, 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 no. Inside, inside is good. No, but I'm talking about the tie-ups, though. I'm talking about, like, um, you know how, like, Caleb Plant was actually holding him through the fight and kind of turning him a certain way. Caleb Plant had some success in there, man. Caleb Plant should have got stopped, bro. When Caleb Plant was holding that fight, I, I know what you're talking about. That uh, He got some of the best inside work. I ain't talking about the inside work. Oh, no, slick nick. No, not the inside work. I'm talking about, like, the clinching. If you can clinch on him, you can kind of – but to just sit there and trade hands with Benavidez, you're going to sleep. Sit there and try to trade with Benavidez without throwing no hands. 
at Benavidez, at Bitterbeev or all these guys do that, they going to sleep, man. His hands ain't that fast. Benavidez got some fast hands. He got some fast hands. Yeah, I doubt they put him in there the same ring. Hey, Eddie Hearn, I said that Eddie Hearn be putting some, hey, he be having some close fights on his uh card, man. It be some close fights on there, bro. It be some close fights on there. I think Eddie Hearn does that on purpose. Cause it be some close fights on there. Del Santos gotta get past Ryo. You think he's gonna beat Ryo? You think Del Santos is going to beat Ryo? I don't know, man. If Ryo can kind of... If he get two revenge fights, man, it'd be a wrap, man. If Ryo can pull this off, that'll be... That's definitely combat fight of the year. Yeah, I want to see some guys fight Lamos, man. Oh, yeah, that's why I stayed away from that. That's why I stayed away from that. Yeah, uh, Chris Ar Chris Algeria was talking about that recently. Like, man, we can't bet on these fights. And these judges be doing decisions like this. It's kind of hard to, man. You could have had that fight a draw at least. So it's kind of hard what they do. Yeah, I saw that. That's why I learned it from Slick Nick. That's where I learned it from. I didn't know that you can actually do that. Andre Ward used to, guys used to tie out with him. Andre Ward would be like, boom. Mm. Yeah, uh, Benavidez does do that a lot, man. I've seen guys actually grab Benavidez's arm, man. He'll be sitting there punching him with the other arm. They'll be holding his arm. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. He'd be annihilating guys on the inside. Yeah, I definitely see Loma uh, being at 135 championship fight. If, if don't nobody want to take the belt, I'm telling you. If don't nobody else, if, them, if, if American fighters don't challenge Loma Chico at 135, I don't want, I'm not finna mention those guys' names. Y'all noticed that too, right? I've been mentioning guys' names. They say, well, Devin Haney, he lost to Loma Chico. Go in the ring and take the belt from Loma Chico. I don't know no guy right now who boxes who don't want a former number one pound for pound fighter in the ring on their resume. And they just said recently that Loma was uh number one at 135 over Tank and Shakur Stevenson. They gotta fight that guy. He's 35. Well, I think he's 36. They're gonna try to get him when he's 37, 38. They're trying to age out Loma, I guess. It seemed like Terrence Crawford and Loma, they the oldest guys. They compete more than these younger guys. It's sad, man. You got dudes 36 years old hunting down young guys. Talking about they ducking. Okay, man. Now I got to now I got to lump Lomachenko in the same category with Crawford because he fighting everybody too. Yeah, man. Why would you not fight Loma, man? Come on. That's why I said. How Loma done? How was Loma done? He just went 12 rounds with Devin Haney, who everybody said ain't got no uh who pillow fist. They said they said Devin Haney pillow fist. How he done with Loma? And Loma finna fight for a belt in uh in four weeks. Do you know that Loma finna fight for a belt in four weeks? And that tank gonna be the mandatory in about six months? Loma Chico finna fight for a belt in a couple of weeks, bro. He ain't going nowhere. Going 12. Loma Chico ain't never been stopped. Loma Chico ain't never been stopped. Loma Chico ain't never been stopped before. Ever. Do we understand that? Loma Chico ain't never been stopped before. He ain't never been stopped before. And I'm not a Loma Chico fan like that. 
Everybody know this. Loma Chico ain't never been stopped. When one of these Americans gonna step up to the plate and actually not Loma Chico off? The only reason they can go around and actually talk about Loma Chico, then everybody told them, yeah, man, you know, Devin and Loma, bro, go fight Loma. They still bragging about Loma. I'm not the one promoting Loma. I didn't say Loma was number one pound for pound all these years. Y'all did. I never put Loma on number one pound for pound. I never had Loma number one. Just like I never put tank, just like I never put tank on number one for uh I never put tank number one. I think Loma Chico last knockout. What was that? What was the last knockout? That's a good question. Hey, I'm glad Glory brought that up too. I'm going through all y'all. Hey, all y'all got good comments right now. I'm glad y'all said something. So Glory got a good a great point right now. Hey, slick net right. Loma Chico is not done. <laughs> Not done. And I don't like Loma like that. But he got skills. Loma's a he's a problem. Uh they also met. That's what I'm saying. Let me tell you something, Slick Nick. Let me let me expose all this real quick. And I'm gonna tell you how the boxing fans go, gonna expose themselves and they're gonna mess everything up. So they okay. Oh yeah, I know that. I know that. Hey, thanks the guy. Shout out to thanks the guy too, man. Shout out thanks the guy, man. Hey, thanks the guy. I got a video on my channel. It's called Lomachenko Exposed. Type in can't face it boxing. Lomachenko Exposed. Bro, I, I broke Lomachenko down to a decimal, bro. To a decimal. A decimal. I'm telling you, this is what I know. Yeah, but yeah, Loma Chico shouldn't be get a title shot off the loss. But at the same time, I said that already. Slick Nick, we've been saying that. Let me see. I think Loma Chico, like, what, what Loma Chico record? I think he got a couple of losses. Got like three losses, I think. Man, I, I looked at it a couple of months ago. Y'all know I broke all that down. I just ain't keeping up. I think Loma Chico got three losses. Yeah, he's 17 and 3, man. He got 20, he got 20 fights. You know what I'm saying? I've been saying this for years, man. We sat a guy on the uh pound found list with like 15 fights, which is pathetic. Yeah, Loma still got a couple of years on him. Laura's still doing yeah, they take care of their body. They don't, they don't really, them dudes be in the gym, man. Them dudes be in the gym, man, all the time. That's that why Tank right now look like, you see how skinny Tank is right now? Tank is in shape. The fight is four, four months away. I mean, two, two months away. Tank ain't never looked like this, man. Not two months away from a fight. She ready to go. But he need to be ready to go against somebody like Loma, though, if you want a legacy. Having Roley on your resume. Let me tell y'all something. Tank Davis having Roley on his resume. Y'all, y'all don't really know. I've been giving him a pass on that. You can't tell me that everybody ducking you and you got Roley jumping in the ring with you. So you telling me the toughest guys we got in America right now is Roley? He the only one that was jumping in the ring with uh with uh Tank Davis? That's what everybody trying to tell me. Roley the best thing we got right now. He the only one that get wanted to get in the ring with Tank. Just Roley and Frank Mark. Oh, all right. Okay. Yeah, Loma ain't done, man. Yeah, it is. Zapata is, man. Zapata, Zapata, Zapata is. <laughs> he is the mandatory. Zapata, number one, he the number one contender in two two different weight classes. He didn't he could fight. Man, Zapata done turned down a couple of fights already, man. He turned down uh Tank Davis. He, he tried to negotiate with Tank Davis last September. I think that ended around December where he said no. Uh, I know Oscar was doing that. And then I think Oscar ended the Zapata talk because of the Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney thing. That's just me, allegedly. You know what I'm saying? I begin allegedly. The Zapata, the Zapata and Tank Davis fight would have probably happened if Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney didn't happen or didn't become something real. Yeah, he's 17 and 3. 
Yeah, and knockouts too important these days. Now, I, I, knockouts ain't important because when Deontay Wilder was doing it, nobody cared. So I nah, no, it it depends on who it is. It depends on who it is. Cause I heard I heard these guys talk about somebody going twelve rounds like that. Jump, like it's just amazing. Like they never seen somebody go twelve rounds before. So it depends on who it is. Man, I don't know, man. I know Tank. I know Tank fighting a sparring partner right now. I don't know what Tank would do with Lomachenko. I know Tank fighting a sparring partner right now, and I know everything about Tank. I probably don't know every tattoo he got, but I know everything he did in the boxing ring. Tank finna fight a sparring partner right now. However you... I don't know how excited anybody can get about fighting a sparring partner, but that's how excited I am right now. I got my limitations. But yeah, Frank Martin, definitely somebody I like, though. I think uh I think Devin Haney gonna try to put pressure on him. I think Ryan Garcia gonna try to uh he gonna try to go through the body a lot on Devin Haney. He he's not gonna want Devin Haney to be in his airspace, so he's gonna try to go to the body a lot of time. He's not gonna headhunt. They fought before, so Ryan Garcia, he's gonna have he's gonna look a lot better than what we thought. Usually, man, when you're in the ring with a guy you fought before, it's not like you know everything and everything, but you're gonna feel comfortable. You're gonna know what time it is. They fought too many times not to. So that's why Ryan Garcia is a little more loose going into this fight. He's done this plenty of times. As far as with Devin Haney, that's why it's not really like really bothering him as far as a loss or a win. He don't really look at it like that. I feel like Devin Haney will give him trouble though. Probably late stoppage. Devin Haney mad about that sparring tape. <laughs> Ryan Garcia, he's gonna be giggling and everything the way in, but Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney mad about that sparring tape thing. Now he got to hear comments about the sparring match and stuff. So, yeah, he's mad about that. And then Devin Haney don't never disrespect Floyd and say nothing about Floyd. Y'all don't know this. Devin Haney don't never say nothing about Floyd. People don't even know this. Devin Haney don't never disrespect Floyd. When he said something about Floyd, calling Floyd out recently, <laughs> yeah, he's he's mad about that. That ain't no that ain't no little situation. Devin Haney, he's been around Floyd for he was around Floyd Mayweather before Tank was. <laughs> Floyd Mayweather, Devin Haney was around Tank Davis before. I mean, uh, around Floyd before Tank was. So I already know what time it is. That sale without not high knockout percentage. Um, I mean Floyd did, but these days. Canelo don't got a high knockout percentage. That's definitely, that's definitely something if everybody want to talk about that. That's definitely something that that's fairy tale. Canelo don't got a high knockout percentage. Canelo definitely somebody. So I don't feel like I feel like knockouts is overrated. I feel like fans bring it up for no reason because Canelo don't get knockouts. I can I can basically break that down. Him knocking out, I knew he wasn't going to knock out Charlo. Let's just say that. And I was right about that. Yeah, he still got four or five years. Yeah, he's been out a year, man. If he out a year at this age, I'm like, yeah. That's why I'm kind of on tank about that age thing, man. I'm kind of like, I'm going to slow y'all comment too. My bad. Y'all said some good stuff. Tank gets. Oh, you think so? Yeah, I understand that. I understand that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he right. So you tanks guy right. Tanks guy, you right. 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 You definitely right. But I ain't gonna lie though. Uh, if he was to do it, if Tank was to stop Loma Chico right now, could nobody say anything? That's why I'm trying to give him. I'm trying to give Tanker out because it's getting crowded down there, man. I don't know who said it earlier. I don't know if it was the Grinch or somebody, but Andy Cruz is a problem, man. <laughs> Shout out to whoever did say that. Andy Cruz is a beast. These guys at 135 ain't finna play with Tank. Yeah, it's gonna change boxing. 
It's going bro, it's already been two weekends and people are acting a fool. That's why I said I told people this month right here is gonna be crazy. I I'm telling people, man, when May comes around, it's gonna get crazy, man. You got Tyson Fury and all these guys coming up. It's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be a lot of close fights. That's why I said, don't say who's a boogeyman because I'm gonna make a lot of material off guys saying who's a boogeyman when the guy gets exposed. Cause I, I'm I'm gonna be real with y'all. I'm a I'm a uh I'm a Eastside Cruz fan. I'm basically what you'll call a diehard because I've been following him for so long. But he looked bad in his last fight. Why y'all think everybody at clowning like this right now? Everybody ain't no real Eastside Cruz fan. I just heard dudes two months ago talking about some they don't want to see Eastside Cruz fight tank no more. So how can he be considered a good fighter now after beating Roley? But last week, y'all said he was terrible. So I know how these fans be, man. They don't care about game one. They just care about game seven. Yeah, that would that'll be crazy. I think he will try to go for it. Haney got a lot more power, so I don't know. You know, for him to drop Regis Progray like that, it's kind of hard to drop a guy like Regis Progray. Regis Progray has been in the ring with a lot of guys for him. So for Haney to kind of box Regis Progray like that, just I know, I know they kind of felt good to Haney because. You know, Regis Progre is a big name. You know, it might not be a big name to everybody else, but Regis Progre, he's part of that group that came up with like guys like Earl Spence and stuff. So he's a big name. I seen when Josh Taylor was beating guys like uh, Regis Progre, he was going on the pound for pound list. So Regis Progre, now he ain't nobody when Devin Haney fight him, but you know, when Devin fight him, he don't end up on pound for pound. But Josh Taylor, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, man, y'all don't get out of here with all that. that was, that's when I knew the fanboyism was getting out of hand. Let's put Josh Taylor on pound for pound for beating Regis Program. Man, dudes, better not come to me about no resume talk. Yeah, Derrick Jane do a good job on feet. Uh, I think a lot of times with Charlo, he got a little bit better with that too. Yeah, he do, a, he do a good job with that. Frank Martin got uh, – he's been working on that with Frank Martin too. I want to see what he does with Frank Martin in this fight, man. I hope Derrick James actually brings something to the table with Frank Martin in this fight. Because I, I keep forgetting that he's working with him, but I hope he brings something to the table. He got a lot of stuff going on around him right now. Frank Martin need this fight, man. He's putting a lot out there right now. He need to at least try to go 12 rounds. Yeah, if it does, any of these fights, they have a knockout. Any of these top fights have a knockout, somebody can go to another level. Any of these fights have a, a knockout. If that Fury and Usyk fight have a knockout. Yeah, I see what Glory talking about. I agree with what Glory talking about. Yeah, I want to see Devin get some knockout too, man. <laughs> hey, thanks to guy. What you think? You think he's, uh? I feel like he kind of. To be honest with you, I feel like Devin Haney been draining a little bit too much weight. If you look at how big he is now, I feel like he been cutting a lot. He been cutting a lot of weight. A lot of these guys body changing. I could say that about Tank, but when he gets in shape, he's so his skinny, his skinny version of himself looks so natural. It's like, okay, he's not draining himself. Y'all notice when, when Tank Davis gets real skinny, nobody says he looks weight drained. Everybody notice that? I'm dropping a hint for y'all real quick. That's a big fact, too. Notice how when Tank David dropped all that weight, nobody said he weight drained. They know Devin Haney a bigger guy as far as, not saying that he's uh, a weight bully. I'm talking about they know he's a bigger guy as far as going up and growing. Oh, yeah, he definitely is. He definitely is. He definitely is. It's a lot of people that can't profit off Tank, though. Floyd Floyd ain't the first person that had Tank. <laughs> Floyd acting like he's the first person that had Tank. It's a lot of people that's around there like, man, I don't know how Tank and all that. I can't believe Floyd making money off Tank. Floyd ain't knew Tank that long. He knew Devin Haney forever. So Floyd should be able to understand more than anybody. The only fight that he made from the ground up, basically, not the ground up, but Early on was like Devin Haney, but he got tanked for somebody else.
Yeah, me too. I seen that. I seen that. I think they're gonna try to work out of that, but I don't know if he's ready right now. I see a lot of in that last fight, I seen a couple of things. I'm like, I don't know if he's ready for a tank right now. And that's not saying that Andy Cruz ain't that guy. I, I, I'm very high on him. I seen a couple of things where I'm like, because he's still coming to the pro game. Yeah, he still got def. I agree with uh, Slick Nick. Slick Nick saying some facts right now. Yeah, I mean, I've I've been a, I've been a I've been somewhat of a bandwagon before. I mean, everybody done been a bandwagon. We bandwagon sometimes. But sometimes they get out of hand these days. It just got to be addressed. Because I'm going to tell y'all now, if y'all see the WWE, I'm going to give y'all a perfect example. Please listen to this example. I got the perfect example. Y'all know how over the last 20 years, everybody been saying, yeah, WWE, we st they still got stars in wrestling. You know, some people still watch wrestling. They still got stars. They got that CM Punk guy in John Cena. Man, The Rock came back recently. And he showed everybody what a real star looks like in wrestling or any other event or organization you're in. It's the difference between The Rock and a John Cena or a CM Punk or all these other guys. So everybody trying to make it seem like now everybody in boxing is The Rock. That's why it's getting out of hand. I'm trying. I'm, I'm the guy that's kind of like, nah, homie. Oh, we ain't gonna do that. Nah, prove me wrong on that. And lately, I ain't been wrong. I ain't been wrong. But y'all don't even know how big a, a Rich and Hitches fans I, I am. You know why? Because I'm not unbiased. I mean, I'm not biased. I'm not finna get on here and be like, hey, man, Hitches finna drop this dude this weekend. No, sir. I heard a lot of that going on. That's why people really mad. They thought Lamos was going to get dropped, and they really messed up their pick. These dudes be mad they messed up their pick. That's what really be going on. Uh, I think he fought uh Thomas De uh De Delore May, I think. Uh, I forgot another guy he fought. I think he fought Thomas Delore May. He's a good fighter. Um, uh, Giovanni Cabrera, he's a very good fighter. Matter of fact, Giovanni Cabrera, uh, William Zapata trying to fight Giovanni Cabrera next. He trying to fight Eastside Cruz. The guy Eastside Cruz fought last year on, I think, the Earl Spence, Terrence Crawford card. That's who um, William Zapata trying to fight now. How you going to fight him instead of Lomachenko? And Lomachenko going to fight in a month. Just wait on that. Yeah, I think he would get uh, Garcia, but uh, I think he, I think he, I think it'll be a close fight, though. Ryan Garcia got faster hands, and he'll let his hands go. His feet's not amazing like that. I think that'll be a problem if it's going to be like a moving around fight. Yeah, it'd be, yeah, it'd be sometimes when guys hurt. It, it don't really hurt to me, man. When I started watching Mike Tyson, he was losing all his fights. So I was like, hey, man, this is how the game go. You know, I had to start early. <laughs> I caught Mike Tyson when he was old, though. He was watching all them fights he was having. I was like, man. After seeing him lose it, basically, it was his prime, but it was technically his prime. Yeah, Frank Mar is an animal, man. He's an animal. He's going to put a lot of – he's going to make a – Frank Mar will be a problem for a lot of people. Whether they fight, whether uh, I'm gonna tell you what's gonna have what's gonna help Frank Martin. The fact that he jumped in the ring with Tank Davis. Now people are gonna say, hey man, why don't y'all why don't you fight uh Frank Martin? Especially if he go 12 rounds. So Frank Martin, he can still lose the tank and have a career just like Eastside Cruz. So he in a win-win situation. He just need to last. He gotta last 12 rounds, man. He got to. It'll be best for him for his career and everything. It's going to be a good fight. Me too. I want to see some. I think he's going to be better in his next fight. Usually when a guy fights at 140 twice, that was his first fight at 140. He know how much weight he got to cut down. Now, I think he's going to be better this, this time around. I'm telling you, that, that, that sparring match, it's going to have Devin Haney on. He's going to be ready to go. That sparring match going to do him in, man.
Yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't know how they couldn't. Hey, thanks the guy. I don't know why they couldn't like that. I like how um uh the best person I actually seen do that was uh Danny Jacobs. When Danny Jacobs was gonna fight Triple G, he got Chris Algieri as a uh nutritionist. And uh Chris Algieri used to have Danny Danny Jacobs said before I got Chris Algieri, I used to have to drain myself. But he said now I can eat before my weigh ins. So even before a weigh-in is insane. You know what I'm saying? That's what people don't realize. Even before a weigh-in is insane. So for him to be able to do that, people need to work with uh, Chris Algieri. I think Spence did a couple times. I'm not sure. I think he did. I'm not sure. I know some, some other guys did, though. Chris Algieri, a beast, though, as far as um getting guys ready for fights. He an excellent uh, nutritionist. I think Devin Haney, I don't know who worked with him. I'm going to have to look it up. I don't want to say no wrong information. Oh, no, he didn't work on his power. He just he just got stronger, man. He was weight drained. He's been at 135 for 10 years, man. We know he ain't 135. He's been at 135 for 10 years. That's a long time. Imagine you be at your high school weight. You know, nobody at that high school weight right now. That's insane. Be five years out, you know, dudes drinking liquor and stuff now, and you still at your high school weight. So, yeah, that was going to, he a lot more powerful. He going to be more powerful as he move up. And Devin Haney's, a, his, his body's still growing. I wouldn't say he's a late bloomer, but he's still growing. His muscles still coming in. Shakur Stevenson as well. I feel like Tank, to be honest with y'all, I feel like Tank had his, he had his strength way early on, like, I know he always had power, but as far as strength, I feel like his strength isn't changed from 21 to 30 from what I've seen. I feel like he always had that power. These guys are different. They're late bloomers. Yeah, 165 for 140 is crazy. But, I, hey, I seen somebody doing worse than that. Man, Zerto, Zerto said this. Zerto Ramiro, Ramirez said he was cutting 225 to 175. 225 to 175. That's 50 pounds of fight. I know somebody last fight said Zerto looks huge. This dude then went up two weight classes and they still talking about he look huge. Man, that's crazy. Two weight classes you done went up, you still look big. Shout out to Zerto though. I, I like Zerto. Shoot. Whatever you can do, man. I believe in cutting weight. Everybody gonna cut, man. If you if you don't cut. The weight, somebody else going to cut it. You're going to be in there fighting a dude 225 and you weigh 168 or 175, you're going to get destroyed. Ain't no man walking around 160 if you're going to fight no guy 225 and have a chance. Unless you're just a superior human being. What? That's crazy. I'm glad you said that. I was going to ask about that. Dang. That's insane that you said that. What about Canelo? Canelo closer. Hey, y'all think it's going to fit Canelo fight? If Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia is a real good fight, right? If it's just entertaining. Are we going to be hyped up for that canelo Munguia fight two weeks later? It's going to be a lot of fights happening around that time, too. It's going to be... That's why Canelo, he kind of messed up waiting too late to try, try to announce these fights, man. You can't really get hyped up at the last minute like that. Yeah, me too. I feel like it. Yeah, that, that's why I said, hey, bro, if you look at my predictions, bro, let me tell you something. This will let anybody know if I know boxing on here. Go to my De La Santos versus Shakur Stevenson prediction. My prediction and the post fight sound just the same, but go to the prediction. And then go to this Lamos versus Richard Hitcher prediction. That let me know right then. Oh, yeah, you know what you're talking about. Yeah, I can see him fighting rolling.
Hey, you think he's gonna do MMA? I know Regis Progress said he's gonna do MMA, but now he said he's gonna fight a couple more fights. I think if Ryan had a fight close, man, he'll have a chance. He could lose, but it gotta be close. I don't want to put him in that position either. To be honest with you, I'm gonna be real with y'all. I don't even care if Ryan lose or win. I was, the win for me is he actually made the fight. I'm gonna be honest with you. Since Ryan Garcia made the fight, I ain't really care. Now, if he win, y'all know I'm gonna care. I'm like, whoa. But as far as I'm glad he made the fight, to be honest with you. Because if we wouldn't have had this fight, it would have been boring. It would have just been a Tim Zoo fight, and then we had to wait on Canelo. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of just happy Ryan made it past the finish line, man. Kind of been kind of hard for him lately. He been bagging out, and y'all heard how many times he didn't pull out the fight the last couple of weeks. Oh my God! You know what I'm saying? I just I just want him to get in the ring at this point. I just want him to make it in the ring. Yeah, me too. I think I think it could be like the Cambosis fight, but Ryan, you know, his hands are a little faster. His fans his hands are a little faster. He got good reach. Um I don't know, man. I you know, Tank. <laughs> Tank got different kind of power. I don't see I don't see Ryan, I mean, uh Devin going to the body like that, but I can definitely see him um doing some punches that can break Ryan down. Ryan fought kind of different that last fight. He was kind of walking forward a little bit. He was going, he was kind of taking the fight to Duarte that last fight. If y'all seen it. If we go back to Ryan Garcia last fight, he was he was trying to hang in the pocket a little bit. So I don't know what kind of fight he'll actually bring this time. He might surprise us, man. I'm not gonna lie. I'm thinking of something. It may be different. Yeah, they should, man. I see um who do a good job with that? Anyway, do a good job with that. I think Frank Martin does an excellent job with his weight. Um, it's a couple of guys. I think Eastside Cruz too, because really, it's not depending on how much they uh drain. I mean, uh, how much they cut, it don't really matter. But when they don't perform well after they cut, it's a problem. Like Eastside Cruz, he performed well, whether he had thirty five or forty. But if you like hitches, you look a little sluggish. You got to cut a little bit better. He don't have enough. He don't have a lot of fat coming off either. So he got to kind of work on staying in shape and not really cutting corners. Yeah, the Mexicans they don't like that uh, Canelo versus Munguia. I told y'all last month. I'm gonna tell y'all. Shout out to everybody on the channel too, man. Shout out to everybody. Appreciate the support. I told everybody last month. Eastside Cruz finna replace uh, Canelo. Oh, my God, bro. Everything. I was the only person that said that. Who remember me saying that last month when I said the Mexicans finna replace uh, Canelo or Eastside Cruz? I might, it might sound crazy, but I got proof that everybody in Mexico, all the big name people is saying that right now. They saying that right now. Eastside Cruz, the best. I just, I just uh, reported it. Eastside Cruz, the best Mexican fighter we got in the world right now. Everybody's saying that. Madonna just said, can't nobody beat him. Robert Garcia. They said they got the best fighter in Mexico right now. It's, uh, it's, um, it's Eastside Cruz. Bro, them Mexicans don't care about none of that, dog. They don't care about none of that. They don't care about what you did, what your name is, how many rounds you have with uh, Floyd Mayweather. They don't care. The Mexican fan, I reported it. They said they, we want Benavidez or Crawford. They said we want Crawford first. Then Benavidez. Shout out to King Lanky, man. My dog. I ain't seen my dog in a minute, man. Oh, no, no, no. That's Roly. No, nah, man. Roly, Roly ain't that good. Roly ain't that good. Roly ain't that good. That's why, that why his coach is, That's why his coach left him. Shout out to King Lanky, too, man. That's one of my day ones, man. What's up, Lanky? Yeah, uh, that's why his coach left, man. His coach was like, Roly ain't trying to sit on these punches. Roly had other people coming in helping. That's what. That's one thing the coach. The coach was saying 
we need to get you to figure out how to do certain things real quick. Roley don't want to get them basics done. He'll get enough information from you, then he'll use that. But he's not going to use – Roley's training with the same kind of people everybody else. He got the same access to Floyd and all these other guys. Floyd just put out a whole – I told everybody. Floyd just put out a whole little – Letter talking about Roley, you know, we've we've been with you all these years, 14 years you've been training, and yeah, man, wasn't nobody surprised really, but Roley wasn't Roley still he's still a young a young guy, you know. He's an older guy, so he kind of he gotta move a little bit more now, but yeah, he flawed, man. It was a bad style matchup for him, too. You gotta realize on um, that old man fight like Isai Cruz. Barroso, Barroso fight like Isai Cruz. So it was a bad style matchup from the jump. You know, I like Roley. So it was kind of, I was like, ah, I just was happy Roley took the fight. Roley could have been like, man, I just hold on to your belts. I ain't got to fight no Isai Cruz. That's why I give him credit for that. He didn't run. He didn't quit. And um, he took the fight. I think it was the uh, coach. I think it was Coach Bullet. Coach Bullet been training the whole time. Now, this time, um, it was like more of the guys out of Mayweather Gym, a couple of guys, but um, I don't know their names specifically, but when he fought Tank, that was um, technically he's technically he's not, but he has worked with them a lot. Technically, he's not, but he has worked with them a lot. Is that his next fight supposed to be Eastside Cruz, man? Barroso ain't finna fight nobody. If it's not for the belt, the next fight, Barroso ain't finna fight nobody. Barroso don't want no cash. He don't want no money. Barroso trying to fight. Um, he trying to fight him next. He's kind of in that position, man. Barroso's an older guy. See, Barroso in the position, man. He don't care about the money stuff, like. He trying to get a chance at the belt. He know this is a this is the end of the road for him. And I told everybody that last year. I said, don't be surprised you still hear about this man next year. This man's still around. He didn't leave Bullet. Actually, Bullet left him. Uh, Bullet said that uh, Roley had trainers that he was training with. A lot of people said Bullet is the reason why he looks bad. But as Floyd just told everybody, Roley's a raw guy. You know what I'm saying? He's not really a got to been boxing 20 years and like these other guys boxing their whole life he's still raw you know so he being on and off boxing not really just somebody who's been training the whole time so he got gifted power and he know how to talk you know what i'm saying he knows how to talk they like most people like roley because of his interviews like when he interviewed back in the day he used to be in the uh, mayweather gym they actually liked him more when he was uh interviewing with guys and they found out he was entertaining, had a lot of power. Man, I seen him. Oh my god. I seen him recently after that, man. I forgot what fight it was. I think it was overseas somewhere. It might have been in Mexico, Puerto Rico, or something. I seen him at something. Nah, that's not true. He was at some fight recently. He just did like the main event and that was it. It might have been co-main event. But yeah, he's been he's been sliding in and out of places recently. He's doing a bad job. I I'm not gonna lie, the referees the last couple of weeks did a bad job. I felt like Isai Cruz could have got a knockout in that Roller Romero fight the first round if the referee would have actually broke it up in time. He's sitting up there waiting and he's across the room, across the way. Yeah, he don't he don't do too much. He get in and out. Yeah, Harvey Dalt might be the only one, man. He be in and out of there. He don't really hang around, and he ain't trying to. He's not trying to deal with these guys on a on a level to where <laughs> he can't handle them in the fight. A lot of these referees, they don't know how to break up just exchanges or anything, a clinch or anything. They just they stuck. Oh yeah, yeah. He probably fought him already. He most likely fought him already in the ring. You know, him and Roley, uh, Carmel Moten, you know, he <laughs> he's in the gym like Roley. You know, Roley came up in the gym with Floyd. So he, he basically knows him probably better than most people. Most of the time he says that, that means he actually can do it.
Come here, Mona's a smart guy too, man. I mean, that kid's smart. He knows a lot. The way he broke down Tank was pretty smart. I think you said that earlier. Who said that, Glorious? Who said that? Uh, Slick Nick might have said that. I think Slick Nick said that. But the way he broke down uh, Tank Davis fighting his spurts, that kind of explains everything. So, Camille Mo knows what he's talking about. A lot of these boxers, they can't break down other boxers. That's why a lot of times they lose money. I try to explain that to people. Like, if boxers really knew boxing, they'll know robberies and Things like that. They don't know how to do this. They do prediction. They prediction videos sound worse than mine. I don't know if y'all heard these guys. I think the best person on the on YouTube that got predictions is probably uh Antonio Tarver. He do he do the best job. Oh yeah, it, it was just like my prediction video. Yeah, it went just like my prediction video did, Lanky. I said Lamos was gonna be better than uh what people expected. He was gonna be like Isaac Cruz. Um I said that um it was gonna be a fight that was gonna be close, that people wasn't gonna really understand the uh decision. And basically went like how I said, you know what I'm saying? That's why I ain't really mad about it. The fan to be honest with you, I think that's the fans' fault on that fight because yeah. going into the fight, you're supposed to know that it's gonna be close like that. I don't think people gave Lamos a uh, chance, though. I'm, I'm, I keep finding myself in position where I got to defend guys who lost because they ain't getting credit from the fans. Like when um, Eastside Cruz uh, lost to Tank Davis. He didn't really get credit like that until later on down the line when he started fighting guys like Cambo um, Gamboa. And he knocked him out, but he didn't really get credit like that. He's getting credit now for Roley. And I think boxing is kind of exposing itself for that because out of all the people that Eastside Cruz fought, I would think in my mind, going 12 rounds with Tank Davis in his prime at 21, 22 years old would mean more than actually going eight rounds and stopping Roley Romero, who everybody says can't box. But you know, Eastside Cruz got a. Let me tell you something. Let me explain something real quick about boxing. Let me see. Hold on. Pitbull Cruz gained. He gained a million followers this week, man. This dude then went 12 rounds with Tank Davis and everything. He gained one million followers this week. So it's kind of like I'm finding, my I'm finding myself in a position to where a lot of guys like Lamos and Isaac Cruz, they always gonna make somebody look good like that. Yeah, I understand Tank had one hand, but we have to understand too. Do you remember? Hey, good, go good. You remember the fight when Tank Davis had against uh? You remember the fight when Tank Davis had against um, Eastside Cruz? You remember what happened in the uh, weigh in, the press conference, the weigh in? You remember when Devin Haney had shoved? You remember when Devin Haney had shoved Lomachenko? When Devin Haney was like, "Get out of here!" and pushed that, and pushed Lomachenko, and they took money away from him. That's the same thing he did to Eastside Cruz. East, he didn't know Eastside Cruz he was a late replacement and everything. He didn't have no history of Eastside Cruz. He went out there and just pushed him. Boom. Man, Tank Davis knew Eastside Cruz was going to be something. When Tank Davis pushed Eastside Cruz, I said, yep, it's going to go 12 rounds. He had no reason pushing Eastside Cruz. He was, a late, he was a late replacement. He's 21, 22 years old. He don't speak English. He never touched him. You know, Tank knew what was up. Messed up hand or not? And then what Tank da what Tank Davis said after the fight, after Eastside Cruz fought? That's why everybody really looking weird right now. This what 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 Tank Davis said after he fought Eastside Cruz? 
I ain't know he put rolling. Guess what Tank David said as he fought Eastside Cruz? That's what he said. He said, a star is born. He said, when did they fight? That's why I can't really make too much big big of a deal about the Lamos thing. We didn't seen that happen before. So that happened a little over two years ago, 2021, December 2021. St. David said a star is born. Like I can't, I'm not bragging. I'm not, I'm not putting St. David's, I'm not, I'm not putting Eastside Cruz on a um, to be honest with you, I thought it was a little fanboy. Uh it was like a little fanboy kind of energy because you know, Tank go 12 rounds with him, he say a star is born. Like he a promoter or something. Now you promote Eastside Cruz. Because he went 12 rounds. That's what I'm saying. In my mind, bro, as a boxing fan, going 12 rounds with Tank Davis means a lot more than stopping rolling. So the one million people that gained it, the one million followers he gained, it, it ain't had nothing to do with boxing. I'm pretty sure one million followers didn't watch the fight this weekend. I didn't hear nothing about nobody saying they had one million uh people watching the zone this weekend. So most likely this don't got nothing to do with boxing. These dudes be walking around. They didn't. So everybody just acting like everybody just go 12 rounds with Tank now. I know you went 12 rounds with Tank, but uh, I need to see you go eight rounds with Roley. Like, what? How? Yeah, Lanky's seeking fast. Once a fighter loses, oh, everybody acting like they trash all of a sudden. That's the worst, bro. That'd be the worst. That's why Eastside Cruz like that now. He's like, they don't even know. I've been fighting guys since I was 20, 21 years old. Actually, he's been fighting guys since he's 17. I'm talking about some real guys. I put a video out recently. He fought uh Ray Martinez, a flyweight at 112. He fought him years ago, a champion. They fought on the same card. Yeah, you gotta be the he gotta be respected because you know what I'm saying a lot of people ain't really doing, they ain't really moving like that. He got all his people over there in the room with him. You know what I'm saying? He's showing up to every fight. He's putting on events. And then we got other guys in America like, yeah, this guy being duck. Man, Eastside Cruz passing these guys. I don't post these guys who, who put on fantasy fights. I don't do fantasy fights. I don't do this guy ducking and what if. That don't care. Boxing rec, box rec don't care about who ducked you. When I go to box rec, it ain't going to say, hey, so-and-so ducked this guy. So uh, because he signed to this promotional company, then when this happening, they ain't going to say none of that. They're going to say loss. It's going to have an L up there. That's the only thing they care about. And these fans, they don't care about nothing. You know what I'm saying? Eastside Cruz, the man ain't hit the ground, bro. That what I'm, that, that's the thing I'm tripping about. Like, Roley ain't hit the ground at all. So it basically went the same way as the Tank Davis fight itself. It got to stop it. But ain't nobody hit the ground, though. And I thought last time I checked, putting hands and feet on Tank Davis mean a lot more than Roley Romero, so... Yeah, that's kind of disappointing to me, to be honest with you. He going to 135. He dropping the bill. He going to 135. Hector Garcia going to 135, breaking news. I was supposed to put I was supposed to post that up like weeks ago, but I forget so much news all the time, bro. He going to 135. That's a guy I didn't want to see Tank Davis fight. That's why I don't have that's why I'm not too high on Tank because Hector Garcia was never supposed to be on his resume. You don't go from Eastside Cruz to Hector Garcia. Somebody explain that to me, please, right now, because that's like three years, two years old news to me. That's actually last year news. But last year, I was sitting up here saying, why would Tank Davis go from Eastside Cruz to Hector Garcia? That's backwards. Oh, Eastside Cruz, a boogeyman. He a boogeyman. Okay, so why is Tank fighting? Why are he going from a boogeyman to a guy who just got dropped by um uh, Lamont Roach? He just got dropped by Lamont Roach. Got his belt took. In the same year, he fought Tank. Ain't we, haven't we noticed that all these guys that Tank be fighting be getting beat up? They be getting beat up. All these guys Tank been fighting, they be getting beat up. They be getting beat up. They can't make it two fights after they fight Tank. 
I don't know if Tank doing these guys like Canelo, where these guys got to retire after they fight, or they just done. They're not that. They're not that guy. Or did he just catch him at the right time? Is he catching everybody at the right time? Why is everybody that Tank fighting losing? Right as they, right as he fight them, everybody's losing. Roley losing. Supposed to have two losses. Roley supposed to have two losses. Come on now. That's the kind of thing that kind of catches me off guard. It's like, hey, the standards is. No, nah, I know that. That's that what I'm saying. But everybody over here yelling like, yeah, man, we got this guy, that guy. We don't got nobody. Y'all need Terrence Crawford to fight Tim Zhu. When people said, hey, I want to see Terrence Crawford fight Tim Zhu. I said, yeah, America ain't got no talent, man. America ain't got no talent, dog. Ain't no ifs, ands, buts. Ain't no need to explain. Ain't no need to explain. Everybody just said Tim Zhu ain't that good. Ain't that good when we try to get Charlo to fight him. Now, a year later, after y'all see him bleed a little bit, which ain't got nothing to do with punching, after y'all see him bleed a little bit, oh, yeah, yeah, he that guy now. Oh, okay. So I got to wait on you to figure out who that guy at 30 years old. Tim Zhu, 29 years old, and I got to figure, I got to wait on you to figure out he that guy because of one fight. So dudes be thir they be fighting 30 times, but we got to figure out who fighting. Come on, man. Dudes fight 30 times, but people are like, yeah, but I need him to fight the number one guy so I can figure out who, who the best between number one and number two. Duh. I mean, so you basically want everything to work out itself and you can figure out on your own. Okay. They don't know, man. These guys don't know. They don't know how to break down. When it, when it gets to guys like Lamos and all that, that's when it start to get hard for people. It started to get hard for people. When they get to Lamos and Eastside Cruz, it start to get hard. When people start to say ducking, come on, man. Like I said, cash up at the bottom. If y'all know any boxers out here turning down millions of dollars, tell them to hit my cash up. I heard boxers out here turning down millions of dollars. That's what the fans talking about. The fans saying boxers turn down millions of dollars. Human beings that's walking this earth. They don't want millions of dollars. Never never met nobody like that. I don't know. I don't know. That that sounds crazy to me. That's why a lot of times, you know what I'm saying, people, I could tell who, who grew up reading comic books and the Marvel type guys, because they come in here talking like they aren't like boxing this Marvel vs. Capcom. Like this ain't real life. Like people ain't got to get up and actually have families. Like dudes is at home saying, yeah, man, you know what? I'm going to turn down the $30 million because, you know, my, my, my mama, she could wait on that house she need. You know, I got all these family members to take care of, but, you know, so-and-so ducking, so I ain't going to do that. Come on, man. Let's grow up, man. Everybody got everybody get up and go to work every day. Let's grow up, man. I mean, hey, did you, did, hey thanks, God. This just, this just real talk, though. And I see what you're saying, but I don't really, I don't, I'm gonna be real with you. And it's, it's gonna make a lot of sense when you say it. Everybody won't break it down to you like this. I don't really be thinking about Tank Davis and Shakur Stevenson fighting or Devin Haney. I saw them fight 10 years ago. I've seen the fight already. I don't, my thing is this right here. I don't want to beg no guys to fight who already fought each other. That don't, that's insane to me. These guys already fought each other. They just technically waiting on when they want to fight. They fought each other already for free. They fought each other for free, man. Free 99, they fought each other. And then you got guys making mixtapes of the fight. These guys that fought already, man. You know what I'm saying? It's like that conversation, like with Shakur and all these other guys, it just it's 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 becoming a little extra because now we got guys. Like Frank Martin is involved right now. We're not even getting the like I've been bringing up Frank Martin and Tank Davis' name with Frank Martin. You know, I I say Shakur Stevenson here and there, or Devin Haney, but it's not something that I'm pressing for because people don't really know the fights that Tank Davis got turned down for last year. Tank Davis got turned down by Tia Fimo last year already. Tank Davis tried to fight Tia Fimo last summer. These channels ain't gonna report that to you, but Tank Davis know I know what I'm talking about. Trust me. He tried to fight Tia Fimo last year at 135. Tia Fimo said, 
And then this is what everybody don't know. TFMO said, I could still make 135 right now. But Tank Davis, he want me to fight a rehydration clause. This is when I knew TFMO wasn't a liar because he does be lying a lot, allegedly. But this is when I knew he wasn't a liar because he turned around and told Ryan Garcia, hey, I don't want that $2 million that you're trying to offer me. He said, the problem with the fight is that uh, Tank want me to do a rehydration clause and Ryan Garcia is trying to give me like $1.5, $2 million or something like that. But that wasn't really Ryan Garcia. That was really top rank, so, which he knew already. But that's why that situation turned out like the way it was. But Tank Davis had to fight at one four, uh, 135. He just did a rehydration clause with Tiafimo, which he ain't do, but his people did. So, and then I knew the Ryan Garcia and uh, Tiafimo fight was uh, real because around the same time Tank tried to fight Tiafimo, um, I think Ryan Garcia FaceTime uh, Tiafimo. was like, let's fight, let's fight. And TFMO was like, nah, nah. Because, you know, him and TFMO, Roly, and Ryan Garcia, they all friends. They frenemies, friends. They enemies and friends at the same time. They'll tell each other business. That's why they know all each other's business, because they be they friends, but they'll snitch on each other. When they were talking about, oh, this guy does perks and all the other stuff. So, yeah, they be snitching on each other. But, yeah, but um, TFMO at 140, that's a, it's possible, but I, I feel like Eastside Cruz will probably happen before that. Eastside Cruz is open to he opened to Tank Davis fight. Tank Davis ain't trying to fight Eastside Cruz. Eastside Cruz was waiting on Tank. Then everybody was trying to make making fun of Eastside Cruz, talking about he waiting on Tank. That's all he want to do is fight Tank. Tank this, Tank that. Eastside Cruz just want a career around Tank. I just heard all this a couple of months ago, a couple of weeks ago, a couple of days ago. All he wanted is a career around Tank. He following Tank, so he like I just fight Rolly then at one forty. So they, he can't follow Tank no more because he ain't he ain't at 140, 1, 135 no more. He at 140. So people can't say he following around Tank. To say he following around Tank, that don't make no sense. You know what I'm saying? Because if he really wanted to follow Tank, he'll just stay at 35 like everybody else is, fighting nobody. But he went to go fight for a belt, and he still fight for more belts. It's sad that Eastside Cruz is one of the most experienced guys at his age, and everybody else at 27, 28, 29 haven't even been in a championship fight or a main event. You know what I'm saying? That's a lot of things that's going on in Boston, but that's a whole different story. But I definitely think, like, uh, T.O. Fimo, he wanted that fight, though, but I feel like they missed the boat on that because they should have got him last year when he was desperate. He ain't as desperate as he was last year. He needed some cash last year. No disrespect, allegedly. But... He ain't as desperate as he was last year, so they kind of missed the boat on that. All that rehydration clause stuff. That's why I said, bro, you need a rehydration for TFMO, bro. I'm <laughs> I'm so I'm 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 team TFMO on that point. If Tank Davis need to, if his people feel like he need to throw in a rehydration for TFMO, well, you don't want to fight, homie. I don't know what to tell you. Your people don't believe in you to the point where you got to do all that. Yeah, it means a lot to a lot of people, but it's going to end soon, though. It's going to be so many people fighting soon, you ain't, you ain't going to be able to keep up with an O. It, it depends on certain people, too. You know what I'm saying? Because when Charlo fought uh, Canelo, a lot of people didn't look at him as a guy who was a loser because he lost already. It depends on who you is and what type of fights you in. If you're a guy like Charlo or Esau Cruz or somebody like that, fans will look past it, depending on how your resume is. If you fought some guys, they don't really care about the O, but the guys who's like borderline, it depends on who you is, too. Yeah, that's why I don't like talking about the business. I, that'd be, it'd be crazy to me how many fans be openly talking about the business now. They'll openly talk about the business of boxing, knowing. And what's crazy is we actually talking about guys who are making millions of dollars. You know what I'm saying? So they'll sit up here and act like this is just a, a quick situation that can happen. Bro, this ain't no, nah, bro. This ain't nobody trying to get an extra couple of dollars on their check at the end of the week. No, this is a whole different situation. We're talking about millions. You know what I'm saying? When these dudes set up fights, somebody at the concession stands getting paid. So this just ain't no fighter situation. This is a business. These dudes, these dudes think the fight, that, yeah, it's just a fight. You know what I'm saying? The $50 million go here. Man, these dudes, yeah, they selling popcorn and everything in these fights. Come on, man.
I don't know. If AB can get down to the weight, man, I don't know. If AB can get down to the weight, I feel like he can let something happen. But AB got two years left, man. Two years. I don't know if he's in his prime. I would say he's past his prime, but he got two years left. He can't. He can't keep his weight down. I feel he had a weight problem five years ago. That's why they got. That's why Tank Davis kind of not around him right now because AB got a weight problem. Anybody get around AB, you're gonna be bigger and bigger. He got a terrible weight problem, drinking problem, all that stuff. He got to figure out what he want, man. Sometimes, you know, people box because so they won't be depressed. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes boxing take you out of depression, but if you boxing and you depressed, it's it's over with. You done. He got to figure it out, though. Because he still got a lot of fans out here. People are watching, but I don't know, man. You don't want to be a, the butt of every joke, man. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It does help him out a lot. I'm going to tell you another reason why I help him out a lot, too. People ain't got to ask them all the time who they fight next and all that other stuff. They could just be like, man, I don't know. I use a reason. Like, I don't know. I don't know English. Walking around without a translator or something. Yeah, because lately, man, I don't like how the fans, the fans kind of put pressure on these guys like that. That's why a lot of time when these guys like Matias or uh, Cruz, they have a, a tough loss or a close fight or something like that. Eastside Cruz's last fight was close. Everybody got ghosts. You ain't seen no million followers pop up. They got ghosts real quick. Oh, yeah. But uh, I'm going to tell you one thing, Tanks, Tanks guy. Everybody cut 25 pounds, man. 25 pounds. Everybody cut 25 pounds. I'm telling you. In MMA, I'd have been around MMA guys. I'm talking about MMA stars. MMA, uh, uh, even in high school wrestling, college wrestling, uh, karate, kickboxing, um, every combat sport, they cut 25 pounds. They cut 25 pounds at in any um, oh yeah, you cut 25. That's a for show for show. I'm telling you, that's how a lot of dudes be getting. Hey, that's how a lot of dudes be getting murdered in um uh, in Boston, man. When y'all be seeing dudes be getting killed and stuff in Boston, there be them dudes that be going out there like I'm gonna go out there my natural weight. You know, I walk around at 140, so let me go out there at 140. Then you find a guy who 170, and he go out there on fight day at 170, and you at 140, you gonna lose your life in there. That's how dudes be losing their life for real, uh, tights guy. Dudes be like, yeah, man, I'm just going there 10, 12 pounds. Man, they don't care about none of that. The, the, the weight you weigh in that day, see, it'll be different. It'll be different if you had to weigh in the day of the fight. Like Tank's guy, they had to weigh in the day of the fight. You see what dudes be talking about, uh, they got to weigh in twice. They be like, oh, I ain't trying to do that. That'll change everything. Let dudes weigh in twice. Dudes will be like, oh, yeah, I ain't doing that, man. Everybody be doing that. That's why Tank kind of like, I ain't finna go up no 150. Them dudes be like 65, 175 up there. People are like, yeah, Tank need to fight at 54. That's a risk, man. That's a risk. Like, can, like uh, Floyd was just tall enough to kind of, because Canelo's a short guy. He could he could do the 54, you know what I'm saying? Because Canelo's 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, so, but if he was like six foot, nah, no way. That's too much. It's body type way different. Oh, yeah, they got all types. Of, everybody at 140 got options. I feel like everybody at 135 and 140. You got to think about it, man. Frank Martin is fighting Tank Davis right now, and that wasn't even a fight most people was thinking about. So you got to think about the options. They actually got at 135, 140. They got a lot of fights around them right now. Eastside Cruz had a lot of options at 135. But that's what happens, though, when you fight top guys all the time. If you come off a loss, you still got to fight a top guy. If you don't fight a top guy after a loss, it ain't got to be for a belt, but you need to go on here and put yourself back out there. If you don't do that, you're going to get lost in the sauce. That's why Cruz still in the action because he's still been making some movement. It's getting a little harder now because of the apps. The apps and a lot of these guys be signing certain stuff, you know what I'm saying, when they first get into their deal. 
Um, you see how A B right now, he kind of was mad at his situation with Al Heyman. Now he over there with Dun King. You know, a lot of people from the 70s, they'll look, I mean 90s, they'll look at that like, whoa, he with Dun King and he crying. So you know. I mean, he's happy with Dun King, so a lot of people don't like that either. They like, how he's with Dun King. Yeah, man, A B, man, he's I tried to explain this to people a couple of weeks ago. AB is one of the first guys to actually go viral, you know what I'm saying, in, in sports. You know, he one of the first guys to go viral in sports when he was brushing the hair and all the other stuff. He was one of the first guys to actually go viral. So that's 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 really his problem right there. A lot of people know him too much, you know what I'm saying? He's one of the first guys to go viral. And people don't really think about that, but as far as boxers, yeah, absolutely. Floyd to tell you that. That's why Floyd had him around. Floyd was like, man, this dude on Instagram and stuff more than I am. Who is this guy? Yeah, Floyd didn't get around Adrian Bronner until Adrian Bronner was Adrian Bronner. Yeah, Blair can be a, a Blair. A Blair can kind of go a couple of rounds and not take no big shot. He can probably make something happen. Yeah, he did. He ruined his career, man. I don't know what that guy was doing in that fight. Now nah, he ain't heavyweights fighting. They got featherweights. Um, they got a featherweight. I think they just had. Dang. Man, I think they got Joe Cordina. I think Eddie Hearn gonna have Joe Cordina and I forgot who Frank Warren gonna have for featherweight. They were gonna have Ray Ford, but he ain't gonna be ready for that. He trying to make, you know, Ray Ford trying to steal. He just had a fight, man. So he had a very tough fight. So he gonna rest. Um, I think they said it was gonna be Dubois and Hergovic, or not Dubois and Hergovic. It's either Dubois and Hergovic or Dubois and. Because my thing is this right here. A lot of people saying it's going to be in June, but from what I've heard, the 505 is in September, ain't it? So the information I know is in September. So I'm hearing I'm hearing Dubois and um Joshua. Dubois, Joshua, then who's the other guy? It's a couple of fights. They're still putting it together. But I know they got Dubois and uh, Joshua right now. That's why they kind of announced that earlier. They didn't announce it, but I kind of I kind of announced it. But and they had it on the zone as well. But yeah, it's gonna be uh, the boy and uh, jo Joshua. <clears throat> it's not mean that uh, that many heavyweights, man. As far as like to have a five on five, they just have they gonna have Eddie Hearn fighters versus uh, Frank Warren. So the guys that's on PBC like Andy Ruiz and Wilder, they're not gonna be on that. It's just gonna be Eddie Hearn and uh, Frank Warren fighters. Yeah, Terrence Crawford been over there in Turkey, though. That's what I was telling people. He been over there with, uh, in Saudi Arabia. I've been trying to warn all y'all. All this stuff that's happening right now is it's preparing guys for Saudi Arabia. Some of these guys. I think I was the only person that actually announced that Canelo was, uh, well, I was the first one to announce that Canelo was looking at Saudi Arabia. I was actually the first one to announce that Mike Tyson was going to fight this year. And Canelo was going to try to fight in Saudi Arabia this year. So the Terrence Crawford thing, that's kind of it's kind of old. Technically, it's kind of old, but it's kind of new as far as what they're talking about. But I kind of mentioned it when um he mentioned the Chris Eubanks fight. When he, when he was talking about fighting Chris Eubanks, everybody was like, oh, they didn't understand what's going on. Though. He going to make a fight with or without these people. He don't care about nobody at this point. He fought everybody he needs to. As far as in his mind, he ain't got to chase nobody. And then, and then if they're not going to give him the fight, if he's not going to get the fight he wants, he's not going to chase anybody. I don't think that's a bullet. Tank's guy, you might not know this, but uh, uh, Tank, Tank, um, it's a lot of fighters that uh said Tank was 160 when they sparred now recently. I don't want to I don't want to be mean and call Tank a weight bully, but Tank be like 160 uh 
tax guy. No, no cap. I ain't gonna lie to you. Tank be like 160. Tank was in like 150 something in like 2019, 18. So I know he like one around, he be hitting like 160 something. Yeah, Tank be hit. <laughs> I'm telling you, Tank, Tank, bro, Tank walking around, wait, bro. Tank be getting down. That's why he losing weight now. He getting older now. Tank getting older now. He can't be doing that at 32, 33 years old where he can be like, oh, I'm at this weight. I got to jump down. That's why he being a lot more disciplined. I'm telling you, I've been leaning, I've been laying off a of Tank uh, for a long time. The only thing I asked for Tank, I said, just stay in shape. Yeah, 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 facts. I just told Tank to stay in shape. I said, I don't care who you fight right now. You've been around Adrian Bronner a little bit, doing what you're doing. You need to get in shape, man. Like, his, his, his weight was getting out of hand, bro. His weight was way out of hand. Go look at his old pictures. Tank, neck and stuff. Bro, he, his neck and stuff was fat like Mike Tyson's is now. Yeah, he's Tank was man, he was huge back then. Him and Adrian Bronner was huge. Look at Adrian Bronner's size and then look at Tank's size back then. When they had them picture with him and Richard Hitchens and everybody when they were dancing, Tank was huge, man. He about the same size as Adrian Bronner. And he was wide. Man, if Tank wants to, bro, he can get big. Like if he wanted to get real huge, like I'm trying to uh think of somebody in my mind who's a big ripped guy who's short. Who's a short guy? A lower weight class guy who's ripped up, got a lot of muscles. If Tank wanted to, he can get that big though. Like one of those short little bodybuilder guys, he can get that big if he wanted to. I'm telling you, I've seen it. The way his power kind of changes, the way he carries power, it's different now. But yeah, he changes behavior, man. Tank is a lot more disciplined now. He's a lot more mature. Um. He making better decisions on his weight. I feel like, like I said though, uh, Tank's guy. I feel like he waiting on, um, he waiting on anyway, man. He trying to see what anyway gonna do. That's why he, that's why he posted that picture of him winning one thirty eight. I'm gonna tell you, don't no dudes post no picture. And I'm gonna tell you another thing too, man. If you post the picture of you being at one thirty eight, that means you ain't never at one thirty eight. <laughs> if you posted the picture of you being at one thirty eight, I know it, bro. I just see people weigh in all the time. If you posting a picture of your weight at 38, that means today you ain't that 38. Tomorrow, that means you like, woo, I'm down at 38 now. That means that was a surprise to him. He don't walk, he don't walk around at 38. That's the same. We know who we'll see tank weight all the time if it was low. That's not a problem. He he tweet every day. So we'll know if his weight was low all the time. But I know right now it's low as it's low, low. Like I ain't got to worry about him being in shape. He's going to be in the best shape he ever been in. We're going to see a different guy in this fight, man. He's going to let his hands go. You think, you think Haney will be able to KO? Man. Yeah, I think hey, that's a good point you bring up, man. I got a question. You think it's harder to knock down uh Regis than it is to knock down uh Ryan Garcia? Oh yeah, I got I got something about that uh Tanks guy. I don't wanna put I wanna give out too information. They kind they they be kind of messing with my live because I be giving out too many facts and secrets and stuff. But uh yeah, it's something like that. They got a plan going on. Now, actually, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you what they actually doing. They waiting on Tank to um. Uh, they want Tank to uh go to one, one thirty. They want to stay around one thirty. Okay. Anyway, at twenty, I think he's at one twenty two right now. He's trying to. Well, I got a whole like long story to put together. I don't want to give out too information, but too much information, but because it's a long story. It goes all together too. It's it's gonna go all together with the in way stuff. I'm gonna give it to y'all this week too. But um, in a way, is actually preparing to go to featherweight next year. 
You know what I'm saying? ESPN already did a um they did they did a video where they were showing all the featherweights. I don't know if y'all seen it recently, but when Ray Ford fought uh Komatov, they did a video where all the featherweights was like flying in and jumping in, and then they had in the way at the end when he was standing between all the guys at featherweight at the end, and he was just standing there with his eyes, kind of looking at the camera. He gonna be at 126 next year. He going to featherweight. So right now, I'm going to tell you what Tank doing, bro. I'm going to tell you. Right now, Tank getting in good shape right now. If you know anything, it's the best time during the summer and spring is the best time to kind of cut the fat out your body because it won't be around later on during the year as much as you would if you kind of sit around because this is the best time to actually lose weight when it's hot and different things like that. That's why a lot of times Tank, Tank trains in, the, uh, in Florida when it's hot year-round. But he tried to stay around 130. So if anyway goes to 20, 26, he's going to possibly try to make something happen at 26 if he can. If Tank can put himself in position where he can do one fight at 26, he'll see if he's at 30. If he can get at 30, he'll be like, man, I probably can get. That's false. That's false. That's the biggest lie in boxing right now. I can prove it right now. I put a whole video out explaining this, and nobody got on my video explaining it. I think that's false. I think that's the biggest ghost story I've ever heard in boxing. I can explain it to you why. You want me to explain? I'm going to explain it to you. Where is it? Where is it? Man, I hope I ain't deleted this thing, man. Man, I ain't hope I ain't deleted this. Man, I think y'all done got me to delete my doggone clip, man. Let me go ahead and find it real quick. <sighs> no, that the fact that people say that, let me tell you something. If anybody say that, ain't nobody saying nothing about power. You said too big. Too big. We talking about too big or too much power. That's two different things. Too much power and too big is two different things. People saying that anyway, that's why I know anyway that dude. That's why I said a lot of these boxers, I don't be wanting to hear about them. These dudes can't, they on pound for pound, they can't jump weights like that. Anyway, moved up four pounds, man, from the weight class. He moved up three weight classes, it's only 10 pounds. Yeah, but I got. I'm about to show you something. I'm about to show you why you're wrong. I'm telling you. I'm about to show you why you're wrong. Right. All right, you remember what you said, right? You said it was too big, right? You said too big, right? Too big, right? Hey, I want everybody to look at the screen. This top secret news I'm about to put out right now. Look at this. Hold on. So, you said he was too big. He's Grinch said that Pacquiao... I mean, uh, he said that uh, anyway is too big, but Tank Davis too big for anyway. I heard everybody been saying it recently, but I actually studied this for a whole day, so I, I put a whole video out about it. Look up um, anyway can't face the boxing. You'll see the video I'm talking about. Watch this. See, everybody on, on on YouTube don't do this. That's how I know dudes is really flat faking it and they stealing money. Dudes is stealing money. A strong arm robbery, no gun. So how did too much weight, homie? Look at the screen right there. And I want everybody to king me, homie. King me. I'm the I'm the king of this box and stuff. Look at that screen right there. Look at that screen right there. King me. King me right now. Look at that screen right there. That's why I don't argue boxing. 
That's why I don't argue boxing right here. Look at that screen right there. And this is how I know people don't like me because I put out news like that and dudes be like, yeah, oh, I'm not giving any light to this video. That's how I know dudes be a hater. That's why I be like, I had an energy behind it. Oh, I got I got something worse than that. That's just it. Anyway, not no Pacquiao. That's why I said, don't mention no fucking anyway on my channel ever again. Anybody mention anyway on my fucking channel ever again, I'm going to go the fuck off. Don't mention anyway on this fucking channel ever again. I'm telling everybody right now. I don't want to hear anyway's fucking name on this channel no more. I don't want to hear anyway's fucking name ever again. Real talk. I don't want to hear anyway's fucking name on my channel ever again in my life. In the fucking story. I do this boxing shit for real. I don't play around with no boxing. I don't want to hear anyway name on my motherfucking channel ever again in my life. Period. Excuse me for, for, for my language, but everybody ain't, ain't understanding English. I don't want to hear about fucking anyway on my channel. He ain't shit to me. I don't want to hear about fucking anyway on my channel. I know boxing for real. I know boxing for real. I don't play around with these dudes on no boxing. I know this shit for real. I'm not finna get no gray hair over no basic shit. I don't want to hear about no fucking anyway no more. He ain't shit to me. You just proved that he ain't shit. Anyway, it's not no Pacquiao. I know he ain't. Don't mention that motherfucker on my channel ever again. I'm not. I'm not these other uh, boxing channels. I'm not going in on Grinch. I'm not going in on Grinch. 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 My dog. He already know. Me and Grinch talking like that. I'm just saying. People. People do this stuff and they piss me off, dog. That's why the Lamos shit. I'm not even talking about Lamos. I don't want to hear about dudes like anyway no more. Fucking. We crying over 14 pounds. Get the fuck out of here, man. Get the fuck out of here. We we crying over 14 pounds. Get this little ass dude the fuck out my face. Yeah, I'm mad. I'll I'm, I'm, I'm be tired of hearing this dude anyway tonight. I don't even know how his name came up. Anyway, too big for Tank? Yes, I'm mad. Yes, I am. I'm not mad like I'm, I'm invested in it. I'm just saying. Anyway, can some hey, look, 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 at, look at the screen right now. How am I not mad when they talking about he's too big for Tank? Look at my screen. How the fuck is, is, is Tank Davis too big? For anyway, can somebody explain it to me? Yes, I am mad. How the fuck is anyway number one pound for pound? And this dude then went up 14 fucking pounds. How is he number one pound for pound? Somebody explain that to me. Because every, every boxing channel out here, anyway, number two, pound for pound, 14 pounds. Get that shit up out of here, man. Crawford, Charlo went up more pounds his last fight than fucking anyway went up his whole career. Get out of here, bro. No, nah, he don't need to do no drug test. He don't need to do no drug test. He can't go up. He can't go up five pounds. He can't go up 10 pounds. Bro, 130. Man, come on, man. These dudes. Y'all be talking about these dudes really, man. Come on, man. Get out of here, bro. Get out of here, bro. Get out of here, bro. Look at the screen. In a way. He's too, he's too what? Big for tank? I hear, how? Come on, man. That's what I'm saying. These dudes, are we going to talk about it or are we not going to talk about it? Not everybody don't want to talk about it now. Damn, okay. Oh, nobody want to talk about it now. Ha <laughs> ha.
Nobody, nobody want to talk about it now. Y'all see that, right? Man, come on, man. In a way. Now don't nobody want to talk about it. People bring the shit up. Now don't don't now don't no they bring the shit up. Don't nobody want to talk about it now. Hell no, nah, not not the way these dudes talk. Hell no. Nah, no. Nah. I don't see none of these fights happening. Y'all lucky y'all got Fendora versus Zoo. And that was a late replacement. Nah, the way these dudes talking, that ain't gonna never happen. No, sir. No, sir. No, they can't even defend the uh, number one pound for pound guy right now. No, sir. Best fighter in the world. No, nah, I like Gr Grinch, my dog, man. He already know. Gr Grinch, my dog. We talk about it all the time. No, nah, Grinch. Uh, Grinch. Am I wrong, though, Grinch? Grinch. Grinch. No, Grinch. You know they be pushing him like that. Grinch, am I wrong? Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Yeah, he'll get a credit for anyway. Bro, I just pulled up here why he'll get credit for anyway. That's why I'm saying, bro. Who wanted who wanted Manny Pacquiao to get destroyed? Because why would Manny Pacquiao? I'm gonna give y'all another one too. Y'all, it sounds like people try to get Manny Pacquiao killed back in the day. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Yeah, jumping over Floyd, jumping over Floyd, uh, and get and get killed. These dudes the same height, man. They the same height, and Manny Pacquiao was 106 pounds when he started. They the same height. Come on, man. That's why I said Manny Pacquiao ain't never been pound for pound number one. Not on most of these dudes' lists. Well, he probably have, but some of these lists I done seen back in the day, nah. Nah, they had some other stuff going on back then. Yeah, I know, I know, in a way. Yeah, in a way, know that. In a way, know that. I'm just talking about overall, but we got dudes in America like, yeah, in a way, uh, in a way, what? In a way, what? That's a conversation that should be dead on this channel. Not overall. I'm just talking. Talk, I'm just saying overall. It should be dead in boxing. Period. I feel like when dudes do that, they don't know boxing. I think that's the quickest way to admit you don't know boxing because two years ago people were talking about, oh yeah, Chocolatito. It didn't. Nah, three years ago, Chocolatito. Then two years ago, yeah, Loma. So it go from Chocolatito to Loma, number one pound for pound. Now it's the anyway. And then I go back down here and I expose how Manny Pacquiao, it ain't going to never be nothing coming out of Asia like Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao, uh, Nakatani, probably Nakatani, that's probably it. Nakatani, that guy. I like Nakatani. Go good. This is what you don't understand, homie. Anyway, only went up 14 pounds, man, in his whole career. When somebody says I'm number one pound for pound, and look at Pacquiao. Pacquiao went up 48 pounds. 48 pounds. He went from 106 pounds to 154. Anyway, he went from 108 to 122. By the time Pacquiao was at 122, never, nobody was saying Pacquiao was number one pound for pound. Nobody. Nobody on earth said Pacquiao was Number one, pound for pound. No, I no, 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 go good. I ain't going in with you. My dog. Y'all no, no, I'm saying y'all actually give me a response. Everybody else ain't gonna say nothing, Grinch, and go good. So y'all know what time it is. Everybody else ain't gonna say nothing. So y'all already know what time it is. Y'all helping me out. Manny Pacquiao was never number one pound for pound when he was at 122. No, never. Never. Manny Pacquiao be Hall of Famers. And it's like, well, anyway, it's like, yeah, kick gloves, kick gloves. Nah, homie, I don't do kick gloves with Tank, and I'm a Tank fan. I'm a super Tank fan. And I treat Tank like, hey, you better get it done, homie. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, nah, they, no, 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 no. The anyway, the anyway thing, that's a ghost story in Boston. That's a ghost story in Boston. Anyway. Is never going to be on a certain level that Manny Pacquiao was. I got a different kind of standard for it anyway. If he's going to be number one pound found, even with uh, Lomachico, Lomachico would have been moved up. Anyway, it's not 
doing the same. These guys are the same size as him. Manny Pacquiao and Lomachenko are the same kind of st stature. They're not super tall guys. They have the same kind of body type as uh, anyway. He's not a super large guy. He's 5'5". Five, five. Canelo's 5'8". Five, what are we talking about? Canelo's 5'8 and 168. Anyway, it's 5'5 five, five at 122. What man you know is 5'5 five, five at 122? You know he's cutting weight, man. Come on, man. What are we talking about, bro? Ain't no grown man 5'5 five, five, 122. Come on, man. Come on. Let's go. Let's be real. Ain't no grown man walking around. He can, Bro, you can have hair down to your knees. You ain't finna be 122. You're going to be at least 130. I'd have been around guys all my life who weigh in. I know body types. Anyway, it's 130 right now. Guaranteed. Right now. At least. 30, 35. I ain't no dudes 5'5". Five, five. Ask Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao be like, hey, man. Nah, anyway, a beast, though. I like anyway. I'm, a, I'm actually a fan of anyway. I'm actually a fan of him, but it's a thing going on now to where if you beat one American, you that guy. Bro, if I beat 30 Americans and you beat one American, how are you getting credit? What? Everybody like, yeah, man, tell you, he beat uh, uh, he beat Fandora. Mendoza did too. So it's not even a discussion. Somebody else did it. You're just more excited because of the other guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, in a way. In a way, ain't really good like that, man. Not to the point we should be jumping out. Come on, man. So Canelo got to prove himself, but I got to let Inouye do what he want. Why Canelo ain't on number one pound pound? At least he going up. That's my thing about Canelo. I don't like Canelo all like that. All, every, every move he make, I ain't got to like him. You know what I'm saying? As a as a fighter, I respect him. He moving up more than these other guys. Canelo only moved up, what, 40, 50 pounds? What, 30 pounds? 30, 40 pounds? These dudes crying over 14 pounds? Now, let me tell you, feather, featherweight is 126, right? Oh, I'm not ready for featherweight right now. Them four pounds, you know, woo, God. You know, everybody just pray for me and my family. Them four pounds, boy, woo, going to 126, fighting the featherweight, man. I don't know. Look at the birthday. <laughs> hey, <laughs> bro, we see it live, man. Hey, <laughs> we see it live, bro. Uh, uh, the worst part about it is if you go to uh, if you go to uh, if you go look at the interviews he did yesterday, he was <laughs> they interviewed him in the lobby. He looked like he was burping and everything. He was burping during the interview, so yeah, man. <laughs> Dude said a part thirty. Yeah, I don't hear nothing. I mean, he, he still, he still, he still cool. I mean, I mean, he, he, anyway, he doing what he supposed to. But it's more the fans, you know what I'm saying? Like the fans is doing, bro. Manny Pacquiao, that man fighting at forty some years old, fighting dudes at uh one forty seven. So Manny Pacquiao, forty seven years old, is about to fight a guy that Tim Zoo is about to fight. He fought a guy that Tim Zoo is going to fight. It's like we got a lot of man. It's a lot of stuff going on in boxing right now, bro. Oh no, it ain't Japan. It ain't Japan. It ain't Japan. I'm telling you, it ain't Japan. It's not Japan. It is not Japan. It is not. It is not. I'm telling you, I done tested it already. It ain't Japan. It ain't Japan. Actually, in, to in Japan, uh. <laughs> uh, in Japan, 
in Japan, uh, he actually, uh, Stephen Fulton actually get a lot of respect over there. They think he was actually, um, uh, you know, because American, you know, the media said that Stephen Fulton was a top guy. They didn't wait until they waited till the fight happened. So, actually, Stephen Fulton is a top guy to me. Let me just get that out of the way. Stephen Fulton, a top fighter, in a way, is a top fighter. He's one of the best fighters in Japan. He's the best right now in Japan. So, yeah, he get credit for everything he's doing, but. I'm talking about as far as the fans saying he's too big. Nah, he ain't too big. You know what I'm saying? I don't think he's too big. I really don't. I don't think he's too big. I think his his brother is actually skinnier than him as far as his body, his body type. I think his brother's actually a little skinnier than him. Yeah, he is chill. I ain't gonna count. Yeah, he is. I ain't gonna count. He is. He is. That's why I don't go in on him. But man, we're trying to see the best. You know, anyway, at 130, bro, let me tell you something. If anyway goes to 130, just 130, and he could fight guys at 26 and 130. Bro, if he fought at 130, he brought guys up to 26. I wouldn't even care. It's not a lot of action at 26, at 22 right now. That's the thing about it. Like, he ain't got enough to work with right now to actually push him over the edge, especially if we're going towards history because Manny Pacquiao fighting at 54. He started at 120. He started at 106. Anyway, got some work. Everybody don't want to admit it, but he got some work. He finna go. So what did he? My thing is this right here. He didn't. He don't got the opportunity to put be put next to uh Terrence Crawford. In my eyes, I feel like because what we telling people right now is Bibble beating um Canelo. Bibble beating Canelo don't mean nothing. Like people don't understand that. Ever since people said Bibble beating Canelo don't mean nothing. Canelo don't mean nothing to me. You the one who told me Canelo don't mean nothing. Well, y'all sat up here and said, Bivol being Canelo doesn't mean anything. He can't be pound for pound number one for being Canelo. Even though Bivol tried to go down to 168, which nobody would ever do. I'm going to look it up. 168, which nobody ever does. They like, ah, oh, no. Nah. He's trying to go down to 168. He's trying to bully him. He trying to bully him at 168. He going down. Man, all right, man. I shout out to everybody who left a like too, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, but he going down though. I'm about to look at this, uh, what the one you just said, uh. He going down the weight. So he he deserves. Y'all gotta think about it. <laughs> no, nah, he was actually, you know, he was actually. <laughs> He was actually pretty chill, though. He was actually pretty chill. He was actually pretty chill, man. He was actually pretty chill. He was he was pretty mad that he couldn't get his uh he couldn't get the punches off like he wanted. I got some I got some huge information coming out on that Canelo thing too. With him and Bibble. He said something about the Bibble thing, but I got something else coming out y'all know about. You think the pair, you think the cherry pick messed them up, man? For real. I don't think it was the pair cherry pick. When I first seen Bibble, they had like Bibble was the real deal. You know, it kind of it kind of messed me up though. Cause when I seen Bibble the first time, they were talking about he was a movie star and stuff. I'm like, a movie star? What are y'all talking about? I ain't, I didn't understand. I guess in the country he was from, he had a movie appearance or something. But they made it seem like he was a movie star. So I thought it was a Jake Paul situation. Bro, you know, around that time, bro, they had a lot of uh Jake Paul, uh KSI, a lot of stuff going on in the zone. So I didn't know what they was mixing in. I think he I think he's afraid of that size. I think that size kind of I, I think that size kind of scared him but i don't think so though because bibble is just as big man to be honest with you bibble's a big guy when he was standing next to bitter bill Bib bibble's a bigger guy he's a lot bigger i don't know bibble has one of those uh frames he holds his weight pretty good he's a huge guy that's gonna be a good fight i definitely think um uh, that's gonna probably be the best fight card we're gonna see that and bitter be of and um 
that Tank Davis in June, it's going to be good. I feel like those two fight cards are going to be amazing. That's definitely slept on. That's why I said if that fights before a Tank Davis fight, man, I don't know. A lot of these fights can take away pay-per-views, man. A lot of these fights can take away pay-per-views. Wait till everybody see that Tyson Fury uh, card. They're going to be like, I'm not paying for this. That's why that Tim Zoo fight, that's going to hurt a lot of people. Yeah, I said, man, you should have seen what could. I don't know. Monkey is just. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely going live for the fight. I'm definitely going live. Yeah, I'm going to be live. Now, you should have been in here for that uh that Hitches fight, though, man. It was wild in here. I ain't going to lie. Everybody was breaking down that fight pretty good. The scores. Everybody did a good job in that fight. Yeah, Canelo don't like the trash talk. Now nah, he he really don't like that stuff. He don't like that. He don't like the trash talk, especially if it's in English. He don't like that English stuff. That's why he had to learn English. Canelo, like, hey man, these dudes talking English and stuff. Let me find out what they talking about. You think he'll do that? Who's another guy? I, Zerto left left already, so that's not gonna happen. Who's another guy? Nah, he wouldn't do no Virgil Ortiz like that. Hey, you think they were... <laughs> I don't even want to answer no stupid question like that. It's stupid, but it's 2024, man. You think Canelo would actually think about fighting a dude like Virgil Ortiz in two years? Like a next year or two or something like that? That's crazy. I don't know why I thought about that, but I, I don't even know. That sounds stupid. Man, he don't like trash talking, man. He's he don't like that, bro, at all. For some reason, he's he's tapped out on that that trash talking. He's kind of chilling on that. I don't know why he let these guys bother him like that when he's at another level, man. Canelo's at another level. He don't got to argue with these guys. <laughs> they being they asking you for a payday. Yeah, me too. They kind of. That kind of ruined everything. I was like, ah. I was like, ah. Because sometimes when McGee look at him, he look at him like, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get you. But sometimes he's looking like, I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell, man. McGee a little sneaky. He might be running game on Canelo just to get this fight. Yeah, Berlanga definitely doing everything he can to get that Canelo fight. Berlanga, the biggest, busiest man in the world right now. Don't nobody know it. Berlanga working hard at Al Heyman right now. Berlanga, he didn't call Jamel, Jamel Charlo. He called Danny Jacobs. Um, I heard recently somebody else name popped up. He tried to find a guy who fought Canelo recently. So a lot of people can say, oh, yeah, he fought so-and-so who Canelo fought. So he should definitely get a Canelo fight. Yeah, if you look at my uh, Canelo 2024 plans, I said Munguia and Berlanga he was going to fight this year. I said that video. I ain't make another one either. I just left it alone. But I ended up being right about that. I didn't. I thought it was going to be a long shot though. Wow, while because people, caught, people brought up Charlo and Benavidez. But I ended up being right on that. It is, it's Munguia. Oh, no. Canelo ain't retiring no time. So he said three or four more years, man. Canelo said four or five more years he fight. And usually if he says it, Anthony Joshua said might retire next year. Anthony Joshua might retire next year. The end of next year, Anthony Joshua, he's looking to retire soon. He just said it. He said he got two years left. I think it might change after the Tyson Fury fight. All depends. If he wins the Tyson Fury fight, he'll probably keep fighting for a while. But Anthony Joshua's going to retire. A lot of these guys retiring right now. Yeah, four or five years is a long time. I don't, especially with Go Good just said. That's a long time to me. Five years? He said five. He didn't say four or five. I'm saying four, but he said five. That's a long time. Yeah, but Canelo was like, man. Hey, Canelo. Hey, Canelo won that battle, man. That was funny. 
Nobody knew Canelo could speak English and stuff. Get out of here. <laughs> Nobody knew he could speak English. That's funny. The first time they found out he could speak English was when he cussed out uh, Andre. That's what made it funny to everybody. They're like, he speak English? What is no, they they talking about Andre versus uh David Morrell. They want Jamal Charlo to fight Plant, but Jamal Charlo, I'm gonna give y'all a hint real quick. Jamal Charlo is supposed to have a mandatory right now, this month. Since he's not doing the mandatory, that means that somebody let him know that he's a possibility for Canelo or Caleb Plant right now. If Canelo doesn't choose him by July. They probably gonna move forward with a Caleb Plant fight, but I don't think PVC at this time right now wants to give up a belt at 160 unless it benefits them. You know, it's still you, having a belt still valuable. And you gotta realize PVC lost three undisputed fights last year. They lost three fights of undisputed, so they don't really have any any room to kind of make outside fights outside of the. Uh, out, outside the roster and stuff like that. PBC can't risk uh, having too many guys lose their belt. They lost what? That's a lot of belts, man. Three undisputed fights you lose. It's good to put them together, but if you lose, it's a wrap. I mean, all your guys, is that's why they're trying to get Spence back in the picture. I don't think they got into negotiations. I think, actually, Actually, Benavidez rejected the Morel fight last year because Munguia said he wanted to fight. And actually, Benavidez turned down Morel for the Munguia fight because Munguia was like, I'll fight you now. Benavidez was like, let's make it happen. He went over there, then Canelo called Munguia, and then Morel was just stuck in a tight spot, and then that's when Benavidez went with Andre for the fight. He kind of wanted, wanted more of a name. I mean, at the end of the day, like, Benavidez beating Morrell last year, I don't think people would have said, yeah, he, diver he deserved Canelo, in my opinion. So that's why he didn't take it. Yeah, absolutely. What? Man. And Berlinga, Berlinga is smart. If they smart, I don't know if they're going to do it. I'm just throw this out there. Berlanga is smart. I don't know if they're going to put him on a co-main event. If they smart, they'll put Berlanga on the co-main event on that uh, Matias uh, car in Puerto Rico. If they don't put uh, Berlanga on that car, it ain't going to make a lot of sense. It'll be a major event they put him on that car with Matias. If they don't do that, though, they're going to miss out on the opportunity. You see him losing twice? He getting the, he getting the ring with Bivol. I don't know. It might be different. It depends. If Bivol go in there and lose the bitter Biv and Canelo go back and fight Bivol, it might be a little different, man. Because Canelo, he ain't take that much damage. He just ain't have no strategy. He ain't have nothing for real. He didn't have anything. He didn't have nothing. Yeah, four or five years is a long time ago. That's long. it will be gone by then. Yeah, they are. They are, man. That's why. That's why I was kind of. That's why I was. Try, I was trying to tell people this year, like it's cool to have Ngannou involved and everything, but a lot of these guys we still haven't seen fight yet, man. We still haven't seen Dubois fight a lot of people. Hergovic, Andy Ruiz. We seen Wilder fight Joseph Parker, but that's it. We need to have these guys more involved, man. That's why I was trying to tell people, like, hey. These heavyweights, they finna retire, man. The only thing you're gonna be looking at in a minute is uh Gerald uh Jared Anderson, big baby Anderson. These other guys are gonna retire. You see, uh Tyson Fury, he hasn't fought, but except once, and that was in Ghana last year. Oh no, Charlo ain't getting uh Canelo. Nah. I don't think he's gonna get Canelo. He's been out too long. If he was if it was a nah. I feel like Canelo will get that. No, nah, I I'm not type I don't think anybody could just beat Canelo. You know what I'm saying? It has to be it has to be somebody that's willing to trade at a high level. That's why Bivol, his punch output is high. You gotta have a high punch output. Charlo does, but he kind of counters a lot. He jabs. 
it's cool, but it depends. Maybe he has a chance, but yeah, Fandora went PVC. PVC been pushing Fandora and Benavidez the whole shutdown since 2020. Fandora and Benavidez has been getting pushed very hard. And a lot of people saying, yeah, man, they just want to push certain guys. They've been pushing Benavidez and Fandora the whole shutdown the last four or five years. Him, it's been Benavidez, Fandora. It was a little bit of Roly, but mostly Isak Cruz recently. I think PBC kind of smart on that end, bro. They took a they took a little risk on Isak Cruz because a lot of people wasn't really trying to um, see him in the ring at a certain point. Berlanga versus Morel. I think Morel's gonna. They talking about Morel versus Andre until I hear until I hear a no on that. That's kind of the fight I'm going with right now. To be honest with you, until I hear a no a no on that. I know a lot of people saying Andre was going to sixty and all that other stuff. I heard that too, but I also didn't hear him say it. You know, usually he has a lot to say, so if he ain't say it, I don't know. I got I got another question too. Didn't Andre Rozier uh work with uh Berlanga? Am I did anybody know about that real quick? Did Andre Rozier work with Berlanga? Or am I just tripping? Did he work with Berlanga, right? Yeah, me too. I said that too. I said that too. And I'm not I'm not usually a guy who's too big on people uh using alcohol and stuff like that. But you know it's a problem when Tank Davis put down the alcohol before Canelo. You know what I'm saying? Like the way Tank Tank Davis put it down early. That's why he's not so fat right now. But Canelo stays in the gym, man. Stays in the gym, bro. Canelo does this. That's one thing I got to realize. I, I be talking about him and stuff. He, he does. Canelo do this. He do this. He going to be he going to be ready. He going to come. He going to come prepared. It depends on if Shakur. I ain't going to lie to y'all. If Shakur if Shakur leaves top rank this year, which I think I might I think it might not happen. He got too many he got too many people over there at top rank. If Shakur Stevens to leave top rank, he can get any fight he want right now. If he go to the zone, they'll make him fight Matias right now at 140. Shakira Stevens go to PVC, they'll let him fight Tank immediately. He'll get whatever fight he wants right now. That's a guarantee. That's why a lot of these fights really not happening unless it's an advantage. That's why they told TFEMO, rehydration clause, your contract up next year. If you want to fight Tank, Sign with us next year. Oh, Shakur, you want to fight with us? Sign with us next year. Because the same people that they talking for with Frank Martin, that's the same people they can talk with with uh, Shakur, uh, with, uh Tank, Tank Davis. Shakur Stevens can talk to all these same people. I think they're going to make him wait it out, though. My thing with Shakur Stevenson was I felt like he made a wrong decision fighting De Los Santos. De Los Santos is going to make you look bad when you get in there, bro. De Los Santos ain't that type of guy that's going to make you look good after you get in the ring with him. That's why he was saying, yeah, De Los Santos, it's a good fight. He better than uh, Frank Martin. I tell him, nah, man, for your type of style, it ain't. A guy with a low punch output is not a good style against Shakur Stevens. That's why we ain't had no punches in the fight. De Los Santos ain't finna swing no punches unless he has to. I tell people that. Oh, yeah, better be able to clean up, uh, Canelo. Easy. The reason why is because the reason why is because better be ain't gonna he ain't gonna let up throughout the fight. Those times where guys get to like sixth, seventh round. What I learned about better be is those rounds where guys take off six, seven round, the six, seven, eight rounds, better be he knocks those guys out in that round. He don't like when guys take off. When he sees that you letting up in a round, that's where the knockouts come out. He like this dude taking a break on me. Yeah, he's done. Look at every fight when them dudes be like, "Let me take this. Let me take this round off and try to run away from Bitter B and lean on the ropes." Yeah, man. Yeah, shout out my dog Grinch, man.
<laughs> hey man, that's, hey, you only know. Hey, like Ricky Bobby said, you if you ain't first, you last. If you ain't first, you last. Hey Nick, you know what I think his problem was for real. I think he ain't used his legs enough. His legs and just the everything. You can't go toe to toe with a guy like Benavidez. Anybody go toe to toe with Benavidez like Andre did? A lot of people ain't gonna do that. But everybody not gonna do that, man. Like I was telling people about that with uh Fundora. Fundora and Benavidez is not finna clinch. They not finna hold. They not finna tie up in no fights. You know what I'm saying? So if you if you see anybody tying up in a fight with Benavidez or um Fundora, they're gonna get destroyed. Them guys don't tie up. So the other guy, he's he's the one that's tying up. So I think I think Andre not tying up got him in a bad spot. You think Benavidez gonna stop? Uh yeah, me too. I got Benavidez stopping there, everybody. I'm sorry. I mean, not a stoppage. At 75, it's gonna be hard to get a stoppage, but I don't know. He might be stronger at 75. You might be right. I got to agree with that, Grinch. He might be stronger at 75. And I'm going to be real. People act like Benavidez is super huge when he's not at that weight. He didn't look that big to me this weekend. And he was drinking and everything. Hey, man, the man out drinking, man. So, obviously, his weight is A1. His weight is on point right now. And then made the dude cancel his fight. The dude canceled his fight so he could fight Tia Fimo. Ain't that crazy? Tia Fimo got a dude who already had a fight and he canceled the fight. Steve Clagic, he cleaned it. Man. So you fighting a guy who already had a fight lined up? Yeah, cancel your fight and fight me. That mean the dude ain't that good, man. He canceled his fight so he can fight you? Yeah, all these guys fight once a year, it's going to catch up to them. They're not getting better doing that. They're not getting better doing that. Fighting once a year in your in your late prime. That's what I'm saying. Anyway, fighting four or five times this year. Anyway, got all his fights lined up right now. He's not playing. Anyway, got all his fights lined up right now. I'm gonna let everybody know soon. Anyway, got all his fights lined up right now. He know who he, who he gonna fight for the next two years. He already know it. He got four or five promotional companies. Anyway, fighting on Amazon Prime, ESPN, whatever they got in Japan. He fighting on everything right now. Oh, everybody ain't know Anyway will fight on Amazon Prime, did it? Yeah, newsflash. Anyway been fighting on Amazon Prime since last year. I told people already. Matter of fact, when he fought uh, Stephen Fulton, that was on Amazon Prime. It went on Amazon Prime in uh, USA, but it was on Amazon Prime in a whole nother country. Yeah. Anyway, fought, been fighting on Amazon Prime since last year. I'm going to drop. All the people right now that's in Japan, they've been fighting on Amazon Prime already. See, see people don't realize what's going on in the, in the business of boxing. It's a whole, this ain't, this ain't 2016, brother. This, it's changing right now. Boxing is getting removed from over here. While people worrying about, hey, man, this guy the best. Crawford don't deserve this. Bro, when y'all say Crawford don't deserve nothing, these, these fans from other countries, they love it, bro. How did y'all think that boxing ended up in Saudi Arabia? From people saying, hey, this guy, this American fighter don't deserve this. Oh, he don't? Let's just go to Saudi Arabia and have a big fight then. Them American guys ain't trying to do nothing. I, I heard everybody saying that Crawford guy don't deserve nothing. So you know if his own people saying that, he don't deserve anything. That's what's going on. That's why you got Inouye fighting nothing but PBC guy. That's why people are people are losers, bro, in Boston. They don't know nothing. Inouye's fighting nothing but PBC guys right now. They'll say, PBC's weak. Inouye, he's number one. I don't like PBC. Do you know that Inouye's fighting nothing but PBC guys right now? How is PBC weak and he's fighting PBC guys? How is Eastside Cruz? How you not like, you know, people say, I don't like PBC. But but Cruz is your favorite fighter. Who you think been building up Eastside Cruz? Top rank? Y'all think top uh, top rank been building up Eastside Cruz? 
Yeah, he go, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. They keep playing over here. They keep playing. They keep playing. I made a video last year about how I said Crawford could be two-time undisputed. I mean, four-time undisputed. Y'all don't know this, but Crawford and David Benavidez are supposed to be undisputed this year. What was going to happen was Crawford was going to fight Canelo. He was going to be undisputed. Well, actually, Crawford was going to fight Tim Zhu and Charlo, possibly, before all this came along. And he was going to be uh, undisputed at 154. I'm going to tell y'all right now, that undisputed at 154, that's not going to happen. He was going to be undisputed at 154. By that time, like, let's just say he'll have all the belts right now at 154. He could have went on and fought Canelo at 68 for all the belts, and that would have been four-time undisputed. But then they crushed all that last year. They, they knew Crawford wanted to be four-time undisputed. I told people last year, Benavidez could have been undisputed at 68 this year and 75 because he was going to fight the winner of Bitter, uh, Bitter Biv and Bibble. And what is that? That's two-time undisputed because Benavidez just got all the belts at 68 and then he got all the belts at 75. And y'all got and you gotta think about it. Benavidez is gonna fight at 75 before he fights at 60, 68 again. So he's gonna fight at 75 regardless. So Canelo could have fought Crawford now. But Canelo knows, man, if I lose a Crawford or anything like that, he could be three times undisputed. So the business is like, no, we're not gonna let him do that. We'll let Charlo go up. We feel like Charlo, you know, he has a chance against Canelo. You know, Charlo, he has a loss. So he can definitely go up and fight Canelo, but, you know, Crawford, he doesn't have a chance. That's why I knew right then. I said, man, I ain't trying to hear about no boxing, man. These dudes ain't talking about nothing. <laughs> these people talking about Charlo was too big for Crawford last year. Tuh, the nerve of these clowns. Yeah, it seems like an awesome experience. It's a lot of networking going over there, too. A absolutely. Absolutely. Puerto Rico as well. I think Puerto Rico would be something special too. I think Puerto Rico um would be some great marketing um for that Matias fight. You know, you don't have a, you don't have to have a passport and nothing like that. So that's gonna be in the summer, so I feel like that will too. Oh yeah, you see you just you caught it before I said it, Grinch. Yeah, a lot of people think about that Matias fight. I ain't gonna lie, I'm thinking about going to that too. You don't need a passport, so yeah, that's definitely something that can happen. Well, it's two months away. Anybody can plan for that right now. That's nine weeks away. That's two months. You can definitely put something to the side every week and kind of make that happen. Oh, yeah, they got some laws over there, boy. Man, they laws is crazy. That's why I'm kind of scared to go over there. I heard you can't yell in certain places. I'm like, hold on now. It ain't that bad, but you know what I mean. I just seen some dudes get locked up for two months over there. For... Man, it's a lot of stuff, bro. You know, law is different everywhere. He can, but he can, but I feel like. I, he can, but I feel like Canelo will have to get Bibble out the um after that bitter beer fight. That'll be his best chance. If he can get him after the fight, I got something coming out about that. But if he can get him after that fight with bitter beer and Bibble, if he can get Bibble after that fight, um, he'll have a good chance. Man, I was just gonna ask about that. That's crazy. You probably can, but not like. Oh, probably open, you know what I'm saying? Like how they do in certain places around here. Oh, yeah, I heard. I definitely heard. I feel like Canelo, Matias fight, that's going to be more of a, um, it's going to have a lot, a lot of energy behind it. Because those are going to be fights that's basically going to have a lot more diversity with it as far as being a fight in Puerto Rico, that last fight in Puerto Rico, it was live. Jake Paul just stunk it up. I don't know what he was doing. Jake Paul is horrible.
Yeah, I seen that recently. That's why a lot of people don't really go out there no more, I think. I was wondering that uh, recently. I was like, man, a lot of people don't go out there no more. A lot of people be getting locked up. Yeah, man, all them countries like that. Puerto Rico, uh, shoot, it be like that here. It be like that here. You know, we got our streets in America. You know we got our streets. Yeah, it'd be crazy out there. It's going to be live, though. That's going to definitely be live. You think Matias is going to stop it? He get a stoppage over there. He might not. He might not ever fight again in America. He get a stoppage over there. They'll be like, hey, man, we got to have him back over here again. <laughs> hey, hey, man, y'all funny, man. Uh, <laughs> I'm only laughing because you, cause you said the first thing you thought about was the roasted sentence. <laughs> they try to get roasted. Yeah, I said that recently to somebody. Yeah, let me take this down, man. That sounds like I'm going in my dog. No, I only said that because, man, y'all know, man. I ain't going in about that. Some stuff need to be addressed, though. And that was just one of the things. It's certain things, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. We got we to gotta kind of start treating these bosses like regular human beings again. You know what I'm saying? We got to start treating these guys like regular guys again. That pound for pounds kind of. Yeah, facts. That is true. Everywhere. That's a fact. That's a fact. Yeah, it's definitely um <laughs> let's cross. <laughs> uh, bro crazy. You're right though. Yeah, there's some good fights coming on out here, man. I'm definitely uh I'm definitely ready for these next couple of fights to happen, man. What fight y'all most excited about to happen next? Canelo. Uh I know they got Inaway coming up. I actually want to see how this Inaway fight goes. I want to see if he stop uh I well, I know he's gonna I think he's gonna stop Neary, but I want to see what Neri does. Because he got he got to get in a situation where he let his hands go or something. Yeah, I know. That Haney, Garcia. Yeah, me too. I'm ready for that Haney Garcia too. Yeah, these are all the fights I'm waiting on. Yeah, yeah, I'm I agree with y'all. Better be and Bill, but that car loaded. Hey, that car right there loaded, man. The only thing about the Usyk car, I wish they had like two more fights on there, man. Just two more fights. I feel like they saving too much of the five versus five guys, and it's taken away from this car. This car is y'all seen the undercar for Fury versus uh, Usyk? Man, I'm not gonna lie, it's one of the worst ones I've seen recently. I want to see the fight, though, so it's not going to matter. At this point, they know it's not going to matter. Yeah, that car too good, boy. That that bitter beer one, too. Hey, if you ain't seen that bitter beer car, that, that car decent. That tank car is loaded, though. That tank car is loaded. That tank car is loaded. I think Japan got a car loaded, too. That, um, that anyway car loaded. The anyway car got some fights on there. A couple of Japanese guys, they're gonna let their hands go though. Yeah, he got some he got some fights on there too. They got Barbosa on there, but they switched his opponent though. So I don't I don't know what's going on. They he just got him a new opponent. He was supposed to fight Jorge Chavez or something like that, but now he's fighting uh I forgot who he's fighting now. 
Yeah, they got opponents all over the place right now. I... Yeah, yeah, that's good promotion. Absolutely. Ryan Garcia ain't going live every day like a rapper or something. Every time I turn around, the dude on live. I ain't gonna lie, I gotta break down his uh live stream. If y'all have never seen his live stream, I, I I put on my channel. Man, Ryan Garcia, he was saying some crazy stuff, so skip ahead. But on the live stream I had put down to him, he put a whole bunch of information out there. He put out how much money he made. He put out how much money he made in the Tank Davis fight. He said he made over $30 million. Uh he said the Tank Davis fight made like $120 million, allegedly. He said it made over a hundred million dollars. Uh what else he said? Man, he was saying a lot in that fight. He said something about Earl Spence. Why he think Earl Spence had lost the fight to um Terrence Crawford. Or not why he lost the fight. He was saying something about why he, he had something going on. Something I forgot what he said. I don't want to say the wrong thing. But, man, he was dropping some facts in that video. I was like, whoa, ain't nobody said nothing about this? Ain't nobody said nothing, though. See, the good thing about information, you got to be you gotta be willing to actually go find it. A lot of dudes, they ain't going to find it unless it's like a headline or something. Yeah, that last uh, promotion Haney had with that Regis Pro Grade fight, that was decent. That was very good. I think everybody was impressed with that. The zone did their thing on that one. Yeah, that's the zone. I like the um that Liam Paro and uh Montana Love fight. I was I was waiting on that fight. I like uh Liam Paro. I'm a fan of Liam Paro. That fight was decent. That was a very good fight. They had some young guys on there. That last that car wasn't bad. It wasn't too bad. Um That um, that last car wasn't bad. That too bad, uh, Nick. It do be cheeks though. I ain't gonna lie, but it wasn't that bad though because a lot of those guys we gonna see we gonna see sooner or later. They had a lot of prospects on there. It's the real deal. Yeah, that power on love. That car wasn't that that made the car good though. You know what I'm saying? Without that fight, yeah, you right. Without that car, Nick, you right. That car was borderline, man. That car was extra borderline. Man, I'm not going to lie to you. Ryan, I didn't think Ryan Garcia could make himself any more famous. Man. Dude. He was being extra, like. I don't understand. Like, lately, he's he's extra famous. Like, if you type his name in, it has nothing to do with boxing no more. He's at a whole other level now. I don't think too many people care about... Most of the people that follow Ryan, they don't care about boxing like that. So it's not going to hurt his uh his fame and nothing like that. I didn't even... I heard it a little bit because I turn, I'll turn it on while I was doing the live. But, uh, man, I almost forgot she was even doing the thing until she had said something. I was like, whoa. I heard she was being like... I heard she was being super biased. But, you know, it's kind of hard to tell because sometimes, like, let's just say Lamole's back is to you and the other guy, so she probably couldn't see from her inside. A lot of these fighters, they don't be saying the same thing, so. Wow, y'all, yeah, you, hey, I heard, I heard that over the weekend, man. I've actually heard that over the weekend. I've actually heard that over the weekend. Wow, y'all, you're not the first person to say that. Everybody said she did a horrible job. And you know, you usually these days, if somebody do a horrible job, they usually say it. I don't think that's no tune-up, man. I think Spence need to get in there with somebody a little shorter, man. These long arm guys, I never seen them in there with a tall, long guy like uh boy check or Fun door. I don't know how that would go. I don't feel like he's like outclassed or anything, but it might not be a strength for him. I don't know. Yeah, he got a lot of yes man around. 
A lot of yes men around them. Oh, I'm going to tell you, too. I had a video I was supposed to put out about Ryan Garcia like nine months ago. Do y'all know I got a Ryan Garcia I've been waiting on to put out for like nine months? Man, if I would have put that out, bro, I would be in big trouble right now. I'm going to let y'all know that right now. If I would put that Ryan Garcia video out, I would have been in big trouble. He would have made me look worse the way he talking. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> now nah, she that's what confused me. She usually don't go for the America, to be honest with you. That's what kind of confused me. She usually she usually be neutral. That's what kind of confused me. I didn't know she was uh I didn't know she knew hitches that well. Yeah, she usually be neutral. It kind of surprised me in this one. I heard people saying I was like, whoa. Ah, oh, that's crazy. That's that. That sound about right. That sound about right. Um, I think Keyshawn. To be honest with you, I think at this point right now, Keyshawn, uh, Shakur Stevenson might be dipping into the pot where Keyshawn, the fighters he could have got, because Giovanni Cabrera, um, Artem, Hardy Yin Yang, uh. He could have he could have fought both of those guys. They top ten. So for him not to fight them guys and then Zapata, he's busy. I don't know if people want to see him fight Maxi Hughes after what Maxi Hughes did recently. He's gonna have to um find somebody who's like a borderline name. I don't know, man. Andy Cruz might <laughs> people I don't even like to bring up that fight, but they not fighting each other right now, but they're not fighting anybody at all. So it depends. It's a lot of guys at 135, man. I don't really have high standards. I just want them to fight anybody. Loma, he said he want to fight Lomachenko and Navarrete, but, man, I'm tired of people calling out Navarrete. To be honest with you. I'm tired of people calling out Navarrete. I guess it's because they don't. He's the only one that actually will sign the fight if he wants to, but. I just don't feel like Navarrete at this time is actually what to put somebody over the top. Yeah, I know. I know. He's he's still he's still that <laughs> Chris crazy. He's still that guy, man. He's still that guy when it comes to certain things. He can find the inside. It might just be a style matchup. I feel like it's a bad, a bad style matchup. I don't feel like Spence is going to go in there with a technical guy and out technical him. You know what I'm saying? If it's not really like a toe to toe fight, as far as a technical fight, I feel like he's gonna lose on that end, which I've already thought. But he's not really a technical guy, so I can definitely see Spence causing some problems. But his power got a um. Translate at 54. Now, if he can get stronger at 54, that's that's saying something. That'll change the game. That's something a lot of people ain't saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Facts. It's just surface level. It's just surface level, man. You know what I'm saying? That's why a lot of people backed up. They're like, man, Ryan Garcia just talking about YouTube videos. He ain't talking about nothing else. Everybody seen this on YouTube already. Most of the stuff he said. So basically, Ryan Garcia letting everybody know that all celebrities talk about behind the scenes is, is the same thing we see on YouTube. That's why everybody was like, okay, we know that on YouTube. Tell us what you really know. Oh, yeah, I heard that, man. I heard that. Bro, I heard. Bro, that's the part that I turned on, and I turned it off because I had it on my ear playing. She said, yeah, i never seen Pacheco fight before, so this is my first time. 
I said, oh my God. I know he's he's only 23 or something like that. So I mean, she's a busy uh woman, you know. But I'm like, man, come on, man. You can look at the highlights or something walking up in there. Figure out he's an orthodox or something yet. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy to me. That's my first time. I was like, oh man. Yeah, me either. Me either. Me either. That's why Ryan Garcia, man, he be putting himself in a bad position with all that talking, man. That's why Tia Fimo, it works for Tia Fimo because he don't care. You know, Ryan Garcia, he'll turn around and be like, no, I didn't mean it. Now, you got to be somebody who really don't care if you're going to be rambling off at the mouth like that. <laughs> yeah, it was amateur, man. Hey, y'all, I don't know. Do y'all remember those old fights? We listened to old fights with Tarver and Roy Jones. They used to be rusty too, but they got very good at how they um call the fights. I've seen some guys do it and do a, a terrible job, but <laughs> he said she bad with no brand. <laughs> Yeah, you know, man. Yeah, man. Ryan Garcia, crazy, man. I don't want. I mean, he do. He doing what he. I mean, he using this moment to do do what he feel like is. Put some light on something. He putting a light on something. You know what I'm saying? But. Yeah, facts. 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 Every time I see bro, he got a new girl. I'm like, man, bro, you need to relax, bro. I do that for years, though. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what I was saying. I was like, man, this dude, he been tripping like that for years. You know, him and Roly and uh, T and Fima, they all got, they all got that same kind of vibe. They like Eddie, Eddie, Eddie. They all got the same kind of vibe. They friends. They hang out with each other. Go back and forth. Yell. Bark at each other. It's pretty hilarious. Yeah, I seen that, man. Come on, man. Buying a BBL, man. They need something to even. I was like, come on, dog. Now nah, I want him to lose. He messing up the game. Ain't nothing cool about giving out free BBLs. Yeah, man, this dude definitely, he should definitely get knocked out for that. He messing up the game now. Yeah, he definitely screwing up the game. But, yeah, man, I know a lot of people just hear me rambling off. We're just talking about random stuff. I wasn't going to be on here that long, but I had, I went on yesterday, so I was going to chill with y'all for a minute. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Yeah, they, I saw that um recently. I don't know, man. It's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a weird year this year, man. A lot of guys they gonna come, they gonna come close to. Uh, they got some tough fights this year. These guys don't kind of um pull this off. It's gonna be a struggle. It's a lot of fights right now, guys. They got their career on the line. Hey, this is what Ryan Garcia just said on. Uh, <laughs> hey, bro, I ain't gonna lie to y'all, bro. I love Ryan Garcia, boy. Ryan Garcia just went out and said the same thing. I just, hey, I told y'all, Ryan Garcia, man, he don't like Canelo, bro. 
Ryan Garcia don't like Canelo, man. It's official. This dude will take a shot at Canelo every time. He said to Canelo the other day. <laughs> Too busy with buddy, buddy, with titty. I say, hey. <laughs> I say, take, hey, I say, take care. Uh, Devin got a picture with Diddy. I know I ain't got no picture with Diddy. I ain't got to explain none of that. Hey, I'm going to tell y'all this, man. Hey, y'all remember when I said Canelo and Ryan Garcia got beef and stuff? I like putting the videos up. <laughs> they do hilarious, boy. Like, Ryan Garcia, look at this dude, man. <laughs> hey, he just apologized to Canelo last week. I told y'all. Ryan Garcia been beefing with Canelo. I've been reporting on this for a year now. He talking about some, he gonna say last year. <laughs> ah, Glory, you. <laughs> y'all funny. Man, I love y'all, boy. Y'all funny as all the way, man. Hilarious, dog. Hey, this is this right here. Ryan Garcia is crazy, bro. I touched places that Canelo can't touch, and I touched places no fighter. Right now, basically, he said no, no fighter can touch. Just me, man. Hey, they didn't build the monster out here in this boxing industry, man. Look at Ryan Garcia. Look how he's talking. I touched places that Canelo Alvarez can't touch, and I touched places no fighter right now can. Yeah, she was me. It ain't gonna count. She was definitely me. Hittable, hittable, but me. Now, what's up, man, dog? He <laughs> said on the Lakers. <laughs> hey, hey, angry Mexican manager about the Lakers, dog. I think that Mexican uh Mexican boss is number one. That Mexican boss is number one, man. No, that, that Mexican boss is number one. He always be in here. Are hey, you changed your picture, Mexican boss? Yeah, he'll 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 be he'll be going in too much. He just be talking. He'll be saying nothing crazy. <laughs> he said you talking about. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, he changed the picture, man. He be everywhere. He changed the picture, man. Oh, you ain't the same. Okay, he a new guy then. Oh, shout out to them, uh, new guy. What's going on, bro? Yeah, we we just in here talking about Ryan Garcia. You seen Ryan Garcia said recently? <laughs> Ryan Garcia said, I touch places that can... I told people last year. Bro, y'all don't know, bro. I really be risking myself, bro. Because people say I'm a Canelo hater. I said, I said Ryan Garcia don't like Canelo. He going to try to compete with Canelo for the next two years. And that's what he's doing. He don't want Canelo to have a bigger fight than him. As soon as, as soon as he have his fight and then Canelo has his fight, Ryan Garcia going to say, my numbers did more than Canelo's fight. Watch. Tell him. He's going to say it. Two years in a row, I had a bigger fight than Canelo. I... <laughs> Hey, I would watch it. I'm not gonna lie, dog. I would watch it. I would watch that fight. I'm not gonna lie. At this point, they so mad at each other. They might as well fight. Going, you're gonna eventually do it for free. You don't want to have a Caleb Planet uh Charlo situation. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, they worse. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, God. Y'all think I'm bad. Bro, if you think I'm horrible, man, these guys in, in basketball, you know, it's worse in basketball because, you know, in basketball, you know, guys will play a game yesterday. In basketball, they'll have a game yesterday. And dudes will be like, man, you know, two years ago in the playoffs, they'll bring up something two years ago. So, yeah, it's a lot worse. It's a lot worse. Two years in game seven, he was trying to – yeah, that. <laughs> The the arguments is way worse, bro. Oh, I got Bam in that fight. Oh yeah, I got Bam in that fight. It's gonna be it's gonna go it's gonna go all twelve though. It's gonna go twelve rounds. Matter of fact, I gotta drop some news about that. Bam just dropped the belt so he can fight Estrada. They tried to make him do a mandatory or something. He's trying to fight Estrada and I think Chocolatito. I'm not sure, but I think Estrada, Chocolatito, and somebody else. Is in band weight class now. I think they had 118. I think they had 118, if I'm not sure. He <laughs> said Grinch. Huh? Nah, man. Grinch ain't paying up that dub, man. Hey, nah, Grinch. Don't pay up that dub, bro. Nah, Grinch. Don't pay that 20 up, man. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Grits, man. Oh, y'all be doing basketball too? I didn't start a basketball channel, man. Oh, well, I, I had something I was doing, but my takes be like years. Bro, I was telling people two years ago that Luca was going to um, be like this. I said, hey, man, everybody can't play with Luca. People didn't believe me. I said, everybody can't play with Luca. He said a dumpster touch. Oh, he a Laker fan. He a die hard. He said he's working on the best. Yeah, but um, overall, man, Ryan Garcia, he basically feeling like he's that guy right now. And the way he got the attention, man, I'll be the same way right now. He kind of putting his foot on Canelo right now. He's trying to slay the samurai. You know, he's trying to go out to the sensei. So he definitely uh trying to slaughter everybody. This summer I talk right here. This man said I touched places Canelo. Why he talking about Canelo though? He ain't say nobody. He ain't say Tank. He could have said Tank or somebody. He said Canelo. That man did not like Canelo calling him out, bro. I'm telling y'all. Every minute of the day, Ryan got like, I gotta make myself known. My name gotta be bigger than Canelo. It's not about, see, what y'all think is Ryan Garcia trying to sell the fight. He just wants the fight to be bigger than Canelo fight. He don't care about if it's bigger than the tank fight. He just want to make sure, okay. I'm telling you, I said it uh, two days ago. Ryan Garcia knows that he fights two weeks before uh, Canelo. He don't care that he fights two weeks before Canelo. He's like, yeah, make that happen. We're going to slow his process down. Because y'all don't know it, they try to get... Ryan Garcia tried to get them to fight the same day as Canelo or a week a week apart. And they wanted to fight in Las Vegas. That's why Ryan Garcia said, I want to fight in Las Vegas. I don't want to fight in New York. And they told, and then Devin Haney said, we can't fight in New York because we can't fight in Vegas because Canelo is fighting out there. And then that's when Ryan was like, why would we try to, why we got to wait on what Canelo does? Plus 3,000. Man. Ooh, that's a lot of bread, bro. Plus 2,000. I mean, plus 3,000, a lot of bread, bro. Now, if he does that, man, it's going to be a wrap for a lot of people. Hey, what's the closest? Who y'all think going to Who's the guy that could possibly get upset in the next couple of months? I don't think it's going to be Loma. I don't think it's going to be Navarrete in May. Fury, possibly. Possibly got Fury. I don't know about Canelo. I don't think Munguia is going to upset Canelo. Usyk, yeah. I got Usyk. Yeah, me too. Frank, wow. Bro, y'all got some good answers, bro.
Frank is crazy. I had Frank Martin, man, but man, I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I want to see Tank Davis challenge very bad, bro. But Frank Martin is a hard pick, man, to go against. He has the most of the risk, you know what I'm saying? He doesn't have a lot of background. You know, Frank Martin not supposed to really be in a position right now, according to other people. But that, hey, that's that's a good one. I, I like Usyk and I like the uh the Frank Martin pick. I like those two picks. I like those two picks. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. Shoot, Frank Martin going 12 rounds actually might be a good little bet to put down. Whenever that bet starts to happen, the earliest you can uh, put some down. If you just put ten, twenty dollars down, I put I put um going 12 rounds. Frank Martin. He don't got to win, but if you can find a bet where it can go 12 rounds. Definitely going to bet that. You think Neary going to uh, shock him? Man, I haven't seen. I think them banning Neary in Japan and have him come back and unbanning him. It's definitely going to be some motivation. And Neary does let his hands go. He lets his hands go. That's one thing. I think a lot of people against in a way don't let their hands go until they get hurt or in trouble. Yeah, Cambosa's gonna get washed. And I'm a Cambosa's. And I'm 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 a huge fan of Cambosa's. Cambosa's done. It's gonna get to a certain point when Cambosa's gonna. He's gonna wanna fold. Loma ain't leaving that without no belt, man. I don't care what nobody says. Loma Chico ain't leaving nowhere without no belt. <laughs> He's not going. This fight like three or four years old. When, when this fight was supposed to happen? Before when the shutdown was going on? Before Loma Chico went to war? He was supposed to fight Cambos instead of Devin Haney? Yeah. I think that's going to play a huge part. I, had, I, I reported that a couple of weeks ago. A couple of months ago, actually. Yeah, he got banned. He was still banned a couple of months ago before they had. That's why they had the press conference so late. He was still banned. And the people that banned him was uh the people that are actually putting on the fight right now. So it's kind of weird, but yeah, I hope I wish more fans knew that PBC was actually working more with uh in a way because that would let people know right then that uh any any fighter that PBC has anyway could basically uh get in touch with. Oh, absolutely, yeah. We are we already know. He actually um he actually got some trouble in Ukraine right now. They actually um put some pressure on him as far as I don't want to say it, but allegedly they call him a traitor. It's for another reason, but they're not really playing that in Ukraine right now. That's why you didn't see you're not gonna see probably uh you him and Usyk around each other. Him and Usyk haven't been around each other since. I think Usyk fought Anthony Joshua. It's a reason. Usyk can't. Uh, this top secret news. It's allegedly. I just say allegedly, but Usyk can't be seen with this guy right now. That's a good question. Yeah, they are. They're slowly getting bigger. I think the thing that's gonna uh that's gonna help uh PB I think what actually helped PBC was actually Stephen Fulton fighting in um uh, Japan. Because now most of the people in Japan they kind of getting more familiar with the guys from that PBC brand. Trust me, I know I, I've seen some things lately. Anyway, he's kind of happy right now. He said he's not fighting in um America no more because he wanted you know people don't know he fought in America twice already he said he's not fighting America no more because uh the pay-per-view is more valuable it's easier it's easier in Japan now to do pay-per-view so he's not really worried about it he can make millions putting on fights in Japan so he's just gonna do that yeah they got some huge cars coming up I think the problem with them that they're running to is uh they need a card for smaller fighters 
they're putting on big fights, but they're not putting on small fights. You know what I'm saying? So they're not going to have a chance to really – because the small fights is what had PBC create a guy like Isak Cruz, Fundora, Benavidez. So when you don't have those small Saturday fights with undercards, where you can put a young Benavidez or Fandora on there, it's, it's going to hurt um, PBC. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, it's all, that's already going on. That's going on. It's usually it's usually one. It's usually one. I'll say two years after election. It's usually one. So two years after the next election, around twenty twenty six, twenty seven. Yeah, you can expect the big one. I'm talking about a huge one. Yeah, twenty twenty six, twenty the end of. Probably next year, something like that. You'll hear about one. Hey, uh, we had a uh we had a um I had a video about that the other day. I mean, that's not true. A lot of Me Mexicans don't have problems with PBC. Um I think that's certain um, American fans that do that because uh, from what I've seen, most of the Mexicans, Mexicans actually show out. They show up for PBC events more than they do a zone event. Like if you look at PBC, ver if you look at Canelo versus Charlo, and then you go look at Canelo versus Bibble, they show up more for um, PBC fights. And then PBC had nothing but Mexicans on their car uh, two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, I know. We know. Yeah, you you already know. We already know. But PBC actually had more um Mexicans on their car. They had what eight or nine Mexicans uh a couple of weeks ago. Oh, I've been wrong a couple of times. I'm not gonna lie, bro. The two the two predictions I'm actually that that actually hurt my hurt me really bad was um the Comatov. I put Comatov versus Raymond Ford. It was crazy. I was telling everybody last year, Raymond, talk, Raymond Ford is going to be a beast next year. And when his fight came, it wasn't on top run. It wasn't on the zone. So I was like, ah, I think they're going to rob him. So I picked uh, Comatov. And they was going to rob him, but he ended up stopping him. So I was like, dang. So I'll, I'll end up having it right, but I'll have the, the result will be wrong a lot of times. But the storyline will be right. Oh, Grish, you like Benavidez? I ain't know that. Grish, you a Benavidez fan? Yeah, no, top rank love uh Tia Fimo. He out of his mind. Top rank love Ben. Hey, top rank loves Tia Fimo so much they signed all his opponents. <laughs> he fights Sandor Martin and uh and George Calbosa. They signed him after that. They signed all those guys after that. They love uh Tia Fimo. They don't gotta spend no money on promotion. He promoted himself. They like, yeah, man, let this dude promote his own self, man. He's he gonna do the job for us. Pound for pound, top five. I mean, if I had to make a list up in my head right now, I have to go no order. Um, Usyk, Crawford. Um, I gotta be realistic. I gotta be realistic. Um. I don't know, bro. Like, I usually don't like to put Canelo on there. I'm going to tell y'all, I don't like to put Canelo on pound on the – I might squeeze – I don't know, bro. I might squeeze him on there. I'm going to leave him off for right now. I'll have to think about it. Um, Usyk. I said um, Crawford. Um, I'll put – I ain't going to lie. I'll put in a way. I'm gonna be real. I'll put anyway in there because he's still moving up. So I will get anyway, uh, give anyway credit for that. Um, ooh, it's getting tight, buddy. He said five. <laughs> I'm trying to think of all the weight classes 30, 35. 
pound for pound. I don't know, bro. The last two. I don't know. I'm kind of confusing those last two because I, I keep thinking about newer guys who can be in that spot. Um, I want to put Bibbel in there for some reason. Only, the only reason I want to put Bibbel in there, I'm be real, because he said he can make 68. When he said he can make 68, that was kind of insane to me. That's the only reason I kind of want to put him over there, over Canelo. Um... Man, do y'all think Bam Rodriguez did enough already? I don't think he did enough to be top five. Top five is different than top ten. Who's the Canelo? Yeah. I got Devin Haney borderline because I think Tank did enough to be on pound for pound, but I don't know if he's top five. Top five is... Yeah, Bibble and Bitter Bib kind of difficult. I say Bibble only because he said that 68 stuff. You know, Bitter Bib, he's not a guy who's going to go from weight class to weight class. But he has fought guys in multiple weight classes. So you got to consider that as well. So, yeah, him and Bibble is kind of a tie for me, 4-5. Yeah, I say those guys 4-5 right now. It's, it's kind of hard to go with anybody else. Yeah, that's a decent list. Yeah, that's a very decent list. If if in a, if if Loma Chico would have fought two more times or at least one more time last year, and then with this fight, I probably could have. Even though he got a loss, I mean a couple of losses. If he's able to, you know what I'm saying. Sometimes you got to squeeze guys in there like that because I think he's kind of making some bigger fights still. Yeah, I have him top five, too. I want to put Nakatani on there, man. I want to put Nakatani. I actually I actually wanted to put uh, Ray Martinez on there, Julio Cesar Martinez. I want to put him on there. But I put Nakatani on there last year. Everybody said Nakatani last year. Everybody. I think everybody said Nakatani. No, they said Bam last year. I'm tripping. Everybody said Bam was on pound for pound last year, and they said Nakatani is next. I made a list. I forgot what it said. But Nakatani going to be next. Nakatani a problem. He is a problem. Now, I heard he was on uh, Cigar Talk, too. Somebody said the Cigar Talk interview was better. I seen, like, 10 minutes of the Cigar Talk interview. They said that was better, though. I seen the Cigar Talk interview. It's way better than, um... Shout out to, um... I forgot who told me. Was it Grinch? Might have been Grinch, Go Good, somebody. I forgot who it was. Yeah, me too. I put him on there. I put him on there too. We all voted on it. We all vote. We vote on it on this channel, but we vote on all that. We all we usually agree with everything. It don't really be no extreme like you know. Most people over there trying to win some money sometimes, or just trying to figure out what's going on. Now nah, he fought um. Nakatani dropped the. It's the other Nakatani, the one who dropped the uh, Andrew Maloney, the one who had. I think it was not not Andrew Maloney. Was it Andrew Maloney or was the other the Maloney brother? One of the Maloneys. They got dropped last year. When he got knocked out, because you know anyway fought the other Maloney brother, but then Nakatani fought this one last year and dropped him. Yeah, Nakatani is. Bro, he's a problem. The first with an older go away. Man. Uh... Between... This is a trick question. Let me tell you why. It might be between. I don't know. Raven Ford showed me something that last fight. That last fight Raven Ford did, man. 
Woo. I'm not going to lie. Abdullah Mason, no, nah, I don't see him losing. Um, I don't know, man. I want to go with Hitchens or Shakur, but I would have said this last week, though. I'm not giving y'all an answer because I think, like, Hitchens is one of my favorite fighters, but I feel like it's Hitchens or Shakur because Hitchens ain't really in the, he ain't in the, he ain't in the ring like that. You know what I'm saying? As far as, y'all got to understand, a lot of these other fighters fighting four or five times. Anyway, for the fight three or four times, he stays in the ring every three or four months. He's fighting. A lot of these guys ain't fighting that like that. Yeah, anyway, smash that guy. That that fight was in America too. That was an American fight. I know a lot of people say he hasn't fought in America, but he fought twice in America already. That was one of the fights. Yeah, I was gonna do a video on him last week, but people were talking crazy about Tito, man. People talking about Tito need to fight somebody. Tito been he been pro for three years. And everybody talking about Tito need to fight somebody. So I was like, I ain't. And then I, I, by the time I found out he was fighting on Friday, some uh, boxing sites weren't really reporting that the fight was on. So I don't know what they got going on. Yeah, man, Tito, man, every time he fights somebody, they're like, yeah, he ain't fought nobody. He been pro three years, man. A lot of these folks don't know boxing, man. They're doing the same thing with Tito they're doing with Keyshawn Davis. Him and, him and Keyshawn Davis started in 2021, becoming pro, but now they got to fight somebody. What's up, Fonzo? What's going on, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, shout out to Alfonso Banks, man. Yeah, he uh he was dancing with Tank around that time. Over... Tank then was oversized. That was Tank had that weight on him then. Tank was a little overweight around the time. He was a little overweight, bro. He had some issues he was working with, but he better now though. He better now. I, th I think Hitches need to get around some people that have a uh, a Boston lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? People who really in that lifestyle all day, every day. Not saying he's not working or nothing like that. I'm not talking like he's a bum, but I feel like it's another level he can get to. Until he get there, he's going to be... Some of these guys need a loss, though. Some people need a loss. Some people need a loss to kind of get them going. I feel like Shakira Stevenson and, and Hitchens is in a situation. They too good for people to be saying, hey, you need to let your hands go. You need to let your... Too good for that, bro. We've seen this before. You can't have people that have been around you your whole life telling you you need to let your hands go and you don't want to do it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Why the fight is uh, John in, uh, in June on that bitter beer card? That card will be loaded, too. Yeah, he fighting in June. He's definitely going to fight in June. That's going to be a good fight, man. These next couple of weeks, these next couple of months, it's going to be historic. That's going to be a good fight, though. I feel like he just need to get his stamina up and watch out for uh, the left hand from John. He'll be straight. But if not, he already know. He already know, Fonzo. If, if you don't get that, if that stand, I feel I feel like Wilder showed he had a good chin in the uh, Parker fight. He took some shots in that fight. He got a chin and he went twelve rounds. So that's what I'm saying. A lot of guys they look they look more out of shape than Wilder did recently. I've seen guys, uh, especially in that uh, Clark and Wardley fight, they was exhausted. They let their hands go, though. It's a difference. He got to let his hands go. A Wilder don't let his hands go, he's going to get knocked out. But I feel like he definitely, uh, he knows all this. I'm glad he going in there with a guy that can knock him out, too. Uh, uh, glory crazy uh as far as um mexican uh i would probably say marquez american it'll have to be between i don't know i like joe lewis as growing up back in the day but um i like floyd too so between floyd Joe Lewis. I like Roy Jones growing up. When I was a when I was a uh a kid, I used to watch Roy Jones all the time. Yeah, when I was a kid, I used to watch Roy Jones all the time. 
Uh, actually, if I had to pick one boxer, though, this might surprise y'all. I actually, my favorite boxer of all time is possibly it was Floyd. Um, but I probably had to say Bernard Hopkins. Bernard Hopkins, pro probably. Oh, yeah, bro. I used to watch MMA all the time. I definitely know who Rampage Jackson is. I've been watching him since Pride Fighter. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I know Shannon Briggs. No, I, I didn't know they was fighting, though. I didn't know they was fighting. Yeah, Roy Jones is a problem, man. Oh, Salvador Sanchez, Eric Morales, Roy Jones. Yeah, Eric Morales is a problem. I like Eric Morales too, and Salvador Sanchez. I like Eric Morales too. You see how Eric Morales then got um. <laughs> you see how Eric Morales then got them hands right for uh for uh Mangia now. Mangia let them hands go now. He got that from Eric Morales. <laughs> oh, it's a lot of dudes like that. Ryan got situations like that too. That Ryan for real. Man, that's that was so funny. Man, that was so funny. It wasn't funny because he was finna get smashed. Hey, hey, angry man. You know what's funny about that? You know what's funny about he didn't throw no hands, did he? He didn't throw not one punch. Them punches weren't gonna help him in that. He was gonna get trampled. Yeah, he said he said he he wish he wouldn't have did that, but he was trying to he was trying to sell a fight. But he said he wish he wouldn't have did. It. He was so scared when he did it. You see this face? Hey, that's hilarious. I'm trying not to laugh right now. That's hilarious to me, bro. That was hilarious. He was so scared. He knew what he did. He was looking like, oh my god. Yeah, I'm gonna watch it when it come on this weekend. I'm gonna do a a fight. Um. I'm gonna do a live for. It. I got a little MMA channel. I did. I did the um the last fight with uh with Sean on there. Oh, Sean O'Malley. I did the Sean O'Malley fight. I did a live on that. Yeah, it was lit in there. We did this fight. We did that fight. It was lit. Yeah, Roy Jones is a beast, man. Fun's all right, man. Roy Jones in the '90s, he was an animal, man. Everything these dudes doing now, Roy Jones doing that with power, and he was just insane. When he started jumping that weight, though, it start jumping the weight classes. That's when it started changing. Roy wasn't the same; he was jumping the weight classes. See, these guys these days they'll never go up like that. Middleweight, heavyweight, no, these guys will never do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna catch that. Absolutely, I'm gonna catch that. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, I was on, I was on, I did that um Sean O'Malley fight, man. It was good. Hey, my favorite press conference is um Tony Harris of our Charlo. That was hilarious. The the second one and the first, the first one and the second one. Oh yeah, you good, you good. I understand what you mean. That Charlo and Tony Harris at press conference. I know people are sending around right now. That was hilarious. That one was good. And the Terrence Crawford. Have y'all ever seen the Terrence Crawford and Jose Benavidez press conferences? That was crazy. Them dudes. <laughs> they were talking about each other's mamas and stuff. And y'all know Terrence Crawford don't really, he don't really talk like that. He like, they talking about each other's mamas. I was like, wow. Yeah, John, James Tony was a problem. He uh, he definitely on my top 20. James Tony was a problem. He used to scare me as a kid. I thought he was the meanest guy on earth. I'm like, man, this dude will never smile. Yeah, James Tony was a problem. <laughs> I 
I mean, they they blackballed him a little bit, but at the same time, Crawford don't really care because now he can get Saudi Arabia money. Now everybody's starting to say now, oh yeah, he's getting Saudi Arabia money from um the fight with uh the guy they call the new triple G, Majramal. My thing is what confused me about Terrence Crawford is why is everybody okay with Terrence Crawford fighting Majramal and not uh Chris Eubanks? And they don't know they don't know either of these guys. They really don't know Majramal. I heard somebody say he's a new triple G. I mean the old triple G when <laughs> Come on. Yeah, he's talking about Majramal. I don't know if it's official, but I think that the Chris Eubanks fight was going to be a Saudi Arabia fight too. I'm just thinking that out, out of my mind, but I don't know. I feel like Terrence Crawford, I feel like a lot of these boxers have done business with um Saudi Arabia already. I told people if you go look at Andrew Ruiz versus Anthony Joshua, um, Canelo was in Saudi Arabia, what, 2019, 2018-19? So he was in Saudi Arabia five years ago. Yeah, he's decent. He's decent. He's very, yeah, he's very good. When I seen him fighting, I actually thought he was like Triple G, though. It reminds you of Triple G. Yeah, he's, he's a good fighter, though. Technically skilled, good stamina, got power. They don't leave himself open that much. Don't take a lot of risks. So yeah, he's he a good partner. Okay, okay, okay. I will. I put a couple on there, but I, I actually will. I actually will. I'm gonna start doing the dates in there. Bet. I'm glad you said that. That's actually excellent idea. I gotta make a Discord too, man. I'm supposed to be on there making it right now, but I just want to come on live, man. I know a lot of y'all wanted to talk about some boxing. I'm gonna be on here a long time for you. I know people be at work. I be wanting to hear something when I'm at work too, so I know how that goes. Yeah, I know, man. Nothing but fight. When he went to MMA, I was kind of like, ah, oh, Jane don't need to do that. I was kind of mad he went to MMA. When he went to MMA, I kind of stopped messing with boxing because I was like, man, boxers ain't trying to do nothing. That's when they had a lot of uh, boxing guys going to MMA. People don't remember that. They don't remember those days when boxers had to go to MMA to actually get some kind of action. Yeah, yeah, them, them, them paydays. He actually asked him for too much money right now. He turned down Jong and Wilder. See, people said Wilder was ducking um Andrew Weeze, but Jong was the the Asian guy. He was supposed to fight um Andrew Weeze last year, last September, October. You can look it up. Look up uh Jong and Andrew Weeze. He said that Andrew Weeze was asking for too much money. Said the same thing Wilder said. They said Boost is fighting uh, Cody Crawley, probably. Okay, cool. Bet. All right, bet. Hey, hit my email, Glory. I already got one set up, bro. Yeah, I need some mods on there, man. That's really why I was doing it. Yeah, I need to set it up. I got a couple of people on here I know I need to get on there. So everybody can already be on there and stuff. Yeah, I got I got it set up already. I just got to, um, yeah, I'm going to do the basics because, you know, people going to want to do the invites and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, hit my email. I'm going to, uh. I'm going to set it up later on today. Yeah, Ray Mercer. Yeah, absolutely. Ray Mercer fought. Um, he fought. Didn't, didn't Ray Mercer fought. Um, it's another guy I like. It's a, it's a white guy. 
in MMA. Um, his name was Dan something, man. It was a long time ago. I thought he fought still. Oh, he, he fought Tim Silva. It was somebody else, too. Didn't Ray Mercer fight um, Kimbo Slice? Or am I tripping? I thought Ray Mercer fought Kimbo Slice or somebody. I don't know why I'm thinking of that. Yeah, Ray Mercer was one of the first guys that got up in there, man. Bet. Cool. Yeah, I got the uh what the invite invite link. Oh, Roy Nelson. I don't know why. That's who it was. Hey, I was a huge fan of Roy Nelson. Roy Nelson was a Roy Nelson was that deal, man. That fat white guy, Roy Nelson. He used to be on the um uh, Roy Nelson used to be on a uh website with um uh, with Ben um I forgot the other tall guy name. He was Ben Rothman or Rothman or something like that. Him and Roy Nelson that came from this MMA TV show. Yeah, I was telling people about Kimbo Slice recently. I had did a breakdown about Kimbo Slice. I'm telling everybody that Kimbo Slice is the reason why Jake Paul and all these guys are walking around because a lot of the fans back in the day, uh, even now, you know, especially back in the day, though, when boxing was going around, even though Floyd and all these guys were fighting, people was more gravitating. Ben Rothwell, see? You know what I'm talking about. Ben Rothwell, facts. Um, but yeah, pride, pride fighting days was insane, bro. You saw when they had all those different kind of people back then. I think that's when they first had Silva and Liddell, and Rampage was on there. Yeah, Ben Rothwell, him and uh Roy Nelson. What's the other guy name? Uh, my favorite MMA fighter. Back in 2009 was uh uh Donald Cerrone. I think his name was Donald Donald Cerrone. He was on Tap Out though. He wasn't on MMA yet. He wasn't on UFC. This was like a Tap Out day. I don't know if anybody remember Tap Out. Yeah, that was insane. And one night, yeah, I'm, I used to watch the Tap Out TV show. Tap Out had a lot of uh superstars. Tap out in that show, Ben Roswell and Roy Nelson came from. I used to watch MMA. Bro, I used to watch MMA all the time. Like, everywhere. Yeah, Cowboy Cerrone. You know what's crazy? Cowboy Cerrone came from a TV show, bro. And, bro, was still around in UFC. That man was in a TV show when I was in high school. TV show. TV show. This man was literally... He was like a reality show. A reality star. They was going around, had them fighting at random. Um, he was fighting at random places. I was like, "Who's this cowboy Cerrone guy, man?" Yeah, that was crazy, man. Cowboy was really. They was really trying to get him in tap out, though. It worked out, man. The MMA stuff real. Ah, it's going to be hard, man. These dudes now, man. They, they got more talent coming in now. It's going to be hard for Izzy to kind of pull that off now. It's gonna be hard for uh it's gonna be hard for Izzy to pull this off. I 
I think it's definitely gonna be hard for Izzy. It's gonna be a struggle, man. Izzy, uh, he he got some competition now around his weight class. You know, at first it wasn't that many guys around, but man, these guys they trying to pick people off around Izzy. And then you know, Izzy, he's you get a name off him. They don't got McGregor coming back too, but they don't got that many names walking around. You know, Izzy, he's definitely a hot name. I feel like he can make something happen. He just gotta he gotta make sure he add a couple of things to his style a little bit. Because even with a guy like John Jones, one thing I know noticed about him when he got older and went up in his um he went up in his fights and his weight class, he didn't really uh he didn't really take his time too much. He don't definitely take his time when it's come to fighting, man. This guy definitely. Is he definitely at another level right now? But he gotta he gotta make sure these guys don't try to walk all over. I got an MMA chat. I gotta do a little bit more on it, but because it's a lot more stuff going on. I got a page where they uh where I announced Conor McGregor was coming back. Did y'all know Conor McGregor was coming back a couple weeks ago? Yeah, Conor McGregor coming back this year. They got a lot of stuff going on in MMA. It's going to be, bro, it's going to be legit these next couple of months. It's going to be legit. I know Ronda Rousey just said recently that um, I think she was the greatest fighter ever in UFC history or something like that. I don't know if everybody agree with that, but. Yeah, I definitely think everybody don't um they don't agree with that, but yeah, man, she said she's the greatest fighter of all time. And uh I think ever lived or something like that. I was like, nah, you tripping. But that's what happened, man. They put their energy behind her. It's it is what it is. I don't know. If she I thought she was trying to do a WWE promo, so I ain't really say nothing about it. I'm like, okay, she feel like she's the greatest of all time, and maybe she's just saying that because she promoting something. Now nah, then she went to explaining why everything didn't work out and why things turned out the way way it did. Um, so a lot of times it was just. It just went bad overall, bro. She she don't know what she's doing. She's trying to promote herself as far as being a certain fighter and this, but a lot of people are doing that, but not to the point where she's doing it. She's doing it to the point now where it's like, yeah, Nunez is a beast. I'm kind of mad Nunez actually retired, man. What they got going on at USC to the point where Nunez feel like she need to retire. Right now, man. She put on two amazing fights and was like, yeah, I'm done. So if we don't get nobody to replace Nunez, we're going to be in trouble. Yeah, we don't get Nunez, man. It's going to be a, it's going to be trouble. Let me see what these dudes talking about, man. I ain't even set this thing. I got to add a server and everything. Oh, Gloria. Gloria still in here? I wonder if Gloria's left yet. She'll say she's the best. Yeah, she uh yeah, she the best female boxer right now. I would have liked to see her uh I know this might sound crazy, but I know Layla Ali had asked to fight her. I I kind of wanted to see that. Yeah, she'll fight. Man, Layla Ali wasn't fighting. It's it's different now. These girls now. 
these girls now are different. That's why I, I would like to see Layla kind of compete against this generation a little bit. That's kind of, that's kind of what I was waiting on. Yeah, that's definitely what I was waiting on, man. She caused a lot of problems. Yeah, I think the most, the only person I've seen Layla Ali fight, and my parents that went to that fight, it was, uh, I think she fought Joe Frazier's daughter or somebody like that. Something like that. Yeah, it's definitely um, it it was definitely a good situation for her because she ain't had that much competition. Carissa Shields got a lot more people she got to deal with. These fights she got is not easy. Yeah, this this is definitely not her. Try to see how you spent. Oh, you invite people. Yeah, man, I got this Discord. Oh, yeah, I'm putting it down for Glory. Glory told me to put this up here. Anybody want to join that? I'll set that up later on. No, I ain't see that video. Oh, yeah. I seen the one, I seen that one video with that guy, with that one guy. He was in the front front yard, and he was knocking out those one those guys like one by one in the front yard. And had everybody, it was like a party or something. I know you seen that video. He was like one hit a quitter. Everybody, that was insane. Yeah, that was insane. We must be talking about the same one. I seen another one, man. This dude was dropping guys. With like one shot. He was like boom, boom. I was like, whoa. I thought the the guy that was doing it was friends. Yeah, I had to follow this link, man. Um, yeah, I ain't even set this up yet. I'll do it eventually. Yeah, that was crazy. That was a good, um, <laughs> dude throwing some hands, bro. But yeah, I'm, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get up off of here, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish setting up this, uh, Discord later on. Hey, shout out to, um, Angry Mexican too, man. Shout out to Angry Mexican, man. I ain't never seen you before. Yeah, shout out to you, bro. I'm going to see you again. I'm going to holler at y'all, man. Like and subscribe.